Percent wins again. Hi G, hello everyone. Hi Mac, hold on. Congrats. What's up? Who was that? Okay, Mixantos, I'm gonna guess <laughs> first. Um, hello Cherio, you sign. Oh my god, always looking for drama. 
Zem, hello. Um, Shaggy. Terio again. Um, hi, Ashashin. Shoda, hello. Hi. JP, Gilby. Hi, guys. I still haven't seen June. Don't bring it up. Where are you going to vote for long sleeve, Mike Santos? Sloby. Sloby. I like it. No, I haven't seen Dune part two. I have seen Dune part one. <sighs> Patience is just going to make it so much sweeter. So. Adelazo, hello, nice to see you. It is heavy rotation, yeah, I have a lot of long sleeve things. I mean, the whole prediction's kind of busted. I would vote other every single time. Anyway. Oh, Mac, you won? Congrats. If you had to pick one movie that you had to watch for eternity? Hold on. Like, I can watch no other movies or I have to sit down and watch it for the rest of my life. Just that one movie, okay. I'd pick something long. Ooh, just one. I'm thinking Blade Runner 2049. That's a really hard question. I'd pick something long for sure, but also something that like I find something new every time. And hello. Matrix is a great shout. Oh, true. And I honestly don't really like Ryan Gosling that much, so to stare at him for eternity. If I could pick a trilogy, I'd probably pick Pirates of the Caribbean. Lost in Translation? Wow. OG is good. I'm just a dinny. Um, sh shill. They're both like stunning and so ahead of their time. Original Star Wars trilogy, good shout as well. Pirates just has nostalgia for me, so it's also oh, magic. Dog. Lord of the Rings. Yep. Yep. We have a founder's badge. Good morning, Thad. Are you delivering democracy? Date. Hey, Hannah has. When was his last day off? I can't remember. He's, he's only had like five days off in like nine months, okay? Democracy. Yippee! I've been thinking about this game all day, all night. I really like it. Busy? Did he tell you? No, Thad, you gotta catch up. Watch the VODs three times speed. They're really fun, and you also don't have to watch them. Just put them on in the background, because it's... It's, um, audiobook time. Dog, two months! Thank you! Thank you so much. 
Okay, I'll be honest. There are streamers that I like to watch and I get so behind and they don't even stream eight hours every day. I apologize. I apologize, but I don't know how to stop, so. These are, um, riot sessions mixes. So, technically league, yeah. This one is, um, Diana. If you just search that up on YouTube, you'll get it. It's like an hour and a half of music. It's nice. Following since June? You can do follow age and prove it. I do remember you though. I remember. I like League music, I do. Oh! The bot. Did you hire it? Hmm? Did you pay it off? I think I remember, yeah. There's also someone else, um, Agarano. Your name is like theirs. And it reminds me of Aragano. <sighs> I don't, I think both Blade Runners are excellent. You were having problems with the streaming <laughs> just back then? No, we still do all the time. It was so fucking scuffed. Yeah. Still can be. I like it though. It's the vibe. Which cut? That's true. I've never seen, um... I've never seen the director's cut. I think. But I don't- but the effects in the original Blade Runner are also on- I- I'd say they're actually better than 2049 for the time. Crazy. <laughs> McJarvis. McJarvis, thank you. I haven't seen the anime. The director's cut is the one. Okay. He made the final cut. Okay. I definitely haven't seen the one Ridley Scott made. The intended one. But, like, to stop avoiding the answer, I prefer 2049. Hi, Krogan. But I think they're equally as good. It's just, like, personally. Denny and I are like uh, kindred spirits. Truly, everything about his movies is like, if I could make films, it'd be like that. Loving each other. There's only five early gang redeems, I think. Yeah. You gotta be early. I don't have a time command because people will use it to tell me to go to bed. <laughs> okay. McSantos is like. Uh huh. The only person who's ever earlier than you, sometimes I see Goliathus like half an hour before stream in chat. Favorite directors, Michael Mann, Sofia Coppola, Jim Jarmusch, Alex Garland. Hmm. Morning, Nikra. Goliathus will send like a little hype message in chat. It's really nice. It gets me, gets me going. Huh? It gets me motivated. How can you see? You can see chat at any time, I think. Once I go offline, 
You can see a streamer's chat. Aren't Annapurna making a Blade Runner game? Oh my god. 106 coffee beans. Okay, a thousand. 106 isn't many. Wow. I can't wait for that game. Some disco ambience, one hundred percent. It's getting to me. This game. No, we don't say the D word. <sighs> Stray two. I don't know. I want them to make another game that's the exact same vibe, but it doesn't have to be the same story. Maybe a different story in the same universe. But Stray is so special. Don't say the D word and don't say if you've seen it. Oh, fuck. It's okay. Patience feels really, really good. Uh, in retrospect, patience feels good. <sighs> Excellent movie. Don't say it was Duny. That's amazing. JP, what's that for? So I don't have to see the D word? Oh fuck. <laughs> Crooked. Is that just stir? What do you use to stir? Spoon? Yeah, there's a bunch of VIPs um, that I added so many. There's still um, like 20 unused slots see but like pathfinder should be one um i gotta mm. good afternoon air is longer today uh it grows every day how much longer i actually think i need to cut it soon Yeah, I cut it myself at home. My whole childhood, it was like... Really long. Like, thighs. And blonde. Mohawk. Oh, uh, I think I cut my hair like here when I was a teenager. Yeah, I'm growing it out for now. <sighs> Would love to shave the side but I can't maybe when I'm like 40 50 hi Lajiko nice to see you no that heart said do I have a 
It's a Twitch thing. Black. Mm, I think I'm 83. Yeah, I dyed my hair red. Black. Um, I ombre it once where it was brown and then it was like faded to blonde. That was nice. But all the dyeing changed my natural hair color from blonde to brunette, so... I love pitch black hair too, but my skin's so pale, I don't... I don't know if I can. A 3D printer. This? Founders went like hotcakes. Yep. Look at your hair, Anne. I'm a natural blonde, I thought. Yeah. I found an old photo and posted it in our Discord. From my <laughs> pirate party. When I was a kid. That's true, pale and black hair is... Mm, I dyed it dark brown once, I liked that a lot. DM on Discord? Ooh, I can't wait to see. This is my PC. Highlighting golden thing, ooh. Hello, Chaco. I don't think I'll ever dye my hair blonde. I don't know. When I start having a midlife crisis, I'll just go for it. Everything. My PC looks like a 3D printer. before a bunch dude I want to shave the side so much like I got the idea in high school but it might have been just because of oh, the brand <laughs> might have just been because I was in like a Catholic school where I wasn't allowed to do that but One time my friend braided it so it looked like it was. Fuck, it looked really good. I just can't deal with the um, growing it out and the maintenance and stuff. It does look good though. Short hair is amazing. I wish I could pull that off, but I don't think I can. I think I have to have long. You guys left Thed alone in Helldivers? I'm writing that down. Yeah, enter the founder. Well, just go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Infractions. Curly hair. It does seem difficult, yeah, all the maintenance. <laughs> it's done. <laughs> Don't come here as often as you'd like. You never have to come. It's nice when you can. to disco. I know you had a good day saying the D word. <laughs> oh, I'm not even jealous or envious. I'm totally happy and fine. Okay. Disco time. Do you know? 
That achievement we got yesterday. Literally the sorriest cop on earth. Is the only achievement I have <laughs> in this game so far. In 20 hours. That was my day? Um, very chill. I don't do much on the weekends. I mean, I stream for nine hours, but... Yeah, I gotta go. I gotta go to June. But I don't want to go on a stream date. Maybe if I can... Tuesday or Thursday next week. <laughs> Centrist. I hope everyone's had a good day, a good weekend. I see you all playing Helldivers and I w I'd love to join. I don't think I have the time. Busy week? That's good though. If it comes to Wednesday- no no no, because I might see it Thursday. Take you with me. Are you in South Australia? Are you even in Australia? Me busy? I'm just trying to balance things. It's... We all used to hang out on my, um... My days off. But I keep spending them making clips. Like YouTube shorts. Which is fun. I can't, I, um, <laughs> I might have a problem with grinding non-stop, you know, but it feels so good and the payoff feels so good. Make Santos post them all to Twitter. Mm -hmm. Thanks for the like, Pathfinder, thank you. Source. Mm. Uh, clips, they get views easy, I feel. YouTube is kind of prioritizing short form content, which is, I don't think, very good or sustainable. But they gotta compete. I don't overwork, that's the thing, because I also make sure that I like have time off, watch a movie, do my Sudoku, you know what I mean? Watch a stream. But that's kind of why I don't have time to hang out, because I'm so, you know, grind time, relax time. I have time for myself, yeah. I like to watch movies, documentaries. Your clips give me heaps of inspiration, JP. Your edits, heaps. What do you do for work? Um, what don't you like to know? They're so funny, your clips. I really appreciate, um, even like unedited, anyone who clips things, it's inspo, you know? I, fuck, I wish I was a time traveler. If I was, I would stream on Twitch. Oh shit, did I just give it away? <laughs> I'm not, but if I was, this is exactly what I would be doing, but I'm not.
So many clips, I just want to make a compilation. Do it. Wait, of who? You? It just takes time. friends dude make a comp it's good for um exposure it's i kind of think it's fun as well i like to make things it's a little bit creative oh thank you Of the music, the whole game. Oh, the time travel thing was so that I could say, because I see you in my future. Good. That's good. Frag's joke last night as we were raiding out. Oh my god. That was a good one. Fuck um, you know what? Hold on. Nick sent the recap because I can't remember it all. I knew I would forget. Like all I remember is the posters. Like, that's it. Okay. Here's the 2 a.m. recap. The lorry was opened with the special keys. The female driver made for her truck. After you open it, the smell of perfume and cigarettes, posters of hot girls in the lorry, and a tool case. Oh yeah. Sandpaper on the, yep. Truck pedal. Uh-huh. So both the crimes are overlapping now, yes. Upgraded radio, yes. 20 kilometer range. Not for singular contacts, but to an entire fleet. <laughs> this is news to me. Okay, found a radio in a drawer with a frequency not even Kim heard of. Okay, okay. Yep, drug trafficking. Okay. RCM corruption, right. Thank you, Nick. Nick's getting bonus points for the homework. Okay. I'm, dude, I'm digging in every bin. What's happening? I just recapped. Okay. The only thing I can think of is finding that woman's missing husband, who's not technically missing. Do you want to recap for the whole game? So far? Oh, fuck. <laughs> What's happening? My name's Harry. I forgot everything. I woke up three days ago. We are solving a case of a man who was lynched. We've now found out that it was the Hardy Boys. The guy- oh, It's just so hard to explain everything. The Hardy Boys work for the union. Oh god, there's an eighth hardy boy who is secretly a hardy lady. This hard lady, we just found her truck. In investigating the union um, and the lynching, we were supposed to speak to the woman who works for the corporation that the union is um, striking against. The woman, her name is Joyce. Joyce said, I could help you, but you need to help me. So we were looking into a drug trafficking organization within the union. Can't remember how, but we found this truck by pressuring Tommy into it so he doesn't like us anymore. Um, even though I tried really hard not to have to force him. He told us this is the Hardy Boy ladies truck. We investigated it last night. She's the one responsible for drug trafficking 
and she's the eighth hardy boy involved in the lynching. So it's all coming together. Um, we also did an autopsy on the corpse. I found a bullet hole. So it wasn't actually death by um, lynching. They were shot first and then carried there. Suspicious. Also, I keep making a fool of myself and um, I think Kim kind of likes it. So I'm going to keep doing it. Right. Report back to Joyce. I'm also desperate for a smoke, but no one will give me one and I'm not going to pay, so. Hi, Darth. She lost me at Union. <laughs> Made me think of our union. Okay. It looks like a point. It's so beautiful, this art style. Fed, I'm gonna make a mix for this game. Definitely. Was it a good recap? Also, Nick requested um, like an hour long Like extended ambience of one scene and definitely I'm gonna do it. I also want to do um the dice makers room. I loved it up there. I'm gonna make a video for that as well. Okay this is Joyce the union uh no the union enemy. She works for the corporation. You're back. Good. What can I help you with? I spoke with the lorry man. Yes, my eyes on the harbor have sent word to that effect. What have you discovered? Wait, where are your eyes? It doesn't really matter. And I do apologize for the surveillance. Wild pines can't afford to be blind at a time like this. In any case, it's a relief to know someone has looked into it. If I may ask, Will there be an official investigation? Oh, also... I you discovered there is an operation. Along with forgetting everything, I think it's because I drank myself into oblivion the night before, and um, I'm fighting off some pretty dark, intrusive thoughts, and uh, my body keeps telling me to do drugs and... Um, and, and fuck. And smoke. And I'm fighting it, okay? I'm trying my best. But he's not, he's not doing well. If there is an investigation, it will be part of an ongoing operation, subject to confidentiality. I am sure you understand. I just got an achievement that said get Kim to trust you. Okay, play it cool. Sounds like your body has the right idea. I keep putting my gun in my mouth. I done. <laughs> the gun thing? Yeah, like five times. Wait, if there's an investigation, it'll be part of an ongoing operation. Okay. Of course, detectives. In any case, you've held up your end of our arrangement. I trust you with the rest. Now it's my turn. Let's go. I wouldn't normally break protocol like this, but the situation demands it. If you don't solve this murder, I'm afraid we may have a bloodbath on our hands. A bloodbath? Yes. I'm afraid this strike may descend into a small-scale civil war, with possible consequences for all of Rivershall West. Oh, Kim doesn't want that. I went through his notebook. I think above all else, he wants stability. Okay, otherwise I was going to instigate. Since you are sharing, man, this is also the RCM's worst case scenario. Then we're on the same page, as grim as it may be. How are the lynching and the strikes connected? I have an indirect role to play, I'm sad to say. My employer experienced a momentary lapse of faith in me. 
In that moment, they elected to deploy a private military contractor as an insurance measure. They called it my security detail. What? Was that a confession? No, this is Harry's life. <laughs> None of that is me. Is that what you thought? I see. The music is so pretty. Um, a momentary lapse of faith, huh? They were dispatched after I relayed the Union's initial offer. I see. Every worker... A member of the board. I tried to convince my employer it was simply a piece of rhetoric, or a joke. They did not appreciate the humor. Turning into mid to late 19th century Europe. Do you need a security detail? Absolutely not. These mercenaries are muscle, pure and simple. They are meant to intimidate the Union into surrendering. Who are they, exactly? Cronel, an Oranese military company. As far as I know, three arrived in Martinez. They report to me sporadically, but they do not answer to me. To be frank, our relationship is deteriorating. Okay. They wear ceramic armor, have semi-automatic weapons and years of combat experience. They also have trauma and stressor disorder and no idea how to conduct themselves in an urban civilian environment. Trauma and stressor disorder. Okay. So, what happened? The story is, one of them, the Colonel, I don't know his real name, sexually assaulted a local woman while he was drunk and separated from his unit. This allowed some of the more militant Union members to subdue him. He was taken out behind the whirling in rags and lynched last Sunday night. Okay. Nothing. Mr. Clare refuses to let me into the harbor. I have not been able to discuss this matter with Eight anyone months. there. The remaining two Cronell contractors carry out their orders. Thank now. you so much. Eight months, thank you. I gotta give you a VIP badge. Never seen a gameplay narrated like this. It's so good. Okay. It's a smokescreen. In secret, they are conducting an independent military tribunal into the lynching. Once this investigation is concluded, executions will follow. Oh. Oh. Have I ever been sailing? No, I've been on boats. Sailing. Seems nice. What is the nature of this so-called investigation? Whether to execute one, some, or all of the Union militants. Right. Hmm. We'll never get a game like this from those devs again. <laughs> oh, fuck. I mean, I'm only on day three in game, but it's, it seems like a perfect game. It completely fleshed out and knows totally what it wants to do. That sucks. This is not disco. <laughs> You've made a mess here, Joyce. It was the Union who strung him from that tree. Well, My hope is that you provide a single concrete suspect before Cronell indiscriminately picked theirs. Simply put. Okay, yeah, but they executed someone who committed a crime. And you're gonna execute all of them for committing the execution? So should I execute the guy who executes them? What What's happening? If you don't pin this on someone good and do it fast, they will identify and execute everyone present at the lynching. 
This in turn will force the union to respond. Okay, let's put it on, um, what's his name? Everett. Let's just put it on him. I hate that guy. The debarder have over 2,000 men. It will be a thousand to one. Yeah, the world, it's, it's so good. Even the way information is presented, it's so, like, it's so overwhelming. It really makes you feel like you have no idea where you are, who you are. It's great. Um, is that his name? The guy that made me sit on that tiny chair and I lost health. <laughs> have you ever seen a hornet invade a beehive, Lieutenant? It's not pretty. The Serai's giant hornet, the world's second largest insect, can kill 40 honeybees a minute, while a group of 30 can decimate an entire hive of 20,000 bees in less than four hours. I forgot this isn't real for a second. Second largest insect in the world is a hornet. Yeesh. These men work in tandem using semi and fully automatic firearms. Their armor is virtually impenetrable to muzzle-loaded weapons, even yours. Most Union workers don't have guns at all. That doesn't seem like executing, that just seems like slaughter. The muzzle loaders need to be reloaded after every one or two shots. The automatics every one or two minutes. As I said, a bloodbath. Yep. Hi, Dems. Okay. Um, that's pretty bleak. Many bleak scenarios have already come true. Nameless, badgeless detective of the citizen's militia. What the fuck are you? All we can do is keep the rest from going the same way. One single concrete suspect delivered into civil court. And I may be able to defuse this situation. Okay, well, I've figured out my name, bitch. And I'm gonna find my badge. Um... Oh, Disco is a time of both hedonism and rebellion against the mainstream and counterculture. What are you talking about, Cornell? Not much. Their public resume is relatively good, as far as JP, private thank you. contractors go. I believe they were once called Downwell. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. I don't fully know what the dev situation was, but I had heard about it um, even before playing this. They boast a long list of clients. Saint-Baptiste, Welchman Lorenz, Eendracht. A warning sign, however. The operations concerned all take place in third or fourth world countries. Guarding facilities, escort missions and such. Mm-hmm. And that's a good resume. Meaning they're used to operating in war zones. Yes. All the good conflict corridors, Supramundi, Yesut, the Seminese Islands, countries that don't have a good record reporting atrocious military conduct on their soil. Okay. Anything else? Sadly, no. Before this happened, I had little interest in them. Now that I do, I don't have the resources. Okay. If you still have access to the ICP's database, you could run a better background check than I ever could. It may take some time, though. Do you know a lot about the inner workings of the RCM and the ICP, ma'am? In my line of work, it pays to do your research. I was prepared to deal with the RCM. I did not think I would be dealing with a group like Cronell. Could you contact the company, tell them to call them off? I have. And they will. 
However, these orders take time to reach what is basically a rogue unit out in the field here. Until they do, it's all on us. Okay. She's being truthful. She is pressing them as hard as she can. You said the deceased assaulted a woman. Or he didn't. This is information passed on to me from some teenagers loitering around the canal. I cannot testify by it. What did they say? That the man was killed because he assaulted a local woman. I've asked around a bit. This seems to be the accepted story around Martinez. Okay. The lieutenant consults his notebook, his eyebrows knitted in concentration. Okay. Odd. We haven't heard any reports about an assault in connection with the lynching. Where did it take place? And when? I'm pretty sure we have, Kim. I mean, the Hardy Boys told us, right? Last Sunday night, at the Whirling in Rags, the hostel by the gates. Supposedly, the Colonel was drunk, maybe on narcotics, too. Mm -hmm. Either way, he's alleged to have sexually assaulted a woman. Sometime later, a group of dock workers got their hands on him. Who was the woman? That's a good question, officer. I don't have the slightest idea. As I said, it's a rumor about a rumor. In any case, it's what the Colonel's remaining colleagues believe. You meet her soon enough, you feel. Mm -hmm. The Colonel, the one hanged, did you know him? If you mean, did I see him alive? Yes, but I did not know him. Okay, what, well, did you know his name? Lely his service name, a nom de guerre, most likely. He wouldn't divulge his full name. Only one of them did. A bad sign if there ever was one. We should have done this before the autopsy. But I was stuck. Okay. Tell me about the others first. One is a man. Corty, they call him. A nickname as well. The other a woman, Phyllis DePaul. Corty is the gunner, I believe. DePaul is a radio operator. Okay. What would you say was his eye color? The deceased's. She closes her eyes, trying to picture the man's face. Then shakes her head. I can't remember. Honestly, I have a hard time remembering eye color as well. That's all right, then. Anything else? Nationality? What would you say was his age? He was 40. Or 50. It's hard to say which. He had a combat injury on his lower jaw. It made it difficult to estimate his age. Or gauge his facial expressions. Okay. Indeed. This matches the dental reconstruction we saw on the body. What else? Nationality? Accent? He was, uh, Occidental, I think. Light brown hair, a mixed accent, Oranese, or Missinian, maybe. His injury gave him an accent all his own. In a way, it was humanizing. He had to learn to speak through it, through the injury. That's all I know, I guess. I only met him once. I kind of like this woman. Where are the other two, Max? They've gone to ground, as it were. I don't recommend seeking them out. For one, they're almost certainly armed to the teeth. I will be able to sound as posh as a choice one day. Are you English? They don't have the same respect for the Revachol citizens militia as I do. To put it bluntly, they think you're vigilantes. Ghetto savages. Okay. It will not be a fruitful meeting. I'm savage, all right. We need to know where they are still. You're likely to run into them eventually. 
When that happens, I'll be in a better position to mediate if I don't appear involved. When I get this game, do it! I really like it. Joyce. Scab leader murder bad reply. Okay, where are they? One is obviously the scab leader obviously. at the harbor gates. The one chanting the idiotic slogans. He's barely maintaining his disguise. Oh. The other has a vantage point in a building south of the roundabout. They were keeping tabs on you while you were canvassing the lorry drivers. Oh god, that they saw a lot. Like they saw a measure head crack my fist. I've tried to fight a lot of different people. Told racist lorry driver to um, go fuck himself. Hmm. Hi Z. Well, one must be the goon in ill-fitting work clothes. That may be so. I still hope you heed my advice. There's no need to kick the hornet's nest. I'm a cop. For all your talk of averting this catastrophe, the situation at the gate is a border keg. Does this not bother you? Of course it bothers me, Lieutenant. But my hands are tied. How would my employer react if it appeared I were intervening on behalf of the Union? Your concern may be appearances. Ours is keeping the peace. And one is probably in a building overlooking the roundabout. That would afford a good vantage point. In any case, it's practically inaccessible. Where is your radio for contacting them, if I may ask? Do you have an earpiece? Heavens no. I'm not an undercover agent. There's a short wave at the ship's wheel. I had another question. I hope I can answer it better. Ooh, how much time do we have? Until the executions start. Truthfully, I don't know. It depends on their progress identifying the members of the lynch mob and their impatience. Oh. Okay. They don't report their progress to you? Not on this matter. I'm afraid they consider this a personal initiative. Seagull squawk over the bay. It's a matter of days, not weeks. Fuck. Like 15 or 2? Okay, that's enough. I am sorry to have been the bearer of bad news. If there is anything else I can help you with, please ask. Now! Tell me about these tattoos. Of course. Excuse my hesitation before. Yeah, yeah. Reaches over the guard wire, takes the photo. Holds it in her hand. For about half a minute, in silence. It was taken with a trigger not long ago. This is the man's upper body. There were no more markings on his hands or legs. Her mouth is relaxed. The accordion lines near her mouth vanish. The pearls of her eyes move slowly on the photo's surface. What do you think? Uh, sorry. I was trying to see... If I can read the web of interdependencies between these points, the stars. I can't. But that's how you read this story. The points themselves don't have letters, numbers, anything. Their size, location on the body and distance from each other tells you what they represent. Port cities. On the oceans. This is an Oranese map of the waterways, a sailor's tattoo worn by wayfarers of the DeLorean century. As early as 300 years ago, the sailors would mark their bodies to map their travels. Okay. Does this help us? What's the use of this map? The sailor's soul would use it to fly back home if they should die abroad. This is a sort of contraption to be reeled back in by. The silver cord, they would call it. 
Where is he now? Uh, probably shouldn't tell her I spoke to him. This one's going nowhere but the morgue. The times have changed. Ooh. Joyce, rebel with us. Quit this fucking corporation. What travels did the dead man make? Quite a few. Redafort, the Oranese capital, traditionally stands on the right shoulder. He started somewhere near here, I think. What next? Then he made his way to the Preto Grangi, through what I think must be the Stutz Canal, an artificial channel through the Occident. From the Preto, he sailed to the Insulindic Ocean, first the Semenese Islands, then this. What is it? Revershoal. Those are the two constants. Redafort on the shoulder and Revershoal in the heart. They started the tradition of these maps right after the discovery of Insulinde, at the dawn of the inter age. Yes, exactly. She sounds like Kira. Who? From what? Had any good mishaps? <laughs> Not yet. It's only been like 20 minutes. Which are three? The witch. Akira! You think? You said you can't read it. I can't. This man was no sailor. And these are no ports. I can understand geographic fragments, but not their meaning. Ooh. She does. Kira Metz, yeah. In Martinez, looking into Krenel, he writes in one. Then the man puts down his pen and rubs his temples with both hands. Outside, there is a siren. Distant gunshots on the streets of the Jamrock Quarter. Mm. Thank you for the follow, thank you. Second coffee, good morning! This is my second of the day too. I hear it. This man is no brother of mine. But this is his service history. That makes sense to me. We have no more use for a map of the waterways. Just like we don't need sailors the way we used to. This is what the custom would morph into on the Occident. Mercenary tattoos. Okay, could you tell me more? His platoon members? Oh, who could? The other contractors. Though I do not suggest you go and show them that picture. This man was their friend and comrade. Understood. Surely there are other people to ask about the tattoo. This is not necessary to complete the task, officer. It's a dangerous side task. Search elsewhere. Calling me officer now, are you? Yes, I am. Finally, some authority. I'll ask other people. No, I'm asking the marks. Do what you have to do, detective. I don't think deciphering that tattoo should come before public security. Yeah. But if you should wade into the mob to find out, I couldn't stop you. Yeah. We will be careful, ma'am. <laughs> Water. W-A-T-E-R. Okay, that's all for the tattoos. Is there anything else I can help you with? I have one question about reality. More lessons in basic reality? Yes, please. My favorite part of the day. Go ahead, ask really? me anything. Okay, what times are these? These are unimportant times, detective. You and I were born after the dust had settled. A thousandth of a second too late. 
Too late for what? For the big time. Her eyes light up. There's a flash of teeth. What's the big time? The revolution. What is this revolution? It's quite easy. Every hundred years or so, our species gets together to decide what's next, who gets shot in the head, and who gets the mineral rights. It's a real kerfuffle. Okay, who got shot? Those would be the communists. Generally speaking, 40 million people got shot in the head during the World Revolution. But the communists, they all got shot in the head. Hey, not all of them. Oh, and the anarchists too. They shot them well. So well, one forgets they even existed. Did they shoot back? Did they ever. Before they got shot themselves, they shot two million people. That's a tragedy. Yes. The Red Deluge. The Insulindian Deluge, they call it. I had a deluge in my head. Yes. An acute thiamine deficiency can be exacerbated by alcoholism. Oh. Exacerbated means made worse. Okay, I know that. I remember English. Anyone else get shot in the head on the opposing side? Oh, lots of people. Even the king got shot in the head. Or thrown beneath a horse. Or drowned. Accounts differ. It was unceremonious. Just as well, he wasn't actually the king. Just the king's nephew. Is there combat? I mean, I did roundhouse kick a guy. And I took a shot at it was a corpse and I wasn't supposed to, I wasn't aiming for the corpse but I shot a gun the real king abdicated and lived out a long and productive life as a venture capitalist in Grad <gasps> coward I prefer the term risk averse King Guillaume was nobody's fool. He could smell a PR disaster brewing. So he got out alive, and his nephew Frisell got shot in his place. Hmm. Him and tens of thousands of his wonderfully fascist kingsmen. It was a wild time. So who got the mineral rights? The liberals got the mineral rights. And by mineral rights, I mean everything. And by liberals? Liberals are usually middle-class people, detective. Or the remaining gentry. The beneficiaries of the pre-revolutionary arrangement. You okay, Thad? <laughs> Goodbye, the Chico. Nice seeing you. Take care. Some were rich enough to stay with the constitution. With monarchy. Big mistake. Others bet on the revolution. They were called the ultras, or ultra liberals they fared well what happened take care okay how'd the liberals win at all they didn't win so much as survive we were the last ones standing when the war ended Everyone else got shot in the head, remember? <laughs> You're singing this song? <laughs> Beautiful. We. She's one of them. Of course. Them. If everyone got shot, who was there to surrender to? To foreign intervention. The coalition. Those people really took the mineral rights. You said the Liberals took everything. The Liberals took everything that wasn't nailed to the ground. The Coalition took the ground. The ocean, the laws, and the people. Okay, who are the Coalition? The Coalition of Nations. Grad, Mesk, Vesper, Messina, Oranje, and Sur la Clé. The armed center of the world. They landed here and ended the revolution. 
It was the moralist thing to do. Okay. There is bitterness in her voice, tempered with understanding. She is critical, but ultimately understands the cause. Hmm, moralist? The moralists believe in keeping everything exactly the way it is. They believe in mineral rights and not shooting people in the head. Mm -hmm. At least not in the same manner and volume as the others do. They are the long-standing provisional rulers of Revachol now, the coalition government. This is their zone of control. They embolden the RCM with crumbs of the same law they took. Technically speaking, you are a moralist. Ambient reminds you of cyberpunk. It does have the, um, like, existential, like, upsetting but kind of beautiful vibe, yeah. The color of moralism is blue. The official motto of Moral Intern, or Moralist International, is a blue forget-me-not, a piece of gray sky. Unofficial. For a moment, there was hope. Kim was a moralist, right? Hmm. I don't think I am one, ma'am. Of course. Not easy to be moderate about head shooting in your line of work. Rooty tooty, pointy shooty. Check this out. <laughs> That's the way of history. Yep. When was this kerfuffle? The turn of the century revolution. Don't answer it. It's a trick question. Who? The revolution began in 02 on the Isla of Grad. Though, by the end, nearly the whole world had gotten involved. Okay, who started it? It wasn't a who, but a what. A pandemic of Zarat, a particularly virulent prion disease, which the authorities in Grad proved unable to contain. Then Mazulf came along and overthrew the government. What did Zarath do? It made people overthrow their governments. Really? Of course not. <laughs> it was a highly infectious microorganism that destroyed brain tissue. Oh god. The actual causes of the revolution were material. The pandemic only provided the spark. Where did it spread from there? From Revachol and Grad? Not far. The world managed to cauterize itself. Mazov's government was overthrown in 08 and the coalition crushed the Revachol commune two years later. It was the end. Okay. We're casting you have finger guns in my true. Yep. Okay, next. Why? You and I, officer. Our lives in the zone of control. Something tells you her life and yours are not that similar. Maybe it's because <laughs> she has a boat. And you have that necktie? I think our lives... Oh, sorry. I think our lives are very different, ma'am. No doubt. But we share the same time and position on the planet's crust. That counts for more than you think. Hmm. Yeah. True. <laughs> Okay, what's the zone of control? A city-state divided into free market zones under the everlasting interregnum of the Coalition of Nations. And you, of course, the citizens' militia. The clatter of typewriter keys fills the main hall of the reappropriated silk mill. Precinct 41. Chad Tilbrook presses enter. Outside, officer Elfboy Williams slams the door of an armored motor carriage. The zone of control is the third incarnation of Revachol, after the failure of the suzerain and the commune. Okay, what happened in the rest of the world? Modernity. They developed the marvels of the inter communication. Telematic milieus, radiation, colored plastics. Meanwhile, 
in Revachol West. The aftermath continues for the fifth decade. It's been like this for how long? 43 years. Hard to fathom, I know. What have we been doing all that time? The 20s saw a decade of urban war, west of the river leveled, offshore platforms in flames. Still, it's regarded as an improvement on what came before. 08 to 19 was simply hell. And after? The 30s? Things settled down in the 30s. Revachol East transformed itself into the world's largest tax haven, with the international community's blessing. For the first time in a long time, it seemed like things were going somewhere. Were they? No. It was a market mirage fueled by cocaine and quantitative easing. The 40s dispelled it like a cold splash, an Isla wide hangover, you might say. And here we are. She can't see us. Welcome to reality, baby. What would you have done differently? Good question. What would you have done differently? I just woke up. I don't know. No. Her first. I asked you. And I asked you. Kill ass first. Past less detective of the citizens' militia. What insight has acute encephalopathy given to you? Oh, good question. I would have sought a medical solution. I don't think it's that easy. A cold creeps up your spine, reaching its tendrils up your neck, toward the back of your head. She like quadruple Una reversed me. Is that... are you allowed to do that? Bitch. So a quarter of humanity simply lost their minds. And how would you stop a prion? A complex folding protein. Unlife. With the technology 50 years ago. Wouldn't it be more so the psychology of existing within a pandemic? Not like the actual disease, but like the effect it has. Yeah, how about hygiene, social care, and a little research program? The wind stops, and for a moment, there's silence. Easy. The charge dissipates into the dark water. All is quiet on the Martinez Inlet. A dog barks. A gunshot echoes off the walls of some distant building. A woman's voice. There is peace in the heart. Is that the dice, bitch? Good hygiene. Really. A very moderate solution to an extreme problem. Well... It's those sort of half measures that doomed the authorities in Grad. Okay, what would you have done? <laughs> when they failed to step up, Marzorf and his party stepped in. In this particular case, maybe a more robust state response might have been appropriate. Executions. <clears throat> Opinions expressed here do not reflect the official position of the RCM. Actually, Kim, mine do. Everything I say is the exact word of the RCM. And what is your official position, Lieutenant? My position, ma'am? My parents got ripped to shreds in the revolution. I would have gone the same way. I was saved by being two years old. That's my position. The abattoir. Understandable. Maybe that's enough about the times. They are what they are. Who knows? An afterbloom may yet come. <laughs> anyway, enough sentimentality. Is there anything else you want to know? Not so fast. Who is she in all this? Ask her who she is. She owes you an answer. Okay. I want to know what you are. Hmm. She won't maneuver her way out of this one. What are you? 
I am the vilest of the vile. A traitor. A devourer of nations and infants. Write this down, Kim. I am an ultra. She raises the corner of her mouth, smirking, revealing a canine. <laughs> the Asimir. Yes. I am the nether creature of the Forbidden Swamp. I pushed the king under a shit wagon and betrayed the revolution. My kind surrendered the nation to financial colonists. I can see you thought we'd gone extinct. After all, no sane person identifies as an ultra-liberal anymore. Not in broad daylight. You're a centrist at heart. A real moralist, no? Tell me, now that I've uncoiled myself, do you find me frightening? I'm a secret communist. In her green eyes, you see a mixture of truth and self-satire. Decades of guilt and pride. Forgive her. Kill her. But only because you like pearlescent teeth and those light green eyes. Okay, the truth is, you are charming. I like listening to your voice, so I forgive you, but... A devil, who being of great charm and guile, sneaketh into the homes of the godly. You saying I'm charming? And guiling? Beneath her waterproof raincoat and silk shirt is a body imbibed in numb twelve perfume. You are suddenly and intimately aware of it. Vile devil. I hope so. I hope we are able to continue as friends <sighs> despite my scaly bulk. Fuck. And the insanity, bloodshed, and transfer of wealth that took place here. It was not the plan all along. I don't want to sleep with her. When the dust settled, the liberals were the only ones left to clean up the mess. By virtue of their survival, they were handed enormous power to shape the future. This was all our last generation managed. Hi, Brady. Yeah, she is charming. Hi, Helen A. Hello. Love this game? I'm liking it a lot. I did say I don't want to sleep with her after I got friend zoned, but it was. I didn't want to before that. Would you have done something differently? With due respect to our overlords, the eternal caretaker government that keeps Martinez a monument to the efficacy of its artillery. While a gentle wind sweeps the streets in the rebuilt east, light drizzle washing it clean, lights go up and motor carriages circulate the tracks. I would not have relinquished sovereignty to the coalition. Not here in Martinez. And not in the Stella Maris or Delta Beachheads either. If not for my own sake. She realizes her small, cold fists are clenched. She loosens them. Harry wanted to have fuck, absolutely. Not me. Then for my daughters. We had an obligation to defend our sovereignty. We should have burned the whole Isola down rather than let them have it. Wow. Dark orange flames reflect in her green eyes. An oil fire on the ocean. You're a patriot. Yes, I suppose I am. But I wouldn't be a patriot anywhere but here. Well, that's probably what all patriots think. Seditious talk, man. You're smart. Perhaps. My intellectual vanity will be my undoing. So you have daughters? Yes. Whatever else I am. I'm also a mother. And a wife. Shit. Now, shall we return to reality? Present tense wife? That's all. Glad to have been of assistance. The little that I know. Anything else? Hmm, okay, let me use the bathroom really quick. Real quick.
Oh, I enjoy this. Oh, the ambience. Okay, 11 seconds. It's never cap. Never ever. I'm realizing you get skill points so fast. I thought it would be um like what you want to put your points into, but I'm realizing it's what you want to not put your points into. Like you'll have most things except. Is that right? I don't want to keep thinking because I keep getting minuses. Should I get rid of some of these? Probably, probably this one. Oh, but I get 4 XP. How much is that? I mean, that could add up. Minus one visual calculus, minus one authority. Let's keep that for now to farm XP. Nice, nice. I'm gonna want this one. Do I? I don't want it. I'm not a superstar, I never should have... Hmm. Democracy. That's gonna give me a debuff. No, I don't think I should derealize. Should I? No. Um. No, let's just leave one empty. Um. I'm getting this for Kim. I also really love the dialogue that it, it gives. Um, let's leave a skill point. Time passes differently in the slow zone, thank you. You'd have to pick 50 commie things. No, it's any left wing. Anything left wing. Just, mm. Mm. Hell yeah, comrade. That's what I'm talking about. It already pays for itself. Um... 
have dice to pick up. I think we had to call someone. In Kim's car, no? I don't remember. Also, the bottles don't... like, spawn daily. Yet. Nick? I thought you couldn't be here. Your notes were super useful. I read them out at the start of class. Thank you for that. Inside, you see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone, a pull-out toolbox, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. Radio. This is precinct 57. How may I assist you? Have you heard back? Oh, is this it? About the serial number? Armor was produced by Fairweather in their facilities in Betancourt, sur la clé in 42. It was part of a special order for Corps de Pharmacy, a security firm contracted to protect the interests of Oranis pharmaceutical companies in the Seminine conflict. So, it seems the armor went to Seminine. That's where the paper trail ends, though. Even the firm has proven difficult to track. Corps de Pharmacy has been renamed several times over in the years since the armor was issued. Be here for 30 minutes? Okay. One of its names is Cornell. Yes! That is the most recent name the ICP has been able to connect to the CDP. And the one before it was Downwell. Mm -hmm. I also have one called Sediment, Sediment, but I think that might be a different contractor. Okay. No, they were called Sediment. And Somatosensor, it seems. All that during the last nine years. What? Okay. Armor like this isn't mass produced. It would have probably been fitted. Perhaps there's a record of who signed for this particular suit of armor. Ooh, a suit of armor like this would have been customized. Yes, but the ICP tends to be reluctant to share private sector records. I could try to talk them into it, though. This is a fun challenge for her. An opportunity to contribute beyond doing her job by rote. She'll gladly put in the extra effort for Team RCM. Back then, eh? Thank you, officer. I really appreciate your efforts. Glad to help. Call back tomorrow. Hopefully I'll have more for you then. Okay. I thought I had another thing to call in. Could you connect me to the 41st? Just a moment, officer. 10 for come in, officer. Never mind. Never mind. Goodbye. Over. Roger that. 10 10. Over and out. What? Maybe it was just checking this. I don't have to call in my bullet. I based. Run down. Oh. When did you go to bed? Were you here when I stuck my hand up that guy's brain? I can't remember last time. <laughs> okay, so the brain. Not much then. You were here on the bud. Oh, it was the last thing you. <laughs> Sorry about that. I can go down the coast. Passage. My badge. Okay, we're doing well. My authority. Where the fuck is my badge? Can I check my coat pockets? Let's get down the coast. I was thinking about buying more books as well. Oh wait, I haven't paid guards for today. I have 45. Real. 
I think I have to give him 20. Oh, we did. Oh, that's huge, actually. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the political discussion. Something inside. Oh. Yoink. Thank you, Comrade Clowner. Um. So, we were investigating the drug trafficking in the Union, and I had to ask uh, the lorry drivers, and I was trying so hard, because Tommy knew her, right? But he didn't want that on his conscience, he didn't want to tell us. And I tried really, really hard, but I couldn't do it without crushing him, so I just thought, fuck it, there doesn't seem to be another way. So I pressured him, he doesn't like us anymore, but he can cope. Um, and he gave us the keys to a lorry parked at the roundabout. And we went through it. And there was sandpaper on the, the pedal. Which puts her at the scene of the crime. Because there, were the, there was an eighth woman. And one of her souls was more worn out than the other. So now she's involved in the drug trafficking and the lynching. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we don't know who she is. She had like violet and blue hair. Um, and she's missing. Ooh, I like it over here. Yeah, he had her keys. Traffic beyond the gate. I did almost fight the racist lorry driver again. Again. Sign says no entry. An inverted star. Comrade? I can't remember what our symbol is. on empathy. Oh, fuck. Whatever. They're cool. His last name is Dubois. Harry. Unless the whole town is gaslighting me. Broken down the fence and the barbed wire. Creaking ahead. Broken axle. Banged up fuel caster. Uh-oh, is this me? Trained of booze, frozen to the ice. <gasps> I hope all this music is on the soundtrack. I get the vibe it might not be. 
banged up motor carriage lies half submerged in the icy water, slowly sinking into the Insulindian ocean. Only the cabin top, rear wheels, and the engine remain visible. Mm -hmm. It must be cold and lonely down there, in the icy water. The seawater has already started to corrode the metalworks. This is where the tracks on the plaza were leading to. It appears to be so. Lieutenant has a peculiar look in his eyes. He inspects the wreckage. Let's investigate. I agree. We should definitely investigate. Suddenly, you're reminded of the Lieutenant's Kanema and the weird feeling about the fish and the seaweed you had. Am I? Fish? Seaweed? I thought this was about Kim's car. What do you mean? Of course. Everything's okay. Hey, what are you talking about? I'm gonna run my hand over it. The motor carriage is properly stuck in the ice. Getting it out would require a team of specialists. A single day in the salty seawater would ruin most vehicles. But this one looks worn even in places the salt water hasn't touched it. Everything's fine. What is the make of this MC? Can I see a logo? The logo is too deep in the murky water. You can't make it out. But you do see a monkfish float by. Cute. How long has it been here? The ice hasn't closed around the vehicle yet. My guess is it's been here since last Saturday or Sunday. Is it Wednesday? <laughs> Stop asking questions. I'm a detective. Um. Jacob. Who is this? Your mocking tone finds no response. Hey, I wasn't mocking. I, the waves. I wasn't mocking. I was hoping Kim would tell me who this is. I'm sorry, I didn't... Did you say something? I did not. But I'd say it has been here since last Saturday or Sunday. Fuck. I don't remember. What should we do? Let's wait for the low tide and see what's inside. How long will it take for the low tide to come in? I don't know. An hour or two tops? Okay. We really have to wait two hours? Shit, my day. Oh! As you sit down in the old rusty playground, the world around you becomes very silent. Look how Kim's sitting. Now that is cool. The hinges creak under your weight. Dangerously so. Please don't break. Nothing but the sound of seagulls high above in the sky, echoing like distant laughter. Ice cracks around the blue motor carriage in the sea. I don't think he wants me to whistle. The tune on your lips forms a strange, yet undeniably beautiful contrast with the surrounding bleakness. Awesome. The lieutenant gives you a quick glance, then, still looking straight ahead, he joins you with a higher pitched and slightly more melodic trill. The wind blows. In the distance, behind the church, some vagrants are having an argument over a bag of tear they found in the reeds. Further away, a flock of seagulls lands. I'm whistling with Kim. The clouds pass in the sky, and the shadow of the swing moves like the hour hand on a timepiece. Thirty minutes have passed. We could have done other work. Looks like this might take a while. Time to present a good topic for discussion.
Would you rather sit on an ant hill for an hour or stand in a river of leeches? Well, historically, leeches have been used to prevent and even cure many ailments. Yeah, but this is a river of leeches. Okay, he's thinking. I can do this. Let's do this. Who'd want to sit on an anthill? There are no therapeutic benefits to. Clouds on the horizon grow darker, and the shadow of the swing set keeps climbing. You hear the distant rumble of the city. Thirty minutes pass. If you had to decide with either the Strikers or the shipping company, who would you choose? Luckily, I am already a member of an independent organization. No. And therefore, do not have to choose between a rock and a hard place. No, but I'm asking, and so therefore you have to. I understand. You decide with the Union. Your voice echoes on the water, strange and out of place in the environment. Thirty more minutes pass. Can you make out the mark now? Detective, I've been able to make out the mark ever since we arrived. I find it odd that you haven't. It's a Coupri, Model 40. Oh. Yes. Why haven't you? Well, it is a simple and rugged machine, favored by working men, government offices, uh, firefighters, animal control people, you know, those kinds of people. Ugh, those people. Yeah. Okay, is that a number? Yes, 41. What do you think it stands for? <sighs> a car that maybe I drive? It's as if he knows what it stands for, but wants you to say it. It's pedagogical. Oh, God. I'm sorry, Harry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> 41. Precinct 41. A massive pit opens up in your stomach, and the most terrible feeling comes over you. No. Just no. Say no to this, Harry. Am I okay? No? Yes, your car is in the sea. Face it, so we can start dealing with this. Could be a coincidence. The lieutenant just shakes his head. Oh god, I'm gonna have a fucking meltdown, Kim. Because you get some essential oils ready or something. I'm afraid so, yes. It looks like you drove your police motor carriage into the sea after you jumped across a canal. We were just whistling, remember that? You can still whistle. Besides, the night is always darkest before the dawn. Oh, Kim. Please don't leave me again. I can't do it without you. Okay, look, I could have been in pursuit. Of whom? I don't think so. If anything, you were probably drunk. Probably, but not definitely. Probably. Try <laughs> definitely. <laughs> no. No. It's not definite. I, could f I can fix it. That is very unlikely. All the electrics are toast. That goes for the electromagnetic steering and brake systems as well. I didn't mean fix the car, I mean just the situation. You'd be lucky to find one undamaged component in there. In a few months, there will be nothing but rust left of this vehicle. It'll be cheaper to buy a new one. Mm -hmm. Well, not cheaper. This motor carriage costs 40,000 real, but in the long run, it still makes more sense to buy a new machine than try to refurbish this. Don't we earn like 20k a year? Hold on. I 
couldn't even pay my fucking hostel bill. Let's face it, this is a substantial loss to your district's budget. <sighs> I mean, my station only has four other vehicles in addition to my kinema. Mm -hmm. uh, can we get it out? Detective, we don't. A rescue operation really isn't viable at this point. <laughs> Could we push it in further so no one has to see it? You know? It's just gonna be there, like that. I'm afraid it will have to be there like that for many years. Look at it. Parts of it might be salvageable, but overall, this machine is a write-off. Hey, at least I got away with my life. They're not going to take me back after this, are they? People are more valuable than machines. Training a police officer is even more costly. That's a really nice thing to say. But I lost my badge and my gun and my uniform. And now this. The lieutenant adjusts his glasses and doesn't say anything. There is also a fourth thing you've lost. My memories? My wife? More precious than the gun, the badge, and the motor carriage combined. Lost forever into the deepest of seas. Dignity. Kim, do I have dignity? <sighs> At least I can see what's in there now. Yes, let's go take a look. Hooligan. Shit. Shit. Is this what skull face used? This is it, the scene of the party, the fire pit, cigarettes and empty bottles all evidence it. It looks like a lot of folks partied here. Looks like they were here a while, judging from all the bottles. The sunken motor carriage provided them a focal point, like a goose ice sculpture or a chocolate fountain. Oh, it actually wasn't me. Kim. Looks like we have a couple party goers here. Looks like it. Looks like they had a great time laughing. Hey, let's keep moving, detective. Okay. Somehow, he doesn't want to dwell on it. Fuck, was it me? Shit. <laughs> Commander? No, surely not. LTN2JFR. That's me? What the fuck happened? I'm Commander. I love this jacket though. Visual calculus. Oh, this is very detective. Hmm. Look at me. Dick Mullen, dude. The 
footprint in the snow lead away from the accident. Shit. Kim, don't come, just in case. Don't come. I decided the boat has recently been tarred. Quick travel. A wedding stone. Well worn, covered in rust. White curtains have been drawn shut. Look at the badge. Oh, I can interact! It's gonna hurt my morale. The police badge on which you see the photo of a man. You. Some seaweed is stuck to the back. I found my badge! At least something good came out of all this. Study. Encased between two durable plastic sheets is a bluish card with lines of information and a watermark in the shape of the street grid of Rivershall West. You see a photo, a name, a rank, a document number, the date of issue, and, in the lower right corner, your precinct. Just do it. The man keeps winking at you with his green-gray eyes. The photo is old, no doubt about that. Good choice. A newer photo would look different okay bitch how old eight maybe ten years the guy in the picture is rather good looking he's got a nice haircut and is distinctly lacking in massive sideburns he's winking what do you think his face is already contorted by the expression <laughs> although it looks less grotesque on him than it does on you now the hell the badge in your hand shines as you rotate it, catching light. You see lines of information on it, and a shining watermark. Harrier. Harrier? That's long for Harry. So you are Harry. Everard was half right. Probably not a lot of people know your full name. Whoever told him you're Harry Dubois didn't. Hmm. What kind of name is Harrier? It's a wartime name. Revolutionary. The kind mothers give their sons during troubled times. Like Undying or Boxer or Ironhide. No, I gotta accept it. But call me Harry. At least to make your acquaintance, Harrier Dubois. Okay, call me Harrier. He's not going to call you Harrier. Oh. He'll keep calling you Officer when he's angry with you. A detective when he's not. Oh. Okay, so... Officer, I've done something bad. The badge in your hands shines as you rotate it, catching light. You see lines of information. Rank. LTN. Lieutenant? 2JFR? Lieutenant W. Freighter. What's a U Freighter? The lieutenant is a rank above sergeant and below captain. It's the highest rank in the RCM that still does field work. I am a lieutenant. Double Euphrater? The title of Euphrater is added to your rank when you decline a promotion to a higher rank. In your case, captain. You have declined twice, thus your double Euphrater. Wow. Declined. There are many reasons one would do this. The rank above you in your precincts décontage might be taken. Or sometimes promoted officers do not want to replace their superiors out of respect. Oh. And sometimes they just prefer the type of police work available to their current rank. In your case, lieutenant. Heavy duty case solving machine. That's me. No. Decontage. Decontage is the hierarchical system employed by the Revachol citizens militia. It means counting down to twos. Okay. The countdown is modeled after the dual leadership system employed by the left during the revolution, which in turn was developed by last century experimental psychologists in the University of Königstein.
<laughs> the lowest rank is junior officer, usually teenagers. Then there are the patrol officers, then sergeants, lieutenants, and then a captain. That's basically it, except for a few kings. Kings? Kings like satellite officers and the additionally a freighter rank, I already explained. Okay. Okay. The long and short of it is, you're his superior. But he doesn't know that. Right? Because he didn't even know my name. It's a satellite officer? You are given the title of satellite officer if your partner is quickly promoted through the ranks and you rise with him. You don't seem to be a satellite. Oh. You've been putting up with me because we're the same rank. No, I've been putting up with you because despite an unconventional approach, you are doing good police work. Thank you, Kim. It matters more than driving your motor carriage into the sea. Ah. Uh, and now we've even found your badge. Yep. He trusts you for now. Try not to spoil it. It's gone. Such a small yet precious thing. Expensive paper caught between thick plastic, like a fly in amber. Clivus. Hello. Okay, cereal. Rev, 126205, Jam, 41. That's just the serial number. Rev Achol, Jam Rock, yep. Precinct 41, with some numbers thrown in there for good measure. Okay. Date of issue, 7th November 50. Four months ago. I'm guessing that's when you were promoted to the rank of Lieutenant W. Freighter. Four months. A new badge usually comes with a new rank. You seem to have been doing well then. Yep. The case created a lot of edge you have to take off. The death march really gets us going. Stop. A lot can happen in four months, especially in winter. The winters are never easy on you. Of that you are sure. Mm -hmm. Precinct 41? Yes, it's the designation of your precinct. 41, like mine says 57. The 57th is mostly industrial harbor, a lot of asphalt. The 41st is... It's a tough station to work in. You have all of Jamrock to cover. That district should have three precincts, but money is what it is. Do you think Kim wants to have fuck? No, but I do. Just got back from dinner? Nice. I hope it was good. It's no wonder you are like you are, he thinks. But then again. Kim wants results, yes. And maybe after the results? But then again, it's a legendary district and a hell of a station too. It must be an honor and a curse to work with people like Price, McCoy, Berdyayeva. Yes. Roberts, Feuerbach, Dimitri. Suddenly, names from your decomptage flash in your forebrain. Hmm. He knew all those people, although they're not from his station. They must be big. The badge in your hand shines as you rotate it, catching light. You see lines of information on it and a shining watermark. Hey, he's not really a co-worker. We're from different precincts. So once this is all over, you know what I mean? We don't even work together. Let's go. Cinderblock's charred. Okay. Dust covered linens. Dried tulips on a bed. Ooh. Kingdom of Conscience? I like my disco pants. 
These are professional. I want to have no minuses, but these are who I am. Looks at everything in Kuno's yard? I think so, yeah. Bushes are too thick and thorny. Okay. First playthrough, I never put on pants. Is there dialogue? That it's true. I don't know if I've missed things. Oh, Goliath this. Another injury. <sighs> Can you look after yourself? into the house from this angle. Locked. The music. Shut up, I can't read! What are these doing in the fish? Oh, but Kim likes these shoes. Oh, but these are kind of hot. It's got a heel. Five centimeters. Yeah. Cool. I look so cavalry. Planks creak beneath your weight. That leads to a school of fish swimming in the kelp. Goliathus. When was the last time you weren't injured for a day? No injuries at all. Hi, officer. Owen in a raincoat stands on the quay. Considering an overturned boat. A sword in a scabbard hangs from her hip. Anything I can help you with? It's cool. Where are we? A fishing village on the seashore. This place doesn't really have a name. It's sometimes called Illicibla. Why? The sign on the street leading here is illegible. Has been since they built this place. Okay, I have questions. What's your name? The name is Lillian. People call me Net Picker. I think I have time for questions. And that was actually the second one. Ask her about the cool sword. Helps to break the ice. Nice sword. Come with the story? Unfortunately, the factory sold this one with a three year warranty instead of a story. <laughs> it's to intimidate folks mostly. I have a crush. It's imposing. It's a regular mass-produced sword, like a shovel or an axe. Nothing fancy, just for intimidation. Why do you need intimidation? From time to time, people need a lesson in respect. That's just the way it is. Back in the day, I caught the eyes of many men. <laughs> and believe me, men need a lesson in manners from time to time. Why don't more women arm themselves? What makes you think we haven't? <laughs> the truth is that almost everyone in this life is scared and tired and stupid and too dull for that. That goes for men too. But they put on an act for us. Pretend like everything's good and living in shit doesn't bother them. Like anyone falls for that. 
Behold. <laughs> you know, the most important thing is to make a woman laugh. Not bad. <gasps> Thank you. They're laughing at me, but it's a win. Do you like it? Sure. It looks as if you could face down any horror in the world with that same unchanging grin. It's like a shield. Thanks. The traces of her laughter are still there, in her eyes, fading fast. Where are all the men? Some went to patch their wounds, their lesson learned. Others were more thick-headed. And one of them, I ended up marrying. Shit. Present tense. Where's your husband? Gone. Disappeared? It absolutely does not. We are not going to look for him. Kim, while you were gone, I picked up a missing person's case. Are you okay with that? Because I'm doing it. No, no. There's nothing to find. He's dead. Lost to the waves. <laughs> the waves. They murdered him? I'll track them down. Oh. He didn't respect the sea. Went out there, drunk like a skunk, and sure enough, one day, the boat was found floating empty. The bloated corpse turned up two weeks later. Playing a good human being in this game is... <laughs> it's like a fucking minesweeper. Oh my god. Now, before you tell me how sorry you are for my loss, know that it was four years ago, and I've moved on. There's only so much mourning you can do for a drunk with sinewy muscles. She really likes those muscles, though. It's in the way she pronounces sinewy. <laughs> you see what I mean? Time is the best cure for sorrow. Us working folk don't have the luxury to be bed sick with melancholy. I buried him, mourned for an appropriate amount of time, and went on. Life didn't really change that much for me and the kids. Kids? Okay. This is neither a touchy nor a very interesting topic for her. Damn. She looks like she's ready to go on a date with another, <laughs> better, drunk. Ask her. Both of you could need some action. Is that true? Hey, I'm sinewy. I'm finding a, I'm finding a spot. I'm gonna do it. Is that your boat? Sure is. The sun, I call her. Coated with a fresh layer of tar just yesterday. It'll take some time for it to dry, assuming the sunny days continue. Is she a cannibal? <laughs> um... What do you do? Like I said, fish mostly. Sail the waves, take care of the kids, pick nets. Right now I'm tarring a little skiff. What do you do for fun? I sell the fish to people in the Delta to serve at their fancy restaurants. Authentic insul Indian cuisine. Is that enough to make a living? Sometimes I also walk to the beach to see what the sea has given up. The sea is full of surprises. You're like living in Stardew Valley. Keep it professional, man. Don't make it sound like you're hitting on her. Even if I am? This is what is called a conversation. You don't have to be guarded right now. <laughs> Interesting. What have you found? Wood. Pieces of glass. Every once in a while we see dead bodies. Human, animal, fish, other odd sea creatures. 
A mine washed ashore once. Bottles, drugs also. Lost cargo in general. Most of the time it's just wood and glass. All right. Major choice moment. You only get to ask one thing. It would be weird to say them all. Choose wisely. I never. Well, there's a drug smuggling thing going on. I need info. Don't have any. Clothes get cleaned out so fast, even the local bums can only stand by and watch with watery mouths. Always by strangers, too. Union folk don't stand this kind of stuff around here. You could use a hit right about now. No. Any hit, really. Feel that itch in your hands, the stiffness in your neck, that strange restlessness in your bones. I'm looking for someone. Let's see. Who are you looking for? Um, a cryptozoologist. Uh, I don't think I know what these are. Care to elaborate? People who look for animals who are hard to find. Aha! Like snowmen. Snowmen? Two odd guys have been wandering around here, nose in sand, talking nonsense about snowmen and the like. Uh huh. Where did they go? I don't really know. Oh. Further down the peninsula, I guess. I mean, that's where they were heading. Who else are you looking for besides snowmen? Have you ever heard of the cargo cults? No. Um, a working class husband. <laughs> really narrowing it down yeah i'm not really looking for that anymore not much into the middle class ones either could do with some landed gentry but apparently they don't make those anymore i'm landed no the husband isn't for me wish i could help you with that but i haven't seen your working class husband maybe i can help you find someone else she seems genuinely sorry for not being able to help you. That's okay. You failed twice, but I'm not counting. I don't have a third missing person. What? Well, how can I assist you then, officer? I'll... I'm gonna go look for a date spot for us, okay? See ya. Ooh, maybe that boat? Inside you hear the cozy sound of some kind of heater sputtering. Street sign is eligible below the graffito. Tiny Island Mobile 2 that exposed to airdrops from... Wow, it's really cool. VH lines. <laughs> Let's see the details. The colors, all warm and welcoming, are cozy. A flower trough where nothing really grows. Ma'am? It might be Saf Samaran, possibly Sigeum, also known as the Apricot Suzunti. Yeah, that's a slur. You told me that. Don't do that. Encyclopedia. Hackadizer, morning, evening. Welcome to the fishing village. Please lean in closer. I have cataracts. Okay. Then how does she know you're here? Because, what do you mean? She can still see. I'm leaning. Oh, welcome, police officer. We don't cause any trouble around here. And we don't want any trouble either. We are not here to cause any trouble, madame. A one hour washerwoman humming ambience. We're cops, we're hellraisers. Stick them up. 
No, you're not. I've seen you around here before. Twelve years ago, you didn't raise any hell. You were quite helpful, actually. But still, in Martinez, you're considered an ill omen. Really? I've been here? No, not you personally. No. I met the RCM. Some of the men got into a fight. One of them killed another. Locked himself in that woodshed over there. He was boarding. Needed some help opening the door. You got it open for him. And took him to think about what he'd done in a more secluded place. Somewhere more quiet. She says it as if he was on some kind of spiritual retreat. Okay. What kind of ill omen? Oh, the usual. Dark tidings. Black hound. That's you, all right. A black hound licking your own heels. If I'm an ill omen, why hasn't anyone told me? Maybe they are afraid. Why? Because you're an ill omen. But you're still welcome here. As long as men with guns aren't chasing you. And maybe even then, because that's the kind of fishing village we've built. Mm. I'm sorry there's not a lot of room to park your motor carriage, and not a lot of houses, or a lot of people. My kids are long gone, searching for treasure. So are others. Ah, look at me ramble on. What brings you to us? Oh. Could I stay somewhere? Stay? Most people here are trying to leave. Please, I'll sleep in a, a shed. That said, if lodgings is what you're looking for, <gasps> I've got a free room in the shack. Oh, I don't know if I can afford another place to stay. I won't charge you for it. Take it as a gesture of goodwill from the village. Yes! To the I mean... That's very considerate of you, ma'am. Thank you so much. God, I'm gonna give him a piece of my mind now. Does this guy, God, he makes me give him money every fucking day just so I don't die in the cold. Hmm. That's exactly how they get ya. Yeah. That's why we built our own cinder block houses on the seaside. So we don't have to give money to those crooks. We might not look like much. But they are ours. Would you happen to be a comrade? Why is no one using the room? My kids grew up and left like they do. The house is long empty now. I live in the small side attachment. It's easier and cheaper to keep warm. Dude, you got yourself a tenant. Don't make an old woman regret opening I... her house to the police. Why? I'm not. I wish you could pickpocket. Thank you. Well, if you are not in the hostel in the morning, I'll know where to find you. Here, in a shack. The shack. The love shack, Kim. He's a little relieved you're no longer in that room. For... For him or for me? Okay. What's in this village? Just us. It's barely a village anymore. We almost don't exist. Meaning? This is pretty much a non-place. A gap. A blank spot on the map. Just a cluster of nameless shacks on a nameless street. Hmm. Who else lives in this village? Well... There's Lillian and her kids. A few new folks live in the house to the east. Okay. But they are away right now. Okay. And then there's the drunks. Not a pretty sight, but there's little we can do about it. Home is home, even for them. I've met Lillian. Lillian is tough. Tougher than the men here, at least. If it wasn't for her and the kids, 
This place won't have a spark of life left. I haven't seen any drunks yet. Sooner or later, you'll see for yourself. Don't have to look long to find these guys. Okay, is there a way to make a little money? Here? For you? No, officer. The only money we have here is some coins the drunks tried hiding from their women and then forgot about. Under carts, boats, in little boxes. It's not hard to find. Uh, look, there's gotta be something here. Tell me. Over there, you can find more of the same. Sharks and trees growing wild. That's the pox. The pox. An old military hospital and its surroundings. Oh, it used to be during the time of the suzerain. After the war, it was turned into a goodwill hospital for shell shock veterans and folks looking for some quiet in the old sanatorium garden. Now the area is crisscrossed with nameless streets and makeshift cinder block houses. Shacks as far as the eye can see. What happened to the hospital? The goodwill ran out. The staff left and the place was shut down. It's long gone by now. Okay, um... She nods, rinsing another piece of cloth. What's further down the coast? Not much. There's the abandoned church, the Dolorian Church of Humanity. It's been there since before my time, even. It's abandoned? Some things just don't fly, officer. Look around. Who'd go to church here? They built it 300 years ago. Must have been nicer then. So, they don't hold services there anymore? The Ecclesiastes? No, we've tried, but things just keep happening. Crime, accidents, other things. The place never stays open. It's a pity. This used to be such a nice church. She's not telling you all she knows. Keep her talking. Mm, I have a feeling you're leaving some stuff out. Well, there's that music. Music from across the sea. <laughs> it started a few days ago, and now it's blasting, even through the night. Blasting, so not like sirens. Like a rave? And now, suspicious-looking people are sneaking around the church. Ooh, I don't like that. Yep, I'll look into it. What else? Before you get to the church, there's some ruins. An apartment complex or some kind of electrical plant. Run down bunch of houses. Empty. Which is it then? I don't know exactly. A pre-war place. It used to be something. Before the war. I wasn't here then, you know. Was born in Samara. Anything else? Of note? The old fish market up on the boardwalk. But it's closed. Church raves. <gasps> like a John Wick scene. Mm, is this an insult? There's got to be more along the coast. What? You're one of those real estate people with big plans? Mm. If you want a development opportunity, you can check out the abandoned building over at Lensen. Okay. Used to be a supply depot, we think, sending goods and ammo across the bay. It's jammed shut, though. We tried to get in, see if there was anything to sell or scavenge, but it's impossible. And now you know everything there is to know about this coast. Drop some bar of soap into the bucket. Okay, tell me about yourself. Me? No one. Just an old washerwoman. Mother called me Isabel, if that's what you're asking. And my married name is Sadie. Now it's your turn, Mr... Lieutenant W. Freighter, Arrière Dubois. Quite a handle you got there. Yes. So many titles. One of them, double. Yep. Goodbye. Relax. Okay, let me use the bathroom super quick. 
real quick. Oh wait, 11 seconds. o'clock oh f already it almost is yeah but no okay is this where i live i feel safe and warm oh it's not where i live shit industrial coal pellets burn girl belly four or five it's on the sofa she's looking at you with frank curiosity she clutches a small stuffed animal occasionally she twirls it around are you Lillian's daughter yes I am little Lily do you know my mom <gasps> Yeah, we met. You can call me dad. That's nice. My mom is great. She's never angry or anything. Aww. What's that? It's a grouse. Cute. You might be able to get on Gart's good side if you replace the broker skewer you almost certainly broke. I was thinking that, but also, fuck him. What's it for? I don't know. Could I have it? Sure. Just go and get it. I don't like it anyway. It looks angry. Uh, I should ask your mom, right? All right. You just need to grab it from the ceiling and go. Um, what's that you're holding? It's Lammy. He's my friend. Sort of. Like... What's the fuzzy beast up to demonstrate? Lamby is a stuffed lamb that, admittedly, has seen better days. One of the eye buttons is missing, and the fur is tattered in several parts. Pleased to meet you, Lammy. Lammy usually doesn't like strangers, but you're also fuzzy, like Lammy. Thank you. I heard there was a girl here with some armored gloves. Oh, I had gloves, very big ones. Heavy, too. Dad? Where did you get these gloves? Found them when Lemmy and I were playing hide and seek. In an empty house. Where no one lives. I think someone hid them there. She doesn't want you to think she stole them. Okay, so she, did she? Where are they now? I hid them. The twins were gonna take them. They're stupid. Lifts her stuffed toy up and looks into its one remaining eye, as they're searching for confirmation. We're going to need those gloves. It's for important police business. Oh. She doesn't seem to understand, but the lieutenant's tone has conveyed to her the important part. They're in my sand castle. Behind our house. Under the sand. You can break the castle. It's not very good. 
Is this a real child? The acting is so good. Goodbye. Bye! Cute. Yoink! I'm selling it. One million percent. Hello. The scruffy haired little boy kicks a stone. He can't be more than five years old. The other one looks indistinguishable from him. He watches his brother kick the stone with his tongue lolling out of his mouth. What? He must be Lillian's twins. This one doesn't say anything, kicking the concrete with his worn out sneaker. Lily's our mom. Mm hmm. I already said that. The stone kicker laughs suddenly. His head is too large for his shoulders. The other one laughs as well. Mm. Is little Lily your sister? Yes. Yes? Yes. Okay. Yes. No. You guys look identical. The stone kicking one becomes frantic all of a sudden, as if that's something to be scared of. The obvious fact that you just stated. Sorry. He looks just like me. Yeah, I said that. The boy doesn't answer. His brother throws another rock. Both of their hair is covered in some kind of dirt. The rock kicker was just being shy, but now he's enthusiastic again. You're bad with kids. They're bad with me. Yeah. What are you, kid master? I should arrest you for that. Maybe I am. <gasps> now, how about some actual police work? We are not getting anything here. Okay, bye kids. Call me dad. Nope. This is my shack. Is it? The door has seen better days. The layer of paint has started to peel off due to the salt and wind from the sea. Even the lock looks slightly rusted. Hi, Toddy. Did you miss investigatorial conclusions? Um. This morning? No. Maybe last night. But I thought you were here to the end, right? Gloves? No. Not of her. Not yet. I'll wait outside to give you some time and privacy to check out your new living arrangement. But, but just so you know, yeah. after we are done with the day, I'll still be staying in the whirling in rags for the night. We'll meet in front of the shack in the morning. Okay. Can we still have our little nightly talk? The key turns with a satisfying click. You can enter the shack now. No, you haven't missed much then. It's nice. Lowboard Creek. The whole game gives me spirited away vibes. I think because it's, um... Depressing. See the waves, the sea, a church. All science fiction magazines. Books about bird watching, almanac from 39. Integrate heat engine hums quietly, giving out pleasant warmth. Hi, Eivor. An old mirror hangs on the wall. God. You see the reflection of your face in it. The leave it. Leave it. Leave it. Ooh. I've 
still wearing this shirt. Okay, it's not bedtime. On the table, you see a bowl of water, a rough soap, and next to it, a small hand mirror. A straight razor soaks inside the wash basin. Shaving the right hole? The water reflects back a vague image of your face. Nose bulbous and red. Hair unkempt. Wrinkles lining the eyes and forehead. The stash is gigantic. What am I shaving? A fresh start looms ahead. Clean yourself up and be born anew. It's gone. What if I fail? Like an artist with a brush or a master swordsman, you use the small mirror and the straight razor with some soap to remove all that unkempt hair from below the nose line. The sharp blade chafes against your skin, producing a scratching sound. The surface underneath the beard feels tender, <laughs> the air brushing against it, oh. chilly. Feel? They feel so smooth, surprisingly so. A feeling of freshness overcomes you, as if you just came from a cold bath. So was shaving the right call? The water reflects back a vague image of your clean-shaven face. Despite the bulbous nose, unkempt hair, and persistent swelling, you look a little younger, maybe. I think I look older. The beardless nature of your cheeks makes the expression seem even more like a terrifying grimace. Wrong. Kim? Kim? Oh, God. What do you think? Yes. So? Oh, God. What if his opinion is negative? I shaved. Yes. Uh, <gasps> um, um, I don't know what to say. Uh, <clears throat> perhaps... Uh... <laughs> what is it? I'm not really sure about these turn up events. I think the mutton chops might have been a better idea. They sort of seem to cover up some of the... Um... Either way, good on you. You are saying? I'm not talking to him anymore. For like an hour. Construction material. I have a plan to build this house left in a hurry. I told him to be honest with me and then he was honest with me. Fucking rude. And I don't even care. I don't even care. What did he say? He said he wasn't sure what to say. And then said the mutton chops covered up and then trailed off. Weather has not been kind to Lily's little sandcastle. The once mighty towers are quickly eroding away. You can see something shining back to you from what must have been a vast underground catacomb network. No, he doesn't fucking care. You know what? You're right. I look good. Broken. The little castle? The reigning lord must have come upon some really tough times to let it sleep in such decrepitude. It's a really cute thing to say, but I'm not speaking with you right now. I'm reaching in. The walls and floors give way to the giant's greed. 
collapse and present you with a pair of ceramic gauntlets. Let's go. Congratulations. That's the gauntlets down there. We're doing good on the armor collection front. Even though I look like this? Okay, let it go. Clenching and unclenching your fist has never been so fun. Tiny ceramic plates make a lovely clicking sound. Ooh. Look, it's like Lord of the Rings cosplay. As you fold your fingers into a fist, you realize you could knock anyone out with one punch. The white ceramic gloves wrap around your digits comfortably. Really? Your movements cause tiny little clicks, like dice rolling somewhere far away, as the plates reorient to your motions. I will be responsible with this. The hardened vitreous enamel, at once sleek and light, adds a glow to your cheeks and a spring to your step. Just imagine what a full suit of this stuff could do for you. Well, I sent the boots away with the body. You really do feel more confident. Invulnerability does that. Even partial invulnerability. I mean, I should study it. Remember, this is a highly specialized kinetic redistributor meant to stop bullets. Wear it. Observe its properties. See if there's a weakness in the design. Okay. For the day you have to fight someone covered in the same material. Oh, yeah, I should think about that. thinking right Pick locks that's what I couldn't find last night you know how long I looked I, I knew it was because I was tired yank Ooh. challenging ones Are these bottles? No. Looking back at you from the rust colored water, me. I feel like I kind of look like Stellan Skarsgård now. Rust eaten, let us read, Muzat. Tula Cafe, see. Thank you for the bits. Should I do it? I'll leave you in his shack. Let me search up here and then. Your tire of a motor carriage adorns the reeds. Hold on. I like the ambience. Could see him cast as Harry. He's so good. A kick drum pulse. Music is coming from somewhere on the ice. <gasps> Can I put that on? School of fish huddle around the fence post. Before you a drawbridge, it can only be lowered from the other side. Full of holes. Could the post hide treasure? Oh, 
Let's go. It's a big area. Okay. with pastels. I don't have to pay God anymore. I'm rich. I have $56. And I get to keep it all. Trash from some unending party. All screwed into the ice. Keeps the tent erect. More tribalistic markings. Covered in little humanoids. The pain of Etonite has been planted into the snow. Two poles are holding it up. Barely holding it up. It could fall over any minute. A stronger gust of wind might be enough. What is this? It looks like a makeshift bridge. Could be convenient. Pushing? The pain falls into the icy snow with a soft thunk. We should ask that girl on the ice what's going on here. Should we have done that before we opened the bridge? Someone's home away from home, just like mine. The tent is just tarpaulin fabric covering a pile of stuff. The flap is open. Inside, three young men are listening to some new form of music. It's like nothing you've ever heard. One of them looks at you. It's the 50s, right? Come on! Get in and close the flap behind you. The warm stuff's getting out. Hell yeah. Sorry, you barely have room for one. You go ahead. I'm too old for this. I'm actually not, he thinks. I just dislike delinquents. I'm sure you will feel right at home. I'll keep watch. What's up with you? Did you get a bad sleep? Why are you taking it out on me? Hmm? It was like sweat and laundry detergent. Wicked. Canisters filled with what appears to be water. The label says distilled. Okay, pile of nasal sprays. Nose are fed. A speaker, the big kind they use for live music. Should I make coffee? Leave you at the rave tent? Okay, I'll be back. Enjoy it in here. Um, five minutes.
Okay. Dino dance, yeah. Was it really intended to be just a day? I thought the back backlash was just too much. Detective. Thanks for the welcome back. Is everyone ready? Look at my morale. Health isn't great. Ready to rave. Okay. Possible comrades. Hello? Hi Camino. Pokemon Day. Hmm. Right, let's go. You see a youngish man bleaching the tips of his hair with a toothbrush. He puts the toothbrush down and extends his hand in greeting. Can I get the Rick Sanchez cut? Hello, I'm Andre. It's a pleasure to meet you. Comrade? His grip is strong, sweaty, and warm. He's trying to project and inspire confidence. Me too. This is my posse, Noy. The young man with earrings looks at you suspiciously. Cool. And again. <laughs> Cool. This stream is getting too popular. <gasps> wow. Tape player high above his head continues to blast strange music. Together with a little burger, who's out there right now doing some seriously progressive sonic experimentation, we like to think of ourselves as music venue organizers. Mm -hmm. How many music venues have you organized? We have many in the pipeline, officer. Okay, why are you here? You see, we've been all over Jamrock North, prospecting for real estate to establish a new venue in. Ooh, how about the church? Artists are for talent. Yeah, thank you, Egghead. And while there is no shortage of raw, unfettered talent spinning tapes in Jamrock, we've had rotten luck with the real estate part. We're number one in disco, you should probably um, probably add that, otherwise. <laughs> Place is a shithole! Agreed. I, I apologise for my friend Noit's potty mouth. I realise this is not how you speak to a police officer. I he has authority issues. Me too. It's a shithole. Which brings me to the problem of occupied ecclesiastical property. I bet you've noticed the derelict hive of Narcomania on the coast. Number one, full stop. What are you talking about? I'm talking about the church, and I'm not exaggerating. Even a place of spiritual refuge can become a magnet for all sorts of dope heads and burnouts if left unattended. <laughs> dope heads! Thanks, Egghead. Burnouts! Angrily spits on a screw and starts cleaning it. Well, I'm sad to say, that's exactly what happened. Sad because we were just about to put Martin Ace on the map with one of the maddest dance clubs in Jamrock. Nah, strike that in Revershaw. Cool. Strike that! The world. Let's go! And sadder yet, because the dope heads and burnouts hold up in there with the worst kind. He leans back a little, watching you with a steady, serious gaze. Letting you imagine just how bad those dope heads and burnouts really are. Mm, they seem bad. Good. This calls for an opinion. You're an expert in those. What kind? The spooky kind. What do you mean? I was hoping you would be the judge of that, officer. All I can say is, their spookiness is the kind that keeps us from restoring this church into a community center and a place of spiritual refuge. Really? Also, they don't eat or clean the building. Shit's gonna collapse. Hmm. People just wanna spin tapes without them spooking it up. Place has bad signs. No one can dance like that.
You have hair in real life, but not in your portrait. Thank you, Egghead. So you're gonna look into it, right? It should be a police matter. Getting them out. Whatever spooky stuff they're doing, I'm sure it's not what the Ecclesiastes meant their property for. I'll look into it. All right, man. How brave is start a nightclub? That's number one. I gotta lie to Kim about it though, tell him that there was a um, woman with violet hair in there. Andre is obviously very happy you took him seriously. The whole tent is. The boys exchange giddy looks. Hmm. What's the status of the church? I asked Lloyd to install a measure against more drifters wandering in. A padlock. It's a temporary fix. Just something to contain the situation. I had to do it in an hour. Not my best work. But it should hold for a while. He locked people in? Not long. Like a week, maybe? Uh, uh, maybe... You've killed them. I'm super sure they're alive. I mean, come on. I'm at least 90%. Maybe 85% sure they're still alive. Hey, That's not high. Somewhere in the ruinous past that led you here, there was something called exams. You may have learned the term involuntary manslaughter there. Andre, do you know what the term involuntary manslaughter means? Yes, I do. I listen to Channel 8 all the time. I know about crime stuff, and I assure you, officer, this is not what's happening here. I'm at least 80% sure they're alive. I mean, come on. Most people aren't ever that alive in their entire lives. Oh. I catch a drift. I knew you'd get it. You're one smart cop. Okay. Uh, the padlock. He nods attentively, ready to answer the questions of one smart cop. So the key? Of course. Lloyd, give the officer the key. All right. Let's go. Call cop time. Easy. You sense the trajectory of the little piece of metal and plastic. The object makes a small ringing sound as it approaches. Just the tiniest chime to your left. Yoink. ka -ching. The key hits your palm. The speed freaks nod to you approvingly. Play cool. The speed freak nods to you. It's easy. A respectful nod. You proved something here. Yep. Other questions? Sure, man. Tell us what you want to know. Let's do it. Who's in the church? Truth is, I don't really know. None of us do. I don't even know how many there are. All we've seen are glimpses. Okay, you haven't even seen them and you want the police involved? Well, there's also the machinery. This machinery is of the deeply mystical variety. You don't even know what it is yet. When I first scouted the place, back in February, it was abandoned, empty. Took some time getting the crew together. So about two weeks ago, we came here hoping to set the stuff up. Suddenly, there are all these strange machines lying around in there. One of them has wires running into bowls of water. Wires into water. Never seen anything like it. Andre, tell him about the feeling. The feeling? Oh, and it felt like there was something in there with us, watching us from the dark. Yep. No, oh. the other one. Um, which other one? I'm not as in tune with my emotions as you are, Egg. Andre looks like you. He looks sick. Felt like silence. Awful silence. I wish I was an egghead. You haven't physically seen anyone. Not exactly. We've just seen someone who we think is a woman go in and out of the church a couple of times. And we felt someone or something eyeing us inside. But that's kind of it. Tell me about the machinery. You should talk to Lloyd about that. Kay. I just got a distinct burnout and dopehead sign from them. Probably jacked up to some snuff station too. Probably very likely. Yes. Noid, your outfit is so cool. 
Um, what was that about something watching? Like you aren't alone, you know. Mm. It wasn't quite human, if you know what I mean. Not human, as in a ghost. Do you know what he means? Yes. It was this dark shape climbing upside down along the ceiling, like some kind of crab man. Oh God. Yeah, you know, the way it was climbing up and around the ceiling, like a crab. It was stalking a cell, exhibiting ambush behavior. <laughs> Odd. Crabs are usually marine creatures and not known for climbing walls. Are you sure? Yeah, totally. I mean, I didn't personally see it. A cell was alone that time. But I believe her. If she comes out running and says there's a crab in there, there's a crab in there. It's the most disgusting thing I get. Like dead space. Crab man. I look good without my beard and I'm confident and I feel good. So he hasn't even been in there lately. Is he afraid? You should ask her about it. But be nice. Don't tell her you don't believe in the crab. How can you be sure if you haven't seen them? Well, honestly, I can't, but I am. Wow. This is a below feeble attempt at avoidance. Basically, he is attempting to weaponize idiocy. Wow. I should add weaponized idiocy to my own repertoire. Hey now, I'm 70% sure they're substance abusers. And 80% sure they're alive, so what does that equal? What's the missing 10% there? Don't let all that technology fool you. Where do you think the drugs come from? Okay. Sure. What? Signature skill. Me or Harry? <laughs> Not very disco. Hmm. I'm not sure. Okay, look. I'm trying to clean my act up. Um. Who? Oh yeah, that's a meteorin name for the founding party. Thought it'd be cool to use it. Meteorin. If you don't know what the founding party is, there might be a way to mask it with minor demagoguery. Is that masking? Who's the founding party? What is? Come to think of it, I've never really looked them up, you know. I can't give you a precise definition, but they're a very powerful religious organization. And? And they have roots in ancient mass society. And they're the custodians of the Periconessian church. Plus, they anoint the innocents. They, like, made the innocentic system, no? No. Now, Andre, in your opinion, with this ancient religious organization who anoints the innocents want a dance club in one of their churches. Totally. Really? The Periconassian church is about love. And Nordic music is about love. I got love for my Periconassian posse. Love is the relay out of death. We dance. Um, this guy looks like he has an elf ear here. <laughs> And he's bold. Never mind. Don't worry. Love is hardcore. Don't worry. <laughs> and he's also doing magic. Whatever. Unity. Okay, unity. Unity. Right. Make some noise for my insulindian posse. Turns the volume up, then looks at you with a knowing nod. As if it's obvious, you will now break into dance. You feel it. The anodes and the cathodes coursing through you. Your big toe starts tapping along to the base. It's true. As if testing the water. I was literally doing that. Um. Okay. 
Can I dance? Love can be pretty hardcore. Oh yeah, it can. Ascending, yeah. He's coming around. You're getting it. You're getting me. Feels good. Yeah. Oh, but I don't understand. What's a posse? Your posse's like your people, man. Like you got your cut posse. You look out for each other and you party together. That's a posse. I love posse. And where is your posse, detective? Nothing comes to you. The world is silent. Hmm. <laughs> no posse. Sounds like you're just saying random things. Are we? Are you? Yeah! I like it when he gets mysterious too. <laughs> I understand. Anodic music is about love. Seems ecstatic that you share his vision of pericarnessianism. Do it for the masses. Do it for the crew. Mm. There's enough room for Kim to have come in here. I didn't want to say it, but it was pretty lame of you to imply otherwise. Anyway, you got more questions? You're under arrest. The one with the large head is still looking at you, nodding his head, waiting for your body to start moving. Come on, man. You feel like you could go for a little disco when. Or if they get this club going, <gasps> you've got it in you. We're totally making a disco. Okay, I want to ask about this tent full of equipment. Yes. What? I see you brought your own water. Yeah, yeah. Good to have. Bitch to carry. When I first scouted the place, I did some reconnaissance. I'm not sure the church even has running water. And it's distilled. Uh, oh. It's the one they sell at the fuel station. It's like he's lying to you, my liege. But he's slippery enough that there's nothing for you to grab hold of. What's with all the nose of fad? The what now? The nose of fad ultra? You have a lot of it. Oh, the old ultra. We um mm? He's like an actor looking to the sufala for his line. I have a major sinus infection. Stuffy nose. We all do. Shit's all blasted up. Winter. Can't even breathe. Mm, you sound fine. Yes. That's all nose effects doing. Without the noser, I'd be drowning in shit right now. <laughs> nose effect is the shit. Well, I'm also having nose problems. <laughs> um, sure. Uh-huh. Here you go, officer. The noser. Blast away. Thank you. Also, it stinks in here. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. Told you we have a smell problem. It's mixed with a peculiar chemical scent. Like laundry detergent. He sniffs the air, then shrugs. How's the first blind playthrough? Um, it's really fun. Really good. A shrug is good enough for us. Why say it when you can shrug it? Oh, fuck. I'm starting to fail things. Okay, enough. He nods enthusiastically, no doubt a little relieved. Well, first of all, you're a smart cop, and a smart cop like you would understand if something wasn't quite right. So this should be easy. Hmm. What's the gist of it? The gist of it is, they want to turn the church into a club, but a suspicious element has overtaken the building. It's very important to understand what the gist of things is. Always consult the gist mm. before making up your mind. Mm -hmm. This is going well. Yes. Plus, and it has to be considered, you can't invent the future of dance music in this smelly old tent. Imagine if you had the church. That settles it. Analysis complete. Their story checks out. Perfect. 
that's it. As always, we'll be right here, waiting patiently for the news. Yeah. Okay. Kim, I just agreed to start a disco in the church. I don't want to talk about it. Also, do you think I look logical? Don't answer. A shaggy looking girl in her late teens or early twenties kneels on the ice with an electronic contraption in her hand. Hearing you approach, she looks up. I'll never have enough of the narrator. I love the voice. Oh, hello there. She must be a cell, the last of the speed freaks, Hossie. Speed freaks? It's cold out here, but she's not wearing a hat. She must be freezing. The gist is that you look very logical, Harry. Thank you for lying. Yeah, sorry, cop. Everyone knows drugs make you invulnerable to cold. You bet this one likes to party. Why do I only try and fuck, like... 20 year olds. Why am I thinking about it? Uh, you must be a cell. That's my name. I take it you have met the others. Did they tell you about the church and the club thing? Church? Come on, quit playing. Oh, fuck. Will you help us with the church? Yes. Great. Let us know if there's any progress, will ya? We've been waiting for weeks here. Child, it's freezing. Where's your hat? Huh? Maybe she didn't hear you. A little louder. I said, where's your hat? So should you. I've got a hat on. I should, and I do. Oh, I didn't notice that. Okay, you should wear one too. Yeah, well... Look man, fuck the hat. Lots of feeling. Feel it up. Way up. <laughs> Maybe another option? Kim and I are having a bad day. Okay, we're not getting along today. That's okay. <sighs> fuck the hat. I can't believe you told me to fuck the hat. You're saying it really loud, but it's not coming out right. Maybe I'd more <laughs> indignation. So I should just take this hat I'm wearing and fuck it, right? Huh? On the sea ice. More. <laughs> On the ice. More. That's what you want, isn't it? You fucking freak. Little ice cop hat fuck show. Sure. I didn't mean to. I'm sorry. Hey, that's kind of authoritative. The lieutenant is watching the scene unfold <laughs> before his eyes, unsure how to react. No, this isn't to Kim, is it? Is that how you see me? The girl looks down, slowly curling into a ball. I was trying to be kind. That's it. You've earned it. Start crying. Life's hard. We should have done a cry counter. The young woman has kept her eyes trained on her wires, waiting for the sorry spectacle to end. But it's gone awful quiet up there. Then, the sound of sobbing. Looking up, she sees a grown man on the wrong side of 40, his face bloated from alcohol and God knows what else. Not so quietly crying. This isn't really about the hat, is it? No. 
No. You know, you're not the only one with issues. I self-medicate. Shit. Life's a horror, you know? Yeah. Crying helps, though. Get it out your system. And then maybe we can talk. Okay? Oh, I know. I'll be here. I know. Oh, fuck. <laughs> yes? <clears throat> Having looked away during the final phase of your little episode, the lieutenant now addresses you. Do you want to talk about what just happened? Yeah. Normally, I'm opposed to discussing one's feelings, especially on duty. But I think this is an exceptional case. <laughs> I'm gonna cry. So, what do you think happened? Um... It is possible thou couldst persuade the lieutenant it was all a part of thy unorthodox method. But can thou persuade thyself? None of these. Can't I just open up? <laughs> Thy pen of lies runneth dry. Mm. Best to simply deny the truth, bold facedly. Nothing happened. So you're saying you didn't break down in tears just now and nearly tear your shirt off? No, I've never cried, actually, ever once. Uh huh. You torture me, abandon me, divorce me. I'd be dry as a desert, yes, sir. Yes, I've definitely never seen you cry before, nor lent you my handkerchief to dry your tears. Yep. Uh, methinks my liege doth protest too much. A performance that would make the star of a radio melodrama blush. Thanks. Even so. In the future, could you please refrain from emoting too much on duty? The quasi-legal status of the RCM means we need to project strength twice as consistently as any other police force in the world. Hey, weakness can be a strength. Probably not like that type of weakness. Not when projecting strength. Then it's just weakness. You're right. Thank you. You're welcome. Glad to hear it was minor. Can you go on? I'm sorry, Kim. Then, let's go. <laughs> hey. So, like, seriously, what's eating you, man? I probably shouldn't talk about it, it's not professional. There is a hint of pity in her eyes. Thanks for the pity, though. Her hair is dyed blonde, with dark roots showing, and she wears thick black eyeliner. Most men wouldn't call her pretty. There is a manliness to her, a coarseness. I'm always judging women by how attracted they are. No, that's not professional. No, don't. Um, the others told me you went inside the church. What, and what'd you see? Oh, that. You're not gonna believe me. There's no point in me telling you. Just for immersion. Would you call him daddy in future? No. We're definitely not at that phase yet. I mean... <laughs> uh, take off the word yet from that sentence. <laughs> so just end it full stop. Um... She's less prone to blurt it out, crab man, than the others. Go ahead and tell me. Okay. I went in and I saw a woman next to one of those machines there. Noid calls it a mainframe. 
Mm -hmm. She was dressed like someone who's been raised by their grandmother, you know, strange old clothes. Had this absent expression, didn't say anything, just stood still. Okay, my grandmother had a lot of... Alright, that's checking out. Go on. And then, you know, right behind her, a man crawled down the wall. Upside down like a crab, down the church wall. I think the woman didn't even know he was there. He was completely silent. I'm not going in there. He stopped right before he got to the floor, then just hung there like that, looking at me. Right at me. I fucking turned around and walked out. End of story. Yeah. Like a crab, you say? <laughs> what did a crab man look like? It was too dark. I couldn't tell exactly. Okay. Come on. She obviously could. She already went into detail. Quit stalling. What did he look like? He looked like a banger, okay? He was all muscular and stuff. Had a mesh tank top. I know it sounds ridiculous, but that only made it scarier in a way. Wait, I'm wearing one. Okay. A crab and a banger? What's a banger? Yes, a banger. As in a mess gang member. Oh. I know what it sounds like, but that's what I saw. A <laughs> gangster? A crab man. I believe that that's what you saw. Why? But I don't think you'd lie about that. I guess so. Anyway, what else? Also, you were pitiful. No, I was pitiful and you gave me pity. Tell me about those guys. My associates? I haven't got much to say about them. What do you mean? Of course I do. I just don't tell people about my friends and who they are and so on. Hmm. I don't provide information on them. Okay. To the cops. Okay, tell me about yourself. Me? I'm a silver bird. Meaning? I'll ask later. Don't know what makes you think it'll be any different later, but... I'm gonna start your rave. I'm kickstarting it, okay? Mothman? I'd much rather meet Mothman than Crabman. Okay, what's your device? This is a portable recording device. It's for field recording. Low quality, but still. The wires? Actually, just one wire. I picked on it till the braiding came loose. The wire leads to a contact microphone. What's that? A contact mic records sounds from inside things, like this ice. Cool. Your mangled brain would like you to know there is a boxer called Contact Mike. Don't call me mangled. Thank you so much for the follow. Thank you. Rick Grimes? Um... Okay, any news on my wife's name? My mother? Huh? No. Yeah. You're welcome. I didn't. You're welcome. <laughs> they keep fighting internally while people just stare at me. Um. Does this thing have anything to do with contact, Mike? Uh, yeah, I record stuff with it. No, the boxer. Ah, uh, no. This is a contact microphone. It's for recording inside solid objects. Contact mic just beats people up. But he doesn't just beat people up. He's a role model, I think. <laughs> um... Yeah. An entire litany spews forth. Shit. Oh, who the fuck am I to say this? I don't- I'm sorry. There's something else. Yes? Thank you for the follow, thank you so much. How does it work? The mic? I don't exactly know. Somehow it doesn't pick up vibrations from the air. The book said it only picks up structure-born sound. If you like techno-babble. Hmm. Where'd you get it? 
Okay. I didn't mean to say that. Hold on. Sure. Contact Mike. Where'd you get it? Same place I got the recorder from. The Palisium. Palisium. Oh, man. You haven't been to the Palisium? It's the coolest place in this whole drug-addled shithole. It's a music club and a synthesizer workshop on Boogie Street in Jamrock. Musicians live there, like real musicians. I once saw Arno Van Eyck. Shit. Uh, am I gonna get to go to Jamrock? I don't think so. Thinking about it really cheers her up. It's a long way from here, though. <laughs> Is this an insult? It sounds interesting. Oh, yeah. Guess you wouldn't know Van Eyck. Or really be a Palisium going kind of hey, person. I get down. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I grind. I don't know what that means either. I have concrete evidence that I rock, okay? I trashed a hotel room. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're right. Time has deserted me. Sucks, man. Was there something else? About the contact mic, perhaps? <sighs> no. Okay. What are you doing in the cold? Recording, I guess. Oh, jeez. <laughs> What are you recording? I think I'm recording cracks in the ice. But there's no way to tell. Not without headphones. <gasps> I think I just recorded your footsteps too. Not sure how that will sound. Gotta get her some headphones. No, 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 we can't cry again. I don't think it's happened twice in one day yet. What happened to the old headphones? What happened to them? My boyfriend sold them. What for? I don't know, man. Things. Just stuff you need for life. What a prick. Sell his own headphones. A lie. They were probably pawned off for something suspicious. What are the recordings for? The musicians in the Palisium used them for making music. They looped the stuff, cutting the tapes together. They make music out of cracks in the ice and keys jangling. Crazy sounds like that. It's hard to explain. Sick. Anyway, I thought I'd make some too. It's supposed to be, like, a music place anyway. I don't really know what I'm doing. They use synthesizers too. I don't have a synthesizer. <laughs> Drama is such a little kiss ass. She looks at the recording device. The thing she thought would fill her hours with joy and escape. It's turning out to be an empty fantasy. She feels childish. Very useless all of a sudden. Take this, you're cold. No, man, fuck that, I'm cool. I'm sorry I said that. I'm sorry about the fuck. It's okay. Oh, my dick, Marlon. <laughs> nah. Nah. You can have my jacket. No, uh, I can give you. Hold on. Hold on. Can I come back to this? Go ahead. Okay. Come on. Hello again. Recording, I guess. I think I'm recording. What happened to the old headphones? The musicians in anyway. I don't really know. She looks at the take this. Yes. No, ma'am. It's okay. Here. You need this more than I do. Thanks. You said it's supposed to be a music place. You mean the trash? Yeah. The boys think it could be a place, like the Palisium or something. Stupid. It's really 
not going to be a palace, and that's for sure. And who are these boys? The boys? Yeah, Andre and the guys inside the tent. And why is that? So why are you freezing out here and there and there? They got too much stuff crammed in there. No room. Like what? Didn't you see it yourself? It's mostly music stuff. Like this tape recorder, but bigger. Like those headphones your boyfriend sold? Yep. They were pretty. I'm sorry we sold those. Hmm. Why not just leave some of it outside? That stuff is more expensive than I am. More expensive than any of us, really. Doesn't matter. I can take the cold. I have a room you can use. Go ahead. The device Fuck. is cold to the touch. An angular Omicron logo adorns the yellow plastic cover. Underneath, you see a reel of tape rolling. You put the device back on the ice. Nice machine. Ah, oh, fuck. Okay. Dick Mullen. Right. Right. doing I'm just looking around right I forgot I at nine o'clock I need to go visit the guy on the balcony oh I need to get my dice as well from what's her name boat in the boathouse. This section of the coast hasn't been used in decades. Oh. Um, not bad. My house is shoddily constructed. A strong breeze might blow it over. Ancient paint is peeling off the roof of this shaded bench. Money? The scattering of bullet holes is spread across the cracked wall, reaching from one corner to the other. I guess I do listen to Beanie Man. Who? Look, Kim. Even more bullet holes. Hmm. Correct. The density of the bullet holes is unusual. Even in a general, average bullet hole frequency in Martinez's sense. Grim affairs. Oh god. Meaning, this is a lot of bullet holes. Looks like fully automatic rifle fire. Something you don't see these days. The lieutenant also nods. It is quite a scene. The two of you standing, 
next to the broken wall of an abandoned building, nodding, nodding along. Mm -hmm. The lieutenant is nodding so hard it looks like <laughs> his head is about to snap off his neck. I'm not gonna stop. The lieutenant matches your nodding pace. He's a true professional at this. Shit. The nodding is reaching critical mass. You can't take this much longer, Captain. I can take it. A small bead of sweat runs down the side of the lieutenant's face as he maintains his nodding. One more nod, come on. As the lieutenant takes out a handkerchief and softly taps the sweat off his temple, a faint crack echoes through the coast. Abort, <sighs> abort. No, shit, it's too late. Fuck. <laughs> Dust your neck, did you? Glad I stopped when I did. My neck was really starting to hurt. Don't worry, it's a man. Now we should get going. So why are so many bullet holes? Unable to piece together the big picture just now. There's a hole in the hypothesis. I'm dumb. The scattering of bullet ah, holes looks like one giant smiling mouth, smiling its deadly smile, laughing at you and the world and the living. Yep. Great. Damaged health, damaged morale. That's some fun. What's this? I'm a convict. Quick save! Hi. Hi, visual calc gives some interesting scenes. Mm, I have a spare point. Reconstruct crime scene seems important, yeah. Okay. Door is not only barred shut, it's inaccessible. Um, I can't do this again. Can I? The scattering of bullet holes is spread across the cracked wall, reaching from one corner to the other. Wait. Oh, I took it off. Did I? Seventeen? Scattering of bullet holes is spread across the crack. Unable to piece together the big picture just now. That's okay. There's a hole in the hypothesis. Fine. And I'm not dumb. The scattering of bullet holes looks like one giant smiling mouth. Smiling its deadly smile. I'll take it, take a booth. Right. of reeds over there it's a great place to hide something <gasps> kind of out of the way being so close to the water what's this about nothing just a hunch the hunch passes leaving you there by the old boy bobbing in the water time to go what's wrong with you boy isn't the creature in that? Military blockades riddled with bullet holes. Mm. 
Twenty gauges. Soggy log, smell of ignition fluid. Hello, I'm Gary. How do you do, officer? What are you? Did you know that six out of seven dwarves aren't happy? I love some. Yellow man. I mean, officer. The lieutenant raises his eyebrows slightly and takes out his notebook. Elaborate, Gary. I'm just waiting for my friend Morel to finish up with his insect traps so we can return to civilization. Not a lover of the great outdoors, huh? I like nature, just not this bloody coast. It's mostly drunks and degenerates that come here. Degenerates? This man respects authority too much. To see the truth inscribed upon thine own visage. Pretend thou art the paragon of virtue. Ooh. <laughs> I am neither of those things. Absolutely. I've been tempted on occasion, but someone has to stay strong for Revacall. I think it's Shaul. He pronounces Revacall with a hard K, unlike other people. He said Revacol. I like to pronounce it the hard way. The old way. The Vespertine way. Mm -hmm. He winks at you, trying to relay some hidden message, mm. inviting you to mispronounce it too. It's a secret right. A very fringe nationalist handshake, probably. That's not the zoologist, is it? Gary the Prophet? Do you know anything about the man hanged? Oh, so that's what the RCM in Martinez is about. Great, great to hear someone's finally taking care of that. So you do know something about it? No, no, nothing. He was some kind of mercenary, but everyone here knows that. I'm just glad to hear you're looking into it. That's all. He's not feeling very comfy in his clothes, is he? Hmm. Strange. He didn't kill him or anything, but there's something going on here. I mean, the last guy that wasn't comfortable in his clothes was the, the mag. Are you a cryptozoologist? No, no. I help Morel with research sometimes, and I've learned some things along the way. But I don't usually go in for picnics like this on my own. Alpha Centauri. There probably is a follow-up to this, but you can't think of any. Doesn't matter. Waste of time anyway. That's Gotta it. keep moving. Huh? Hey. What was that about? My dear, dear colleague. Not many sealites here, or anywhere, other than Sale. I meant no offense, truly. Do you remember how, when we met Measurehead and I said the next races will be a really good one? Yes. Well, this is that racist. Are you Gary? Are you racist? Hey, man. All I meant was there are not many sealites around here. I'm just stating a fact. Hmm. I'm pretty sure the lieutenant is a native, though. Oh, yes. Of course he is. I was just speaking about his connections. Let's change the subject. Okay. I can kill a man with my gloves. Do you know that? One punch will kill someone.
people are starting to think waking up uh uh we gotta take this guy out before he breeds uh uh here we go nice and easy no way out little guys not out of this gym well what's with your fucking racist friend there's a cylinder on the ground in which the man is arranging some netting. It looks like some kind of trap. He notices you. Who's there? Oh, the police. Hello, officers. His self-conscious enthusiasm renders his movements ungainly. He looks like your understanding of a scientist. I know your wife well, Morel. To what do I owe the pleasure? That's sarcasm. He takes no pleasure from your appearance. Okay, Lena sent me. First name basis. Uh, of course. Thank you for passing along the message. That damn water lock is broken, and we can't go all the way around the A81. Oh, that was me. The water lock has been fixed. Now, don't lie. I broke it because I'm a cop because I'm allowed to do that, okay? You broke the water lock with a motor carriage. There was a billboard in the canal. Not a vehicle. It said Samaran Butter. I guess you're right. Anyway, goodbye. Did he say we can go back now? Yes, Gary. We can go soon. If you see Lena, tell her I won't be long. Sir. Your wife is waiting for you. I just have to do one more round. See if the phasmid has taken the bait. Then we go in. Refastens a bit of netting that has come loose. His hands are large and weather-worn, but also used to delicate, precise work. Tell me about this phasmid. Hmm. Well, first of all, it's damn difficult to find, which is why we've been knee-deep in the reeds laying traps for it. What makes it difficult? Good question. Being a phasmid of the order Phantasmodea, a ghost insect, it disguises itself as plant matter. Oh yeah. In this case, the reeds. Awful lot of reeds around, aren't there? Hey, I had a vibe in the reeds over there. And I suspect it may have also developed other specialized techniques to protect itself from predators. All scientists in our present case. Wait, is it supposed to be Australian? I thought it was just like, you know, uh, colonizer Australian. How big is it? I'm expecting it to be quite giant. One known species of phasmid, called the Megaphasmodea zoensis, is about the size of a grown man's forearm, so... Uh, oh. What sort of specialized techniques does it use? It's my hypothesis that it has evolved certain electrochemical defenses that allow it to interfere with animal perception, impeding pattern recognition. Confusing the visual cortex. Mm -hmm. But I cannot describe how these defenses work, much less how they evolve, without studying a live specimen. Mm -hmm. Yes, it makes perfect sense. You're beginning to suspect there's something paranatural about this phasmid. Am I? Get him to say Barbie. Um. Okay, why are you so interested in this stick bug? Typical rookie assumption. Uh, Insects are much more sophisticated creatures than those unversed in zoology give them credit for. I'm fast. Even simply catching a glimpse of the Insulindian phasmid would be the apex of my, of any cryptozoologist's career. But to study it and its defenses, find out how it stayed hidden so long, Hmm. Okay, so what have you discovered? Very little, I'm sorry to say. 
No one's ever captured a specimen, so all our information is based on first and third hand accounts. Yeah, no one's ever found one. Not yet. That's what makes it a cryptid. <clears throat> Just out of curiosity, if there's no proof of its existence, how do you know it's real? I know it's real. Briskly enough that even he seems taken aback. It's clear that his obsession with the phasmid is driven by something more than the pure pursuit of scientific advancement. Mm. By which I mean, I've heard enough first-hand accounts to believe quite firmly that the Insulindian phasmid is more than mere superstition. Lena said there has been a sighting. Yes, the most recent sighting was by a couple of teenagers along the coast here. That's what brought us to Martinez specifically. It's the first credible sighting in several decades. Admittedly, it's an unusual location for this species, but with all the sewage runoff upstream, it probably doesn't matter much anymore. Maybe it's died out? I have to resist the thought. Such an extraordinary creature is doubtlessly highly resilient. After all, it's generally thought to be capable of parthenogenesis. Um. <laughs> uh huh, parthenosis. Parthenogenesis. That's what I said. Meaning the females don't need males to reproduce. Makes it easier for a species to survive in adverse conditions. <laughs> This arouses no special feelings in me. And it shouldn't. Nature does not concern herself with ethical propositions. As a scientist, my interest is strictly dispassionate. Tell me more about these traps. Well, they may not look impressive, but Lena designed them quite cleverly, so I'm sure they'll do the trick. She designed them? Yes. How they work? Simple. Attracted by the locusts, the phasmid crawls down the funnel and, having eaten its fill, can get back out. Okay. At least, that's the intention. The net isn't a perfect solution, but we didn't want to use anything that might damage the specimen's delicate exoskeleton. What are you using as bait? Locusts. Nearly all known phasmids are herbivores, of course. But we've hypothesized that the Insulindian phasmid might occasionally prey on other insects. Okay. Inside the traps, a number of locusts crawl and tumble over one another in a tiny, chittering swarm. So what will you do if these traps don't work? They'll work, I assure you. The predatory hypothesis Using locusts as bait accounts for the failure of previous efforts by other teams, which use plants. We have given this some thought. Okay. The traps do seem to be deftly and thoughtfully constructed. It's clear the cryptozoologist's wife knows what she's doing. Yes. What? How'd you become a cryptozoologist? I've just always liked animals and puzzles. Me too. Searching for cryptids is a bit of both. Hmm. He seems reluctant to talk about himself, but he'll open up, if you prod a little. Okay, I'm prodding. You're living like a childhood dream out here. It's not child's play, just because I have to trape through the mud every so often. Okay, real animals are puzzling too. Real? Oops. I know you think <laughs> one is a respectable profession. <laughs> Uh, While the other is superstition, everyone does. I meant real, like visible, tangible. So, you know, yours are like invisible and sound waves and shit. Being a cryptozoologist trumps most of the garbage I've seen people do. Hmm. My methods do not differ from other scientists. I simply draw upon a wider variety of evidence. Whoops. And I have more hope that something truly surprising might happen. It's like when I said I'm not going to call him daddy yet. 
little bit of a slip up. Has anything truly surprising ever happened? No, as I said, I have yet to catch a cryptid. Although I have come close. Close enough to keep trying. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Something for later. This close call. Is it? What kinds of evidence do you use? Everything from forgotten regional law to newspaper accounts. Like the one that brought us here. To look for the Fazmin. And I keep a very open mind. You've never discovered a cryptid though? No. Very few cryptids are ever discovered. And not for a lack of trying. To stay hidden is a cryptid's primary quality. It's even in the name. Cryptid. How many have been found? Of the list of cryptids kept by the Cryptozoological Society of Shemni, which is 4,082 items long, about 2,000 have been confirmed as hoaxes. Oh. Two were categorized as confirmed discoveries. The rest are in differing stages of discovery, refutation, and data collection. Now, what do you mean only two? I'm impressed that even two. Yes, the Chateau Quan forest pygmy, who turned out to be an extinct oh. species of primate, and a cave salamander from Hugo Grad, who is, honestly, quite unremarkable. It's in a zoo somewhere. We cryptozoologists are brutally honest with ourselves, more so even than the public. With cryptids, most cryptids are hoaxes or they are never found. That does not mean we should stop searching. Wrestling is fake. <laughs> no, that's just saying movies are fake. No, they're not. They're real, like within their own world. Oh god, it's not even 1%. It's a small number of discoveries, honestly. Do you know what the success rate in pharmacological research is? 0.000003% of bioreactive agents have reproducibly beneficial effects. Yet science persists in the search for medicine as we persist in our search for new species. You won me over. Congrats. Yes? Look, your wife is eager for you to return. And I'm eager to return to her, I assure you. But I can't leave before we finish with these traps. Okay. My wife understands that yeah. just as well as anyone. Probably, yeah. Uh... Come on, Morel. We've been soaking out here for days. It's time to go back. And leave the traps? Absolutely not. I won't let Lena down. Come on. She wants us back. I'm soaked up to my nuts over here. We'll both catch reed crabs if we don't dry out soon. What? Let Lena down? Sounds like the cryptozoologist's wife shares a special connection to the phasmid somehow. She just... I mean, we know she cares about it in general, though. Okay, I didn't know it was so important. Of course it's important to her. She's seen it. A verified sighting, on record. One of only 40 century, and it's hers. Oh. She's seen it. Really? She didn't tell me. Yes. That's how we first came to know one another, in fact. But that's her story to tell, not mine. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. You like to open up to a fellow man? Needless to say, you must ask her about the mysterious phasmid. I will. Suffice to say, it's long been our dream to find proof of the Insulindian phasmid together. I can't abandon course now. Are you okay? Are you sick? You could come back, warm up, check later. Hmm? No, no, no. Okay. The traps need to be monitored on a regular schedule. I'll do it. 
we do if the first mid were to starve while we were sipping tea at the hostel? I can do it. I live nearby. He's dead set on this. Hmm. I could go for some trap setting. I'll track them for you. Kim? Relax. I didn't expect you to take such an interest in our work here, officer. I'm all in with this cryptid shit. Caught the bug, I see. Yeah. It's easier to get caught up in the search than you'd imagine. Okay. What should I do if there's a phasmid in a trap? Bring it to me at once. Just make sure the trap is closed tight. Okay. He's not comfortable with the possibility that you will claim the find. But he's lying about this even to himself. <laughs> Uh, what if I encounter the phasmid in the wild? That's highly unlikely, officer. But in the event you do, I'll spray you with a pheromone mixture I developed. Oh. It's made of musk and research chemicals. The pheromone should attract the insect to you, or at least prevent it from bolting at the sight of you. It's quite potent. Will last you about a week. Laid on me thick. I hope you're not buying this. It dispenses it without letting you touch the canister, so it would be precious like holy water. It is precious. A single dose cost me 50 real to develop. Not that I expect you to understand self-financing one's own research. He just double dosed me. What are these traps? There are four in total. But where? One is to the south, on this little peninsula. By the boathouse is there. It's very near. Okay. Another we set in Land's End, to the northeast. It's behind a small sand dune there. On your way to the old radio tower, after the church. The third is set near the canal, where you crossed by a concrete slab, a big thicket of reeds going up the slope, and among them... Yeah, thicket? Okay. You should check at least one of those before returning to this one, since I just said it. This one's more of a technicality, okay. but still, better safe and stupid than sorry. Peninsula, church, the way I came, Take it. Got it. Right. Which means you two can pack up and go back to the walling. Whatever he thinks about this detour, it's clear that these men are exhausted and in need of assistance. Not you, Gary. You stay here. Finally. Hey. Someone's talking sense. I need you to man the traps, okay? You understand? Thank you for your help. Gary and I will start breaking down camp. If you have any more questions, Now's the time to ask. We'll be gone once you get to it. If it's more cryptid related business you want to discuss, you'll have time for that later too. But what if the information is vital on the hunt? Can we talk about why you're hanging out with this fascist? All right. What cryptids precisely? I usually discuss these things with specialists, so I don't know what. Tell me if you're racist or not. I promise I won't judge. We would have to discuss. He wants to say, but decides against it, since you've offered to help. Hmm. You need to ask him about specific cryptids. Cryptids you've heard about from Lena yes. or his friend Gary. He won't just talk. Friend. I'm gonna find your precious little stick bug and I'm gonna carry it to the Welling and Rags and show you. And I'm gonna take it in my glove and fucking crush it. Extinction. Okay. Um. God. It's not. Uh, uh, Nerve of Jerama. Formerly the most dangerous, yes. 
do you know the most dangerous living cryptid? I could guess. Believe me, you won't uh, guess it. Well, you either know or you don't. The most dangerous cryptid is a carnivorous ruminant, known colloquially as the dread moose. <laughs> so we get it. <laughs> what would the character say? I would never harm a bug. Especially not a stick bug. I love, I want a, um, some pet ones. Okay, dread moose. Yes, the dread moose subsists entirely on flesh. It has even been known to dig up fresh graves in search of sustenance. That's really scary. What does it look like? Just like an ordinary hardened moose. How do you know if it's the dread kind? You can't. That's what makes it so dreadful and hard to identify. Can't deal with bugs. Have you ever seen a stick insect though? They're just sticks. They're so much fun. I love them. Okay, I believe it exists 100%. Of course you do. Hey. The bodies found in the forest are just one piece of physical evidence. There's more. Sightings in Vasa reaching back four centuries. But, of course, nothing satiates the skepticism of. A detective. Pardon me, I did not wish to seek conflict. It's simply my training to question things. Oh. Understood, Lieutenant. Even stick bugs? Oh, you're probably doomed then. They would be like my gateway bug. No. Wait, in all caps. I'm waiting. I used to go to the reptile shop because I love snakes. And I would see, is Harry wearing pants? Yes! My disco pants. Um. And I'd want to go look at all the snakes. And sometimes they would have tarantulas. Massive ones. I don't know how I feel about that. Sometimes they had, um, crocodiles. That doesn't seem right to me either. Looks like boxes. Huge hairy tarantulas. I don't think I like them. Uh, biggest cryptid. That's impressive, I guess. But have you seen it with your own eyes? Have you? I haven't had a chance to travel to Coco North. Yeah. No. Yeah. And I likely never will. The Samoskilt Desert region has been embroiled in a small civil war for the last eight years. I fear this mindless barbarism may have wiped out the elusive creature entirely. Sightings of towering luminosities have grown rare recently. Well, they once used to be constant. Wiped it out? It's a mountain. It remains unclear what this has got to do with you seeing it, as he was inquiring before. He was just being defensive. Yeah, but so was I. I know about Cryobacta catalensis. Oh, everyone knows about that one. Yeah. Thanks to Professor Mijanu being the talk of the town for a time. Dude, get inside, you're dying. Although, probably because her life ended as a result of her work in Gutler. No one remembers her contributions to the search for the Nongok. The Nongok? A flightless cursor owl found in the Seminine Isles. Its long legs permit the Nongok to run faster than any other avian. Perhaps any other animal. Who knows? How long? Like an ostrich? That's scary. Like an owl with ostrich legs? Well, it's not hunting its prey in its manner. The oak hangs from tree branches, like a bat, waiting to dive on hapless prey below on the jungle floor. 
Mijanu liked extreme animals, you see. One of the few figures of the academic establishment I respect. Really a shame she disappeared. When did she disappear? Oh, decades ago. In the 30s. I didn't know her personally, of course. The chasm of academic pretension still stood before us. Even though she had unusual courage for someone from the other side. Other side? Meaning? Which crypto did you almost catch? A willow person. It's a long story. One non-specialist would find rather dull. What are willow people? They're not people, really. Some argue they aren't really animals. As they seem to have evolved directly from trees. Cool. They're very, very thin. Almost flat, in fact. And can camouflage themselves easily. Wrapping themselves around trees and blending in with the tree bark. In that way, they're not too dissimilar from the phasmid we're looking for here. Good phasmid. Okay, that's terrifying as well. There's some gross, like, horror here. A 2D person? Ugh. Oh, that's so scary. How did you almost catch one? Gary and I painted an entire grove's worth of trees in slow drying paint. <sighs> it was a bright lavender colour. I was hoping one of the willow people would get paint on it and not be able to camouflage itself. SCPs, yeah, but honestly, this and the ostrich owl? Both really scary. After waiting in hiding for hours, I saw a figure slip from one of the trees, a lavender shadow dashing through the grove. Mm -hmm. I chased it with a knit. Not very elegant. You can't be elegant in the field. And, well, it was faster than me. So, you didn't really plan. Did you? A lavender shadow. <laughs> I know you think we were snacking on funny mushrooms. It's easier to mock someone than to admit that the world might be more interesting than you've imagined. Oh, he got you, Kevin. Furthermore, I'm not saying it was a confirmed sighting. I'm painfully aware of what goes into verifying such things. There is a serious possibility that I saw a squirrel or a trick of the light. I am my own harshest critic. He makes it a real point here to sound falsifiable. Mm-hmm. Okay, Lena's sighting of the Phasmid. Confirmed. It's 100% verified and meets all the standards of an authentic cryptid sighting. Okay, just tell me about a cool one. Anyone. No offense, officer, but I'm not much of a pedagogue. I don't know what I would have done if Lena hadn't persuaded me to go back to field research. You should ask her if you want interesting stories. I did. Me? I'm not a people person. Unless you haven't noticed. And I don't make a good lecturer. My strength lies in field work and persistence. Hmm? Let's change the subject then. By all means. All oh, right. I actually forgot. Okay, the traps. I forgot them all. Fence blocks the path, okay. Another power box, charges nothing. I should sell some clothes. I 
I like that the game's not very hard. I mean, it's hard on your mental well-being, but... Like, I have plenty of resources. I think I have enough money. You see a once bright mural towering above you. The signage has peeled off over the years, but you can still make out Feld Electrical R&D. A slogan used to intertwine with the loops a long time ago. Now, only a shadow of peeled letters remains. It says, tomorrow is just a whisper away. Looks like tomorrow never came. Oh. Oh, Kim, write that down. And Mikhail noticed the windows, especially with how there are no windows on the south side. This was to deal with. Blonde man stands next to his son, pointing to the weather worn ruins. He sees you approaching and smiles. You officers, come to investigate the historic subtext of West Martinez? I'm Tran Heilostan. You must be Kim Kitsuragi, right? I was just telling my son about this building. Not a lot of people realize the historic significance here. Very rich in hypertext. Trying to like you. Please don't be racist. Nice to meet you. Hypertext? Yes, hypertext. Young Carp and the collection of cultural hyperlinks. Mm hmm. What was that about the windows? Oh, yes. So, Mikhail. They had to deal with monitor glare, especially in the summer. They still had vector monitors back then. That was 49 years ago. So they didn't have windows on the south wall. Do you and Kim know each other? No, I can't say that we've met before. But I've heard of Kim, of course. Mikhail, say hi to the officers. Press his hand on the boy's shoulder. The child stays hidden behind the hem of his father's coat. Clutching to his van themed culling book. Mikhail's a little tired today. We spent all night trying to run Orbis on his radio computer. Have you heard of it? It's a programming language used in Grad. Quite tricky, but he wanted to play this Grad-made adventure program. We've been getting really into worms lately. The man speaks in the artificial cadence of a professor, or someone who's been on too many radio shows. You think? But I assume you're not here for giant worms when there are so many real things to see. Just as I was telling Mikhail before, this is where the Coalition landed in 08. We could be standing on what is the most interesting landmark in Revachol West. Oh. This man is your half-brother. You feel it. <gasps> but why? I did feel it. Well, get a load of this guy. He really enjoys his trivia. The Orbis programming language was named after its inventor, Victor Orbis, a cybernetician from Grad. They run Vox in the Occidental countries. Okay. <laughs> Don't ask for money. Not yet. What's so fascinating about an empty building? Aha! But it's not just any empty old building. Raises his hand to his eyes to shield himself from the pattering rain. All four of you turn to admire the mural. What not a lot of people know is, this used to be the R&D department of Felt Electrical. And Felt, which now sells ink cartridges mostly, was once a top dog in the turn-of-the-century cybernetics boom. Hold on. What's R&D? Look at the building. It looks old and weathered, with seagulls picking apart its stone and metal carcass. Bushy undergrowth has taken hold of the collapsed rooftop. Some kind of bird has set up a nest on a broken windowsill. What's R&D? Apologies, it's an acronym for research and development. Oh. <laughs> they don't use it anymore. You're probably more familiar with RTD, research and technological development. Yes, totally. Mayor Kalpa, you are not familiar with that one either. This man is a bookhead. I don't think I've ever heard of this Feld Electrical. That's not surprising. Only a vestigial ink cartridge and ferro tape manufacturer remains. What? Did I say it looked like Stellan Skarsgård? This looks like uh, the blonde one. They started out as a midway electronics outfit in Königstein two centuries ago. After an aggressive move to Revachol, Feld became a global player 
in the emerging personal electronics market of the pre-revolutionary era. Alexander, yeah, the Northman. Okay. Still, Tricentennial was beating them in business machines. But Feld had an ace up their sleeve. Or should I say, they were developing an ace up their sleeve. I'm mixing my metaphors here. What was the ace? It was here in Martinez, possibly in this very building, that they developed prototypes for a tape computer. Wow, tape computer? Mm -hmm. An elegant folding mechanism of rollers and ferrotape ribbons, portable enough to be a take-it-home solution. Revolutionizing business machines, possibly even bring them to the average consumer. No way, it's not gonna happen. Which is a feat of engineering, even today's giants, Rehm, ICN and Zam, haven't achieved yet. Oh, he grins. Admiring the sentence he just produced. He assumes something like a combat stance, huh? facing the wind. Should I square up? What happened? Indeed. What? Hmm? The revolution! <laughs> Unfortunately, their moonshot project never made it to the market. Feld's move to River Shoal backfired. The revolutionary government liquefied their assets and expropriated those very advanced prototypes. Possibly from this very building. Or one of the adjacent ruins. Okay. All of this was built by Felt, even a boardwalk. While Pines built Martinez proper as a resort for their middle management, Felt built this side of town for R and D. What happened to the engineers, company people? Oh, I'm afraid it didn't end well for the boys. But this story is a bit too dark for little Mikael here. Oh. Now, if you were to ask about tape computers... I saw a bunch of bullets in a wall. Did there Was there a firing squad? He means that the boys got shot by the communists. The boys were bourgeois. <laughs> Take computers, right? Tape computers. Yes. You're saying Feld Electrical built this boardwalk? Yes, they even built a pleasure wheel, but that got destroyed in the war. A pleasure wheel? Lieutenant looks wistfully at the horizon as if picturing gondolas rising to the sky. Perhaps reminded of a childhood memory. <gasps> it's clear he would prefer there were a big wheel lighting up the coast. Yes. To lure in their star engineers. This part of Martinez was nothing but reeds before Feld arrived. They had to make the prospect of living here attractive. It was supposed to become a global center for innovation in cybernetics. But history had other plans. Tape storage computers was a neat thing. What did the revolutionaries do with those advanced tape computers? They used them for military communications but also to write and send out press releases. The most notorious example being Le Decret de Mars. What's that? What's the Mars Decree? I mean the radio transmission sent out to news agencies and world governments by the newly created Commune of Revachol on the 7th of March in the year 02. A short-lived legislative foundation for a short-lived utopia. It's a beautiful piece of text, actually. A singer-songwriter I know, Charette, called it a love poem to River Shawl on her political concept album, Bon Bessier d'Anselin. You should read it. Every local library in River Shawl stocks a copy of the decree. Okay. I tried to get Mikhail to memorize it. Tried to. Someone was much too interested in worms to be paying any attention. The kid takes a peek at the green and silver worm on the cover of the book. Already forgetting about this part of the discussion. Hmm, thank you. Bye, my friends. Political mixtape. <laughs> How did the tape computers work? Actually, no one knows. No one even knows what a computer made entirely of tape would look like. But word has it, they were very elegant, exquisite, alien looking, turn of the century hardware. Buckle up. Ten years ago, I did a little freelancing, I guess you could say. 
I was a special consultant for an exhibition at the Womty Domty Dom Center in Vredefort, Oranje. It raised the same questions, and we had lengthy discussions with Paul Ockerman, who was head curator at the time. This was before the twins, Keith and Guy Jews, joined the team, trying to... I'm sorry, what's it called? You must be lying. We're like joking. Wait, yeah. did he just say Wumpty Dumpty Dum? Yeah. Center? He did it. He said Wumpty Dumpty Dom Center like it's the most natural thing in the world. Uh huh. What the hell is a Wumpty Dumpty Dom Center? And who the hell are Keith and Guy Juiced? Dude, what the fuck's Wumpty fu Dom? Gu duck. The Wumpty Dumpty Dom Center for Contemporary Art. The exhibition itself to on Lagerman's notion of memory, and so there were some parallels. That's why the head curator, Paul Ockerman, chose to... He's making it up, Kim. I know he is. In fact, I'm not. The Wumpty Dumpty Dom Center is a place you can visit if you're ever in Vredefort and are ever in the market for an exhibition space slash contemporary art research center. <clears throat> Fucking liar. But perhaps I should return to the tape computers. As I was saying, the device itself was very elegant, fragile even. One could write directly on the tape using a special chemical solution. The machine would then analyze the handwriting, perform operations and project output onto a white screen. It was a beautiful, delicate thing. Cool. Very, very cool. Though I understand the socio-economic causes of the revolution, it pains me to imagine the revolutionary setting fire to this precious device. But so they did. The felt playback experiment vanished into the fires of 07. Is there something funny about the Wumpty Dumpty Dom? It's a goddamn lie. I liked you, Tron. Field playback experiment? Yes, the official name of the prototype. Some sources report it as the Feld playback experience. Feld. But those are incorrect. Why did the revolutionaries destroy it? Who knows? Maybe it was an accident, or maybe they didn't want the technology to end up in the wrong hands. Either way, they're all gone now. All three versions of the prototype. Nothing but debris and ashes remain inside that building. I want to ask something else. But of course. <laughs> what else? Do you have money? I do have some money, yes. But that's not what's really important here. Okay, so you got a lot of money. No, I mean, come on. You need the money. If it's not a thing, he can give you some. Can I have some of that unimportant money? Oh, no. I don't have it on me, officer. I was talking in more general terms. You don't mind if I take a look in your pockets then, would you? I'm just spending time with my kid here, showing him around the lesser known parts of our hometown. It wouldn't be wise to carry huge amounts of cash on nah, such expeditions. You wumpty dumpty motherfucker. You're rich. I know it. Not that he would have to worry about being robbed. He looks surprisingly buff. Oh. Does he work out? Never mind. Do you work out? I do some Lomantang stick fighting now and then. Lomantang stick fighting is a form of martial arts originating from the island of Lomantang. It uses slender wooden sticks for confronting the opponent. Yeah, it's a form of martial arts from Lomantang, correct? Actually, a great many cultures have their own version of stick fighting, such as the sacred Mabolo tradition of the Hali people. A name deriving from the butterfruit tree traditionally used for crafting the long, slender sticks, whereas the sticks used in other cultures... Actually... You doze off as he paints you a comprehensive picture of the history of stick fighting among mankind, seasoning it with unexpected pop culture references. Okay. Man, he's good at speaking. People must love him. I like him. But anyway... I'm boring you with details again. 
charming, Amazing. apologetic smile. Stick fight me. Let's go. I don't know what I was saying. Money? Can I have money? Do work out or Lomantang stick fighting is a little like a Berolidin addiction. I've been practicing it for nearly 20 years now, so you could say that my doses have grown a little peculiar. <laughs> Hold on. You're... Are you addicted to Pyrolidon? Wait, what does this man know about Pyrolidon addiction? Metaphor? <laughs> you got me, detective. But my history should hardly come as a surprise. What do you mean? Dad's fighting with sticks every night after dinner for four hours. He has a special room for that and a special costume. Yeesh. That's right, Mikhail. It also has a meditative quality. It helps to clear my head. But anyway. <sighs> Look, whatever gets you through life, but four hours after dinner? Every day? Okay. No, thanks to you for having me and little Mikhail here to pick your brain. A very interesting conversation indeed. I just realized that I stream for nine hours after dinner every day. That's different. Pick your brain. If anything, this was rather one-sided. He did the talking. Whatever. He can talk all he wants. I like him. cover these long dusty windows mm -hmm. someone must have worked hard to smash the plastic dome buzz hum the electricity flows through the wires with audible power Someone has left an unidentifiable article of clothing on this railing. It smells really bad. It's streaked with dried seagull shit and tangled with pieces of seaweed. A dangling arm suggests that there might oh. be a jacket beneath the crust of filth. There was an arm in it. Please tell me you're not taking that with you. Why? It's a guano encrusted jacket and you're already carrying around enough as it is. How do you know? Fuck him. Looks cool though. Abnormally stiff. As you hold it in your hands, it makes an uncomfortable crunching sound. How did it get so disgusting? It's a sordid, filthy tail. Not for the weak. Are you sure you can stomach it? Oh, I'm filthy. Some secrets are better left uncovered. Don't even try. Seriously. It occurs to you that you're not even holding the jacket itself, but rather the thick crust of jetsam and seagull shit that ensconces it. It smells like a dead sea creature, tangled in grey strands of seaweed. It must have spent quite some time in the water before the tide deposited it ashore. What's the crust made of? Somehow, it was carried or dragged to the boardwalk. If not by human hands, then perhaps the feral dogs that prowl the beaches at night. I've had enough. Why? Why did you think about it? Look at your hands. They're covered in muck. Ew. Now you're just flicking that shit everywhere. This is a disaster. You'll never get the smell out. I'm fine. Oh, I'm almost done thinking. Makeshift roof? Vagrants. Ew. 
Big wine canister. Open and empty. The smell. It's awful and familiar. What is it? Don't you recognize it? That idiot's pungency. That faintly cloying sweetness. Only death smells like that. Something cold wakes in the pit of your stomach. Fear. Lieutenant, something's not right. The lieutenant has already brought a handkerchief to his nose. Floorboards look rotten and weak. Okay. There's some tear. An empty cigarette package and a crumpled kebab wrapper in the trash bin. Two empty bottles of Tallulah vodka and a can of black potent porter is all you find. No, there's more in there. Livis strawberry liquor, plus some Pilsner bottles too. Better not pick them up. They seem unhygienic. A tragedy. He shakes his head with genuine sadness. What? They're bottles. Examine the cigarette pack. Whoever tossed it here was a heavy smoker. The brand name reads Red Astra. Wasn't me, was it? Red Astra is the black market version of Astra cigarettes, known for their high tar content. Okay, kebab. You see traces of mayonnaise and ketchup on it, as well as a tomato wedge. The wrapper reads Shish Kebab Revachol. Right. It's hard to concentrate in the smell. The sea air brings some relief. My operator viewer has been out of order. Stop messing with the coin viewer and hold on to something. The windows are strong. How about this? Yoink. Oh, can I get none? There's some tear. An empty cigarette package and two empty bottles of Tallulah. No. A tragedy. Who knows, man? Are they evidence? That's like 40 cents. A man lies on the boardwalk. His limbs bent and neck turned at an unnatural angle. Oh. Right next to him is an empty bottle of spirits. <laughs> In his cramped hand, a chewing gum wrapper. I'm not a very good detective. I thought this guy was just sitting. That's the tragedy. The smell is not as bad as a two-week-old corpse, but it's definitely headed there. Right. Hold on. Lieutenant squats next to the corpse and examines his face. Two bulging eyes stare back at him, void of any signs of life. Lividity is faintly pronounced. Whoever this is, has been dead for two days. No longer. We need to investigate. Another dead body. This is your job. Steal yourself. I'm stealed. Calm now. Carefully. Just another day. Just another dead body. I'm calm. Breathe. So the clothes? He's wearing mud cake boots, beige trousers, and an old brown leather jacket with a bright blue lining. There are traces of kebab sauce on his chest. Uh, uh-uh. Isn't working class woman's husband wearing that? Oh no. The leather jacket suits him well. It must be custom made. Fuck. A cool leather jacket with a bolt of blue? Oh no. This sounds terribly familiar. You find some sunflower seeds and a rain-soaked library card folded into two. His jacket feels sodden and heavy under your hand. Good. We should take a look at that library card after this is done. Is that the man? The man has fallen through a crack in the boardwalk and hit his head against the metal bench. Coagulated blood covers his black hair. One of his feet is still dangling through the hole. His expression is dull, like the sea behind him. Drops of water shining on his moustache. His eyes, empty and wide, look frightening in their frozen gaze. Height, 
170 to 175 centimeters. Curly hair, stout build, age approximately 50 to 60 years. There's some dried blood on the metal bench, right where the corpse's head rests. The floorboards are rotten and slippery wet around the hole. An empty bottle lies nearby. A chewing gum wrapper is clutched in his fist. A dried chunk of blood covers the hair at the back of his head. An open wound. It's sticky and cold to your touch. I don't see any other major wounds, do you? Mm, I mean, it's hard to say. Seems like the head wound was fatal. Yeah. It's exactly the shape of the bench. It's my first disc I play through, yeah. Stuff on the floorboards gently. They screech under your feet ominously. It's hard to say whether the dead man's weight was the cause of the boardwalk to break. It definitely looks fragile. You see waves churning below. Something cracks beneath your feet. A 0.75 liter Tulula vodka with its cap missing. There's hardly anything left inside. My God. Tear all around us. Really? Not that I'm thinking about picking it up right now. The entire boardwalk creaks in the wind as you take a step back. I didn't mean to click that. There's some dried blood, Rabowski spearmint chewing gum, green leaves on the cover. The man's mouth is half agape from the terror of the fall. The blackness of death. Stench. You think you see white chewing gum, too? Confirmed. Nearly the whole pack is there. Solidified on his lower rear teeth. He ate the whole pack, right? It's to cover the smell of alcohol before going home. The worst thing is, I've seen it before. Almost the same scenario. Even the chewing gum. It's always the same. The entire boardwalk creaks in the wind as you take a step back. Who is this man? Looks like one of the locals. He'd have to know this spot to come here. You don't just walk over here. But that's just a lazy assumption. What do you think? A dead working class man with a bottle in his hand? Don't deceive yourself. You know who this is. You weren't there, Kim, but I picked up a case. Looking for this man. It's the woman I hugged that time, remember? The woman you met at the book stand? Mm. Why do you think it's her husband? The jacket, she told me. The bright blue lining? Well, he's definitely someone's husband. Okay, what do you think happened? Death by misadventure. He slipped and fell through the boardwalk. A truly unfortunate accident. If it wouldn't have been for that bench, he'd be alive. Someone should be held responsible for this boardwalk. They'll seal this place off after the news reaches the coalition officials. I doubt that they have enough resources to actually repair the boardwalk. Not that sealing it off would keep anyone away. All it does is keep the city council's hands clean. You think it's related to the lynching? No, I don't see anything that points in that direction. Yeah. For now, let's treat this case as a simple, albeit sad, accident, and related to the murder case. Okay, you think he was drunk? Oh, yes. What about alcohol poisoning, Liverpool? Some symptoms of acute alcohol poisoning could have definitely played a role here. Severe confusion, respiratory depression, unpredictable behavior. Mm -hmm. But I think that death arrived through head trauma, not liver failure. Kebab? What about it? The deceased ate some kebab. It's probably from a nearby place, maybe in the box. Right. It does seem to be a pretty straightforward misadventure. Although there's still a question of identifying the body. Okay, what should we do with them? From where I stand, I can see two options. We either take the case and follow the leads to identify the body on our own. Or we report back to the station and leave this for our colleagues to handle. No field autopsy? A field autopsy isn't necessary if the cause of death doesn't appear to be criminal. 
and this looks like a simple accident to me. I'd say we should just write down head trauma in the autopsy report and leave it at that. It would save us at least two hours of unnecessary work. Okay. I'm pretty sure it's not criminal. Good call. The guys at processing can take care of the rest. No, we should finish this. All right. We should first examine the library card you found. Then we can call the station for my kinema. Let them know we are taking the case. My breakthrough. Fairweather T500. Remember that weakness you were looking for in the ceramic armor? Like, maybe it can only stop small, fast projectiles, but a large, slow-moving pry bar would shatter it? Or, if I run an electrical current through it, maybe it will melt. Or, personal favorite, frequency something something radio weapon? None of that would work. You need to shoot the part of the enemy that doesn't have fear with a T-500 on it. Because the armor itself is invulnerable. Good news is, so are the armor pieces on you. Cool. Wow. Oh, okay. Okay. Let me use the bathroom real quick. I mean, I feel like we shouldn't be standing on this where the guy just died, but... Okay, 11 seconds. Let's look at this. I feel so bad for working class woman. The library card is folded into two and still slightly wet to the touch. The front side reads, Central Gemrock Public Library Card, issued to Billy Mejean, expires July 53. Okay. Whoever owns this card is an avid reader. You find a list of books written in blue pencil. Radio thriller. Stand a little less between me and the sun. The last one in the list is The Glinton Curve by M. Theobald. A library stamp indicates that the book has been returned. Most of these titles seem to be in the sci-fi genre. Some thrillers too. If lost, please return the card to the library. Dial 005-02-55211 or visit us at Moreau Street, 78 Jamrock. Business hours, 900 to 1800. Good. We should give them a call from my kinema. See if we can learn anything about Billy Mejean. Good idea. There was plenty of information here to go by. Um, should we just go straight to his wife? Okay, it's five. I gotta go to the balcony at nine. I hope I can still do that even though I skipped a day. Moonshine.
Mine operated weighing machine. Ooh. Plus two, but minus one. Is that worth? Oh, definitely. They're not very cool, but that's okay. Wait, they're a little bit like mine. Okay, whatever. Vagrants. Mr. Fashion. A metal paper under a yellow plastic dome. You could use it to call someone, unless you're out of change. You hear the tone. The machine is inoperable. Is this random? Calling. Still calling. This feels wrong. Should you be doing this? Yes. End of turn. Someone picks up. Maybe. What's he like? So nice of you to find the time to call me. To get so lonely. Even the animals have died. What kind of pets? Are you sure you're here? Your voice is different. I Her voice is drowned in white noise. Sounds like waves washing a beach, growing in volume until the call suddenly disconnects. You get a sinking feeling. It makes you look if Lieutenant Kitsuragi overheard you. To your relief, he did not. This is the, not the same number? Calling. Still calling. Present them on. Someone with a masculine voice picks up. Hello, Gerard speaking. Uh, wrong number. Don't worry about it, buddy. It happens to all of us. You have a nice day now. You too. Phone hanging up. Disconnect tone. Can you watching? Calling. 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 Still calling. Still calling. Stop calling me, man. Slightly hysterical. I can relate. I'll get you your money, all right? I just need to tonight. Let me work. Slight change of plans. I want this delivered to the Wallingen Rags. That is. I, um. Uh... <laughs> You're not that is. Screw you, and don't ever call here again. You're fucking with some serious people. Disconnect tone. <clears throat> really? Just one more, Kim. Just one more. I'm tired. Typing in the background. Sounds like he hasn't talked to anyone in quite a while. I'm tired too. If I could go just one month without writing, no, two months, I could regenerate my brain. Fucking liberalism. The man disappears with a sigh. You do not hear the customary disconnect tone, just silence in the handset. The machine is still waiting for you to dial a number. Seems like it did not have time to swallow the coin. This sometimes happens. Recall? Lucky you. The call went too fast for the payphone to register. You can still make a new one without paying. Sorry, cop. <laughs> you 
close your eyes and put your index finger on the rotary dial, then pull down on the number, then move one up and repeat the motion twice. Strange. This is not how you started before. Really? Four one four 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 seven. The rotary dial feels cold from the sea air. One 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 seven three six one. Your fingers keep moving like a spider every time the ring rotates back with a little ring of metal. That's like not... a bell tolling. It's like a hundred numbers. Yes. Four five one six seven four five one. You are going deeper now, into some unknown place, far away from this island of matter and its telecommunication networks. Four, five, one. You have dialed God knows how many numbers. Yeah. The headset has been waiting silently to relay a signal. Surely nothing can come of this, you think. But it does. A connection. An ultra-long distance call. Your air fills with the crackle. The wash of a strange ocean full of white noise. A little bird starts ringing in there. Not like the local calling tone before. No, a small ring in a cage of distortion. Far away. A distant network of phones. Calling. Calling in the night. The saddest sound in the world. Calling still. The handset starts slipping from your sweaty palm. Your breathing is heavy. Kim? The lieutenant is too far away to hear your yelp. The sea wind blows. Kim? You can't. Some strange force is keeping the headset glued to your hand. Your ear listening to the ring in the speaker. Calling. Calling. Operator? Calling. Calling. Calling still. Then the ocean breaks. Out of the depths, a woman's voice emerges. Small. The dearest thing you've ever heard. Hello? Your voice is beautiful. No, no. It's you, isn't it? That's you. Who is this? Dora. Who is this? The connection is bad. Dora. The name feels like a gift. A gift that was meant for you. To make it possible to live. In the distorted distance, you hear someone turning next to her. Bed springs rattle. Is someone there? No answer. You're not sure, but you think you hear a man's voice in the background. It's covered in pain and white noise. A sigh. She heard you, but she does not hang up. And neither do you. You can't. <sighs> I'm a revolutionary servant of humanity. I will free mankind and abolish the classes, that's true. And raise the dead. You're not a revolutionary, Harry. You're drunk. I 
I'm not drunk, actually. Oh, God. Do you know what time it is? It's so late here. It's four o'clock, Harry. I need to wake up in two hours. Is someone there with you? Yes. Where are you? I'm in my rover. Sleeping. 22 million people live in Marova, the capital city of Grad. It is the capital of the world after Rivershow was destroyed. Where are you going in two hours? To work. Where? The academy, where I work. That sounds better than my job. Oh fuck. No response, only a sigh. The connection crackles like burning paper. Um... Who am I? You sound like you know me. What do you want to talk about? Oh fuck. That we haven't talked about already. This is bad. You feel your right hand on the handset crimping up with pain. Um... I'm the law. She does not answer anymore. I'm gonna solve it. Harry. Disconnect tone. The machine ran out of money. <laughs> you dial the number again. 26 pulls of the rotary dial. The machine eats the coin, and a terrifying ocean of distance rustles in your ear. In the middle of it, a familiar ring. Small, distorted, calling. 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 It's gonna kill me. Calling. 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 <laughs> calling. It looks like she doesn't want to pick it up, Harry. Stop scaring her. Why? Come on, you know why. The headset lands in the cradle with a clank. Kim? Can we talk? Yes. Nothing. You slapped, Chica? Wow. Good morning. Dead phone, smash receiver. Someone hung up too hard. Did I do that? Successful model. Did I hydrate? I'm sure I would have. Yep. Okay, I think we've been. Shadow of a very large building. Recently discarded. Oh. 
teen trails off into the ocean. Missed the voice on the phone already. I think you gotta let go. Trap? No. Minus empathy. Looks good though. There's a trap in the reeds at your feet. Looks like the same one you saw Morel set before. Same mesh, same wiring. The reeds sway in the coastal breeze. They seem to be waiting for something. The wind picks up here, near the Cape's end, surrounding the narrow strip of land from three cardinal directions. It's cold for this time of year. Locusts are crawling around in the trap, confused but uneaten. You see no carnivorous reed phasmid gorging on them. Okay, that's the charge trap. Big surprise. Hey. Anyway, one down, three to go. It'll be the next one, surely. Surely. Anyway, the air is nice and fresh here. Hi, Nick. How many times have you dark urged? Not many. I mean, kind of sometimes against the racists, but that's... I don't really think that's a dark urge. That's just the urge. I did have a breakdown in front of, um, a 20-year-old. Cigarette bots cleaned away under a rock. Someone's made a campfire here. What's the broken control box? Oh. Tiny inlets there, off in the far distance, with a post trail toward. What? Kim merges. Okay. Tumwe, uh huh. Important. There's the church trap. Boardwalk rises south. Oh, I want to find the bug. Wait, it's not fake, Nick. I can't find it if you say that. A date. sand dune in front of it. The door hasn't been opened in a long while. You see a handle. Dune mentioned. I'm angry. What is this? It's military. A service depot of some sort. Okay. The washerwoman mentioned a depot up the coast. She said it was for moving ammo and cargo across the bay. Right. This might be it. I'm with Kim. Hmm. I'm pretty logical too, but I, there's like a little part of me that I have room for spiritual stuff. Like, not that I believe it, but it would be nice. Dusty pews. Okay. Crab man lives here. I'm scared. An altar shrouded in dark? God. Oh, 
Okay, we've been everywhere. Water runs from the west. Little black swallow. Okay, I want to investigate the church, but um, it's six. I want too much time to pass in there. Money? Okay, gentlemen. Unshaven man with a ruddy nose. Narrows his eyes at you as if in recognition. Then turns his head away. The noxious odor emanating from the drunken man is strong and familiar. Don't you call her? Yeah! Don't call Abigail! Who? I just probably shouldn't say your name. Uh huh. Abigail. Don't you fucking call Abigail. Hey. Abigail is his wife or girlfriend. Chances are she's gone. Calling her wouldn't make it any better or worse. Mm. You're not going to get anything out of this guy. He's too drunk. Who are you? Don't call Abigail! What's this place? The man hiccups, then mumbles something unintelligible. Why shouldn't I call Abigail? He snorts and beckons you to lean in closer. He waves his hand as if shooing you away, all the while murmuring something indecipherable. Okay. Don't you fucking call her! Hear me! Abigail? Don't call Abigail! Guys? Hey, tequila! 30 something man clad in a two piece lycra tracksuit. Puts down his pills and extends a hand. Good to see you. How's business? How's the whole reality situation treating you? Oh, what a voice. So, what's happening? Is that tequila? Yeah, tequila sunset. How are the, um,. High concept reality based adventures proceeding. What do you mean? He says it like it's obviously your name. Like you call someone Billy Brunel or leader of the Fourth Street Gang. Good. These people know your true name. Looks like it has preceded you, Mr. Sunset. More on that later. Uh People tell me a cop. I'm getting used to that. It's good to hear that you're on top of things. Talking about used to, did you know that I used to be a real mover and shaker? Really? Me too. Sadly, things aren't going that well in idiot doom spiral land. Haven't found those keys yet, haven't won that great piece of ass back. No word from my business buddies. You could try th not thinking of them as literal meat. You know what I mean? This guy's your buddy, buddy. You feel it immediately. You belong to an organization, a fraternity of drunks. No, I don't. I quit. What's a tequila sunset? It's you. Your tequila sunset. How do you know? We've met before. Don't you remember? Yeah, I'm clean shaven now, Nick. Do you like it? No, you sure don't. No, I don't remember. Aha. Uh -huh. Do you want to know how Tequila Sunset came to be? 
Yes, Kim, could you step away? Tequila. Tequila sunset. Something ominous there. No, I want to know. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Let me take a sip to moisten up my cords. Tequila sunset rolled into Martinez last Friday. And by tequila sunset, I mean you. The man, the myth. Friday. Hey, let's not jump ahead of ourselves. This is your story. Stop interrupting. You got here on Friday to solve a case, hoping to be the early bird who gets the worm. And by the worm, I mean the buzz. Because as far as I know, all you did was get pissed drunk. Word on the street is you went around the local hostel telling people that you're a police officer and that it would be really fucked up if you shot yourself in the head right in front of them. That's pretty high concept if you ask me. The lieutenant's brow is furrowed. He's listening as casually as he can. Kim, that's a bull fucking shit lie, okay? That's a blatant lie. Even though it's not the first time we've heard this story. They're just rumors. You know, small towns. It's crazy. Then what? It was a late Saturday night when we, the Union of Moribund Alcoholics, were getting our drink on. Nothing remarkable about this. We get our drink on 24-7. Makes everything warm and glowy. I trust you know the feeling. One moment we hear the sound of a motor carriage revving up somewhere on the plaza, followed by a series of dings and bangs. Do you remember the sound of wood cracking? The billboard? Naturally, loud noises pique the interest of anybody owning a pair of ears. That's just the reality we're in. Naturally. Anyway, there was a brief silence. A gasp of silence, if you will followed by a real commotion. We heard the carriage careening towards the coast at top speed. Sounded like someone jumped the canal. We grabbed our brewskis and rushed to the jetty. Never underestimate the speed of an alcoholic. What we saw was a sight to behold. A beat up police carriage containing you. Right there on the beach, you revved the engine and screamed at the top of your lungs. Repeatedly, independently verified, unfounded rumors. That's a good way to put it. Yep. The time hath come! So, naturally, being the curious cat I am, I asked what time hath come, to which you replied, The time hath come for tequila sunset, the end of all things! After which, your reality contracted. You jammed the pedal, plowed right off the jetty, and through the ice. The muscles in your right leg tense up. We ran towards the ice whilst you crawled your way out, miraculously unhurt, covered in seaweed and shit, like some kind of sea monster. Oh. When we finally got there, you were sitting on the beach crying. You said that your badge and uniform were in the car. It was too late to get in there, though. The carriage had sunk too deep. Recognizing a brother in need, we offered our condolences and invited you to party with us, which you naturally agreed to. We asked about the whole tequila sunset thing, and you told us it was your name now, and insisted that we all call you that from then on. But I said it was an event. I'm not sure. I think you were the event. <laughs> tequila sunset. You know, as opposed to a tequila sunrise, which is long gone. Okay, I'm sorry about that. My name is Harry. No, that's just what your mother called you. Your real name is Tequila Sunset. Wrong. Just embrace it, brother. How long did we party? Hours. It was an all-night drinkathon. Then, at some point, I think it was Sunday morning, 
You got belligerent and wanted to talk about Revacholian women. In general? How they're beautiful and also whores and so on. <laughs> How one of them fucked you real bad. After a short while, you crossed the event horizon, looked sullen, got up, and left without saying anything. Wow, that's quite a story. Story, yes. Yeah, I bet Tequila's a fucking legend around the precinct. You must be proud to work with him. If you only knew. <laughs> You're hurting my feelings again, Kim. Did I say anything specific about the person that fucked me? You were pretty vague about it, but you kept saying you got fucked real hard, and that we've all been fucked too. In a bad way? Oh fuck it. Please, don't open that door. Uh... No one's fucked me. I do the fucking around here. Abigail. It seemed pretty painful, to be honest with you. If I had to guess, I'd say you're still working through some shit. You think it's a compliment? Ugh, Kim's just said a few things today that have um, broken my heart, so. <laughs> Tomorrow's a new start. <laughs> Did I mention losing anything else? Beside your gun and your badge? You said something about your hope or heart or something. To be honest, the details are a little hazy. Okay. In retrospect, I guess you lost your motor carriage too? That's a big one. Did I say anything about my colleagues? You told us that they were a bunch of fucking losers whose main interest was cramping your style. It's more like you were cramping theirs. No specifics, though. It was more about you that night. You were the star of the show. Mmm, nice voice. Did I say anything about the case? Yeah, you said it was no biggie and that you'd solve it in no time. And that you didn't need anyone to do it. You're doing it solo now. A lot of cops go solo and hermit once they reach that level of alcoholism. I was joking, Kim. It's not meant as a joke. He's sorry for the hermit cop. I'm a cop. I'm sorry, cop. So that's not bad. I didn't mention any politics, did I? Yeah, you kept talking about how the coal mine owners were fucking us all over, just like that woman fucked you. Yeah. I didn't agree with you, by the way. The spectral hand of the market makes sure everyone gets exactly what they deserve. What the hell? Wait, are you, like, homeless? Okay, did you get a read on what kind of cop I was? You kept apologizing for being such a bad cop and for the damage you've inflicted on everyone around you. Yeah, that's me. You also kept pausing to knock the heel of your hand against your temple, <gasps> saying, stupid, stupid, stupid. Yeah. I reckon that was me. It's a hard thing for a man to confront his past. That's why I avoid mine at all costs. <laughs> what do you guys do around here? We are saving the world. Please! Please don't call! Don't call! Okay, we're drinking. We're drinking alcohol. That's what we're doing. I tried to save the world once, a long time ago, with enterprise, creativity, and willpower. But that didn't work out. Did you found Lycra? So now, it's a pirate's life for me. You seem like you're characterized by your storytelling ability. You want to tell me another sometime? whoop de doo So now, I'm a fucking storyteller. Right. Why not? Better than a beach bum. Tell me how you became Idiot Doom Spiral. It depends, really. 
Are you willing to help me out? With what? You might get scammed here. What do you need? Booze. Did you already forget our party? The thing I relayed to you earlier. So, have you got anything for good old idiot Doom Spiral? A bottle for a story. Seems fair to me. Yeah. Yeah. Classy. Hey, Spiral Boy, you gonna share that? Don't call Abigail! Shut up, guys. I'm telling a story here. Something happened to you. Something happened to me, too. My actual name is George. But around here, you already know. I was once a reasonably high net worth individual. A founder slash junior partner at a high concept creative services agency. When my story begins, I had just landed a major contract with an insurance firm. Go on. I used the profits from my agency to finance what I call a cultural incubator. Abstract value generation, value per person, high concept stuff. I developed the paradigm, worked within the paradigm, but the burden of leadership weighed heavily on me. So I went jogging every so often to keep myself sane. Did you make Lycra? Did the jogging help? It did. With my trusty Sansarik tracksuit, I felt like I could conquer the world. But now dreams are worn thin. Much like my tracksuit. What happened? One day I left on my evening run. As you may know, it's impossible to clear your head when you're distracted by the sound of keys jangling in your pockets. Actor only has three credits on IMDb. Wow. His eyes are clouded. His dilated blood vessels encircling his irises like stinging brambles. So I removed the keyring and put the keys for the front gate and the apartment into different pockets to stop the jangling, you see? At least, that was the plan. I was halfway done with my usual lap when it started to rain. The reality situation became very wet, very quickly. How wet? Wet, okay? <coughs> it was raining really hard. Sorry. I made my way back home and discovered that I didn't have the key to the front gate. I'd mixed it up with the key to the letterbox, which was useless. Naturally, the situation required me to climb over the gate, which I did. There was no climbing down because I slipped and landed on my ass. Reality was looking rather grim just then. Me lying on my ass in a mud pit in the middle of a heavy shower. But when life knocked me down, I always got up. So I made my way across the yard. Standing in front of my apartment door, fumbling with my pockets, I realized that I'd also forgotten my apartment key. Okay. I rang my neighbor's buzzers. It was late, and most of them didn't even answer. Those who did assumed I was trying to sell them something and hung up before I could even explain the situation. People are naturally wary of ad men, you see. One moment someone chats you up, five minutes later you've bought a box of edible lingerie and a strap-on. I don't begrudge them, especially since I was known to be... one of the best. At... which thing? Heavy is the head that wears the crown. Just then, I experienced a moment of clarity. I still had the key to my office. I could wait out the storm there. But when I reached my office, I remembered that I'd asked one of my producers to change the locks that day. And since I hired only the best, he'd already done it, and I couldn't get in. Anyway, long story short, life spiraled out of control. I haven't gotten into my apartment for years, 
and my girlfriend left me because she didn't want to date a homeless man. The company, well, you see where I'm going with this. So, now you've heard my tragic tale. What do you think? Like nothing you've ever heard, huh? Wait, you couldn't request another apartment key? I think some stuff is missing. Tequila, I've thought about this series of events for a long time. If there was anything else to it, I would have thought of it by now. Why didn't you go to the authorities? Hmm. Well, at one point they came to me, but, you know, I, oh. I didn't have any ID on me. Shit. So they tossed me in jail for two days. Oh. I can't say it increased my faith in the RCM. No offense, gentlemen. I literally can't believe it. Me neither, Tequila. When I lost my keys, I lost more than access to my apartment. I also lost my leverage over humanity. I wasn't a high-concept creative director anymore. I was just some homeless asshole with a premium Sansarik Lycra tracksuit. You can't imagine what that does to a man's confidence. Anyway, that was all the story one bottle gets you. Almost empty, this one. No, I don't think it matters if your morale's low. Um, sometimes I can heal it as well, if I fail. <laughs> Why do you keep losing all your stuff? Good fucking question, Tequila. If I knew the answer, you think I'd be hanging out on a beach in this Formerly premium, but now extremely dirty, two-piece Lycra tracksuit. I used to own my reality situation. My business buddies and I had our own creative services agency. I had a nice apartment, an even nicer piece of ass. But somehow it all got away from me. Now I can't hang on to anything. Just last week I stole this nice new jacket. But then I lost it, too. The only things I haven't lost are these two drunks. You of all people should empathize with this. Perhaps this lost jacket is something you could help with? Oh. I think I have it. Tell me about the jacket. Tequila, it's a verifiable tragedy. It was practically brand new. Sure, it didn't really go with my Lycra threads, but it did itch a lot less. Say, you're a detective, right? Maybe you can help old Doom spiral out. Solve the case of the missing jacket. What do you say, Tequila? Well, I wouldn't call it a filthy jacket, but I found this. Holy shit! Tequila, how did you... Never mind, I don't care. Just let me see the jacket. Here you go. Let me see. What? This isn't my jacket. Oh. My jacket was beautiful. This is fucking filthy. What am I supposed to do with this? Well, you left outside for a week. I'm not taking a disgusting pile of hobo rags. I may be in an irrecoverably decaying orbit, but I've still got standards. Okay. I can respect it. Either bring it back the way it was before, or find a dumpster to burn it in. You want me to wash it? You know, despite the guano, it looks like the jacket itself is stain resistant. It may just need a good scrubbing. Okay. Well, the washwoman. Um, do you have any other stories? I do. But as you can see, my fuel tank is running quite low. If you catch my drift. All right, not right now, though. Then I can't keep on telling the stories. Hi, gamer. Okay. You too, Tequila Sunset. Right. I'll do the charge maybe tomorrow, because... Hey. Could you wash this for me? Please? Our tenant, the policeman, 
I hope the waves don't keep you up at night. What can I help you with? I can wash it for you, but it's going to take about a half an hour. Think you can stay put for that long? Okay. I could use a breather. It's been another track and field day. Wait. Well, hand it over then, and I'll see what I can do. Must say, I'm proud of this one. It's pretty nice underneath all that field. I hope you take better care of it than its last owner. Thank you. I'll just get it back. Hey, Doom. Tequila Sunset. I love listening to him talk. Here's your jacket. My jacket? Yep. The one you just asked me to clean, and I waited half an hour. A look of consternation crosses the man's face. He looks at you, then at his bottle, then back at you. What the fuck are you talking about, Tequila? What the fuck are you talking about? Rosemary, what the fuck is Tequila talking about? Rosemary, can you ask Doom what the fuck he's talking about? Oi, that's the jacket you stole two weeks ago. From the kid who was making it with his gal on the beach. That's disgusting. I've never done anything like that in my life. You're both delusional. Ugh, found. That's medium concept stuff. It becomes abundantly clear to you how this man managed to lose his keys, business, friends, and girlfriend. Okay. I'm calling it. It's neurological. I'll keep it then. That shit is so medium concept, I wouldn't touch it with a stick. But yeah, okay. I'm sure it looks great on you. Thank you. It's an okay jacket, if you are into that look. I'm not, Lieutenant. Okay, let's step aside for a second. I have something I want to talk about. You want the jacket? You can have it. That's it. I've been meaning to have a little chat with you. About your sense of style. Just fucking go in then. I've. Tomorrow's a fresh slate, so just get it out of your fucking system right now. Go on. I'm glad you finally started dressing a little more like an <sighs> officer of the RCM. Keep it up. Thank you, Kim. Your half brother is proud to stand beside you. <laughs> Sorry, Kim. I just had a rough day. You like this? You're an officer of the RCM, not some bon vivant. Mm -hmm. You know the expression, the clothes make the man? The right outfit in the right situation can make all the difference in the world. You're a shop dressed man. We can be style buddies. Let's not get ahead of ourselves, detective. A warm smile. Oh. Anyway, we should probably get back to the case. Let's go. I never talked to Rosemary. Good to see you, friend. Do I have deals set up for you, buddy boy? What are you talking about? So what do you want? I've got smokes. They're cheap. Very cheap. I got pills now, great deal. You won't get a better deal on that piss. Spirits I can let go for 300 real. I also have speed. And by speed, I mean amphetamine. Mm. Amphetamine? Aye, by amphetamine, I mean speed. I thought by speed you meant amphetamine. Aye, what I said. Okay. Good, good, my man. Now, what can I offer you? What's the bottle of spirit? See, friend, it's real valuable. Worth every real, if you catch my drift. Got it from a bit of a business venture. 
go on. You know, it's funny actually. <laughs> mm-hmm. He's finding it difficult to focus his watery gaze. What's funny, Rosemary? What? You said What is funny? This guy, this guy. Conversation might bring a discount, no? Ooh. Good night, Clown Eye. G Man? Where'd you get it? Oh, this is medicinal spirits. The good stuff. Got it from the doctor's office. Which doctor? I got one of those scientific ampoles a few months ago. Torpedo, they call it. It's supposed to keep a man from taking a drink. Didn't stop me for shit, that's for sure. Five lemons with half a pack of butter and you're good to go. Raw? I'll try and remember that. It really isn't. In a week, the goddamn kidneys started giving me all kinds of help. Finally, the missus took me to a private doctor's office. Oh. Not a charity, the real thing. Those arseholes. Those arseholes charged me four real to remove the damn thing. But I came out on top after all. I'm sorry. What did they remove? What do they The kidney. How? The idiots left me alone in there. Now, I used to teach high school biology. I know what doctors use to preserve dead fingers. You're like a shitty Walter White. Hey, go on. Quite three cans of this blue medicinal stuff from the back room. Ooh. Threw the snakes out and voila. What's left is this beautiful blue stuff. 98.7% almost pure alcohol. Oh, I thought I could get. Two I already sold to these fine gentlemen here. But this last one is yours for three real if you want it. Three. Don't say it. Thank you. Three real and it's yours, friend. The deal of a lifetime. Well done. You got it. Just make sure to enjoy that one, friend. I'm off. In the civilized world, it's a custom to tip the shopkeep, friend. But come back anyway. I'm a dirty fucking savage, Rosemary. Okay. Eight point seven pure alcohol. I'm gonna drink that. Oh god. A drop in temperature, an easy flow of air, an empty street before you, a thoroughfare unjammed with lorries. No more drivers smoking on hitch steps. Just silence. Girl price six. What did the smoke smell like? Chemically sweetened. Across the road, a forgotten bus stop. Corrosion has opened a hole in its roof. An elm tree watches over the building. Its branches are dripping with rain and snow. The road is smooth and motley. Craters filled with a black asphalt. The asphalt first laid is grey already. A row of tenements are under construction in the distance. Who live across the road? A tub warm with water, white with soap. A man bathes while radio waves transmit the lottery numbers. Four, eighteen, twenty-one, four, one. A modern washing machine rattles a drawer full of silverware. His boyfriend is on his way home. He brings tins of meat and vegetables with him. Their pockets are heavier with money, but only slightly. The bus stop? Number 312D. Young girls used to come here huddled up, hoping for more warmth than their thin coats give them. The bus took them to school. It has not run for eight years. 
there were not enough girls to sustain its cost. The road? Craters pocked the surface. Children played in them until heavy trucks full of black pitch rolled in. The landowners have filled the craters with money. It is a vital artery of the flow of trade. There's one bump on the road. A dead dog lies flat about 200 paces away, right at the turn. A dog? Tragedy comes from the wheels of a fast RCM vehicle hurrying to work. The cold washes over you. The sound of the sea has grown distant. The wind moves the aerosol. A detective stands behind the boom barrier. A breeze moves a curl of his hair. Mm. Okay, the wind's above him. Um, charge tomorrow. We have to tell a working class woman. Go to the balcony. All right. 11 seconds. music is this the music that you requested Nick right um... don't think so okay oh tucked away. Dusty shelves. Oh, cozy. Cold breeze. Yoink. Red chair in the dim light of the room. Is this everything? This is a secret. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. Drama king. I don't want drama. We go down here. Is 
Then why'd I wear it? Because it's plus two. <laughs> I need the stats. Swing is missing. Glory to the ghosts of us. Drama has been fun. True. Left their music collection. <gasps> There's no way to listen to the tape without a working tape player or portal reel at hand. But even just holding the tape makes you feel a little sad. Let's go. A pawn shop. A pawn shop would have a tape player. Tape player or a portal reel. Okay. Birds in the birch tree. Rust peels off the bent iron posts of the swing. The wind whistles through the skeleton of the small house behind you. There's desolation. Guys? Everywhere. What happened? In this yard? Lieutenant looks at the small building. A flock of grey swallows takes off. He's assessing the situation. How long ago was it abandoned? Someone thought they could have a summer house in a block obscure. For cheap. It didn't work out. They abandoned it about a decade ago. What's a block obscure? A black block. A part of the city left unrenovated after the war. Or one that has fallen to gang violence. Or has become inhospitable in some other way. On aerial photos, block obscures look like dark squares. Hence their name. So this part of the coast is a block obscure? Practically. It's not an official term in any way, but look around. No sewage. Broken power lines, crime, drums. Life is tough in the blocks. It's no place to build a summer house. At least they left some music. Yes, and you picked it up as part of the jam rock shuffle. Mm -hmm. It's not meant as nagging, just an observation. I know. I didn't think he was. We should move. I don't think we will solve the murder with forays into the urban hinterland. At least in this phase of the investigation. Yes. What? Hello? Oh no. Kim? my mind a familiar apparatus lies among the reeds another one of morel's traps oh, the other down one. by stones to keep it in place uh, okay look around the reeds bend forlornly toward the sand snow covers the broken stalks like a shroud and they shimmer ghostly in the darkness in the east the city center hums to you. The constant, distant song. Louder on this part of the coast. Nearer somehow. And there's that cold again. Always the cold. This trap is also full of panicked locusts. No sign of any cryptozoological beast inside. Another empty trap. Thanks for keeping notes. How are you enjoying the cardio, Lieutenant? Always up for a good jog. Otherwise, would I still be on this scale with you? Decades old concrete defenses. Um, so that's the one... the way we came.
We did the one near the church. Where was the other? Boathouse is west. Searching? This is the trap Morel just set. Checking it over, he said, is just a technicality. But the reeds by the abandoned campsite sway and tremble while the snow falls all around. The later it gets, the colder. Remnants of the camp can still be seen in the sand. The fire that's gone out. You feel strange, somehow. Nothing but locusts in this trap as well. Definitely no cryptozoological monstrosity. Empty as all of them. One more of these and we're done. You getting tired? No, no, I'm fine. I didn't mean to complain. It's just... You need a break? We can walk to the next one. West of the Feld building. That's this, right? Oh god, the music. This is the one. It takes you a moment, but finally you spot the last of Morel's traps. This one's partially obscured. By the reeds. Oh, in the reeds. Behind you, the ruins of a residential building loom over the reeds. They whisper amongst themselves, confidentially. Snowflakes cling to their shivering stems. The trap feels light and silent as you pick it up. Something is different here. No locus. No phasmid either, but still. Closer. Well. The debate worked on something. This doesn't mean it was a real monster, though. Unless you see one in there. I just see an empty trap. But there's reeds everywhere around it. The netting is a little untidy. Messier than the others. Like someone or something picked up the trap and shook it before dropping it back down on the ground. But what if it was the Phasmid, Kim? Right. Anyway, that's for the cryptozoologist to figure out now. Okay. We are not cryptozoologists. We are cops. I'm like a cop cryptozoologist. All right. Uh, okay. On the way home, go to the pawn shop. Oh, I live here now. I'm so many things. Sorry, cop. Um. What was the other one? I like when Kim takes the lead. My Twitter bio, I know. I mean, I probably wouldn't put that in there. Pathetic sub cop. We went there, right? Run, Kim. Huh? 
Can I get it? Goodbye, Nick. That sounds nice. Have a good one. Um. The boomboxes wait on the shelves. And your boombox, that gold and amber, Harmon Walshi, stares at you longingly with its tape reel eyes. I, that can play this, right? Oh, I almost forgot about this. Um. A bird. Mm, I don't know if I'll give it back. Um, I'm sure it can play it. The boomboxes wait on the shelves, and your boombox. That gold and amber, Harmon Walshi, stares at you longingly with its tape reel eyes. I don't think I should play my f sad wedding song. And here you are, quality sound reproduction on the go. It'll play anything, wherever. Turn any tape into a conversation of sounds and shapes. Thanks, Roy. Anything else I should buy here? Maybe, um... The shine on these sunglasses lasts a lifetime, officer. Cute. 100% guarantee. The oh, right. speakers I below didn't this. are banged up and worthless. No, 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 no. You keep coming back. That's good, officer. Keep browsing those clothes. Keep saving that economy. No, thank you. There's some books I might buy. Oh, fuck. We gotta tell her. Let me just make sure. Officer 21. Okay, it's 20 right now. She's not here. Oh, fuck. We can just call it in then. Inside, you see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone, a pull-out toolbox, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. This is Precinct 57. How may I assist you? Um, the Jamrock Public Library, please. I'm afraid they're closed. Oh. It says here that the library is open from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Okay. We should try again during business hours. Yes. Anything else, detective? I need to report a dead body. One moment. Can you please describe the body? Age, sex, cause of death? Unidentified middle-aged man, height 170, 175 centimeters, dark hair, medium build, looks like he slipped, fell through a hole in the boardwalk, hit his head. Against a bunch. We suspect he might have been inebriated when he fell. There were bottles all around him and traces of vomit on his shirt. Yep. Any signs of violence? No, it seems like an accident. No field autopsy necessary. Yep. You can hear her quickly typing in the background. What about his belongings? Did you examine his clothes? He was wearing boots, trousers, and an old leather jacket with a bright blue lining. I found a library card. Any information on the library card? It's from Central Jamrock Public Library, belongs to Billy Michonne. Good, you have a lead. Thank you for the follow, thank you. Do you and Luton Kitsuragi want to take the case, or should I assign it to someone else? We're taking this case. I have assigned the case to Luton Kitsuragi. Please follow up on this library lead to identify the man. We'll send someone to take the body to the morgue. Okay. That's all for now. Thank you for reporting in. Thank Is there you. anything else I can do for you? Can I speak to Sylvie again? Just a second, officer. Sylvie Malaika on the line for you, officer. Yes, hello? Hi Sylvie, it's me again. Oh great. What else do you need, detective? 
My gun. Please, no. Not this again. Everyone saw your cool gun, detective. Sorry. You were trying to impress some people with it. Everyone was eating and... No, sorry. I just thought I had extra information that I could ask, but... You were waving it around in everyone's face, begging them to describe it. You said it calms you, and then you started making suicide jokes. It, it got pretty graphic. I'm sorry. Oh, those again. I have been trying to wean you off them. You know, when you put your gun, your actual gun, on your temple and pretend to shoot your brains out, off of that, mm. people don't like that. Sorry. Mm, I remember this. You were screaming things like, My brains are all over the wall. Painting them red. I won't be seeing it, because these are my brains. I can't see without my brains. Very nice visuals there. Some poor sod was trying to eat his pudding while you were screaming, spit flying, imitating the mercy shot right next to him. Spat some in his food. I don't think he touched it after. No idea. All I know is next to you waving around money instead, saying things like, Big bucks cannot lie, and guns can't buy money, but money can always buy guns. It almost looked like you pawned it, but believe me, I did not ask. Sorry to put you through that again. I knew all that. You hear the call breaking up on the other end of the radio, and then the already familiar voice. Anything else I can help you with, Apiso? No, thank you. 57, over and out. In the cabin, you see a set of steering levers. Right. Okay, uh, 21. What else did we have to do? I play a tape right now. gonna take me out the porter reel is just what you needed the reels attached to the apparatus with a satisfying click the tape is routed behind the magnetic reader you press the large button marked commencer and the tape starts spinning there's a small delay before the song starts playing It sounds like someone's moving in the room, getting comfortable. Then the organ starts playing a simple, melancholic tune, echoing in the hallway. A lone singing voice joins in, telling you about the tiniest church in Sessongs, surrounded by even tinier yard. You almost feel the seaside mist on your skin. It's mega sad. Within seconds you know this is the one, the real shit you've been looking for. The one you trust your room to. This one tells it like it is. This is your tune. A click, then silence for a bit. Then the tape stops spinning. I'm gonna sing this. Of course you could sing this. You could take sad to a whole new level with this. And you already know the lyrics since you've listened to it like a million times. God. Yup, they're all here. All three verses. And the B side of the tape contains the instrumental version. It's like the world itself is telling you to do it. Only one obstacle stands on your way. What? Gart. You have to convince Gart to let you sing karaoke in the whirling. After you've won him over, you can express yourself. What? Let the pain out. Make everyone understand. You can't police my art. Okay. The lieutenant watches you. Pack up the boombox. He doesn't say anything. I'm gonna have to give him that fucking bird. Pause the music. Hi, Willie. What is this game? Um, it's really good. The 
theme on that pinball machine is a standard royalist theme, used on everything from pinball cabinets to full flavor cigarettes. The what are the hallmarks? Clinging to a picture book version of the past century, waiting for the king to come back and cast out all the profiteers and homosexuals. Basically, imagine a yellow plastic crown with a liquor brand emblazoned on it. Doesn't sound like the place for me. The contemporary period stands still. The fated carousel of progress that doomed the royalists is itself winding down. Our time is decelerating into what no one knows. Did I have more for them? I can't remember. Now it's not the time. It's karaoke time. Hey, gods. Oh, you're back. It's great to see you again, officer. My wife can't wait to thank you. Go on, talk to her. How'd you bow? Hi, Lena. Oh, sweetie, I don't even know how to thank you for finding my husband and helping him out. I hope we haven't been too much trouble for you. I was just on my way. Here, I want to give you a small token of my gratitude. It's a tie. Mesk in origin. The pin is an antique. Quite special. Oh, thank you. The little silvery knob holding the tie together feels warm in your hand. It's in the shape of an avian skull with eight eyes. Oh, I love it. You could ask her about this when you get the time. It's probably a cryptid, but the phasmid, of course, is more important. You never told me you've seen the phasmid. Oh, you don't want to hear about some old woman's ramblings. Of course I do, Lena. Ramblings? Nonsense. Your description of the phasmid is the most precise I've ever heard. But darling, I didn't even get the size of it right. You were a child, my dear. Really. It's extraordinary what you were able to describe. Now go on. Tell our friend about it. He's proven his interest in the field. Reflexively, the lieutenant read his, his familiar notebook. Well, it was summer. I was building a racing track out of sand on the beach near a tall stand of reeds. Quite a tall one. Many times my height, I remember. When, all of a sudden... Where was this and how old? Ah, I'm getting ahead of myself. I was five and a half in Betancourt in the suburbs. My grandmother had a summer home there. Betancourt got bombed in the war. It used to be quite near, circa 20 kilometers from here. What happened? The strangest moment of my life. I looked up and one of the reeds moved. Not like a plant, but like a living thing. It stood up and looked at me. Its body unfolded like some antique toy. I've never seen anything like it. I didn't know this can happen, so I reached my arm and touched the thing. It felt just like a stalk of reed, but it moved, swaying, towering above me. After a while, 20 seconds, a minute maybe, it left, went into the reeds. Did you follow? I tried, but I was only a child. There was mud and high water. I couldn't see it anymore. I was just standing there, knee-deep in mud, looking around me. Where did you go? Don't go. Come on. I ran back home to my grandmother and asked her if reeds could walk, and told her they were looking at me. <laughs> of course, she just laughed at me, but... I knew what I'd seen. For years, it was a story I told at parties when I wanted to impress boys. That sort of thing. Of course, most people just took it as a strange, amusing anecdote. So did I, honestly. But then I met Morel. We were on a date. Can you imagine? She tells me a story, and it's the most detailed report of the Insulindian phasmid I've ever heard. The sounds. She told me it hissed. Mm -hmm. So that's how they met. 
This is beyond significant for them. It did, yes. Like reeds in a gust of wind. The way it moved, the color, how some of its limbs were white, like marble. It matched perfectly with what I know from other accounts. It was amazing. Mm -hmm. If it weren't for Lena, I might have given up hope years ago. It's no exaggeration to say that she restored my faith in my profession. Cute. Where are you from, Morel? You guys were on a date? Our first, yes. Thank you so much. Thanks for the follow. Aww. The glance is tender, yes, but tempered by something else. A thought she can't express, even to him. Oh. Interesting. Its limbs are white. Not all of them. There is some white coloration reported, along with beige, where the camouflage ends. How big was it? It's hard to say how big things are when you're quite small yourself. To me, it seemed to be taller than I was then, but that's probably not the case. Kim, nicely. Tell me what you think of this. I thought it was a wonderful story, man. Okay, that was nice. But I don't believe it. A child left unattended on a warm day. Children make up stories and then end up believing them. I mean, I never saw anything like that as a kid. I think one time I saw something as an adult, but... Maybe you imagined it. How could she? Who imagines this? She didn't know about the phasmid. This is the main thing here. What makes it a confirmed sighting? She had no previous knowledge of the insect. True. That's true, yes. I'm almost certain neither my mother nor my grandmother knew of it. It was only when I started telling my story as a teenager that boys would tell me, Lena, you trying to tell us you saw the insul Indian fastmit out there in those reeds? Get out of here. <laughs> they just give me a cider and ruffle my hair and tell me to stop dreaming. But I saw it. Um, non-alcoholic cider, right? Were you a teenager? Okay, thank you for sharing. You're welcome, sweetie. I do appreciate the chance to relive it whenever I get one. It was just... such an impossibly sunshiny day. So warm. And she could get up and walk right into the reeds on her own. Into the mud. Anywhere. Hey, I'd like to hear about the cryptid on the tie you gave me. You know, to hell with it. Let's have more cryptids. Last time, I think you said, fuck it, didn't you? Of course, officers. Is there a particular cryptid you two are interested in learning about? Oh, is this pen? Is this one? Yes. It's the kind green ape. Half war story, half undiscovered species in the genus Homo. Mm -hmm. well, sorry. Yes, it was reported by soldiers in South Safra during the war. The kind green ape would visit bunkers during the night, healing wounded soldiers with its saliva. Really? Yes, it has amazing healing qualities. Some soldiers reported growing back limbs, regaining their sight. An undiscovered subspecies of man? Indeed, there is. It's our closest relative among the cryptids. Same taxonomic family, different genus. Which is to say, the kind green ape is a species with which we share a common ancestor, and that evolved parallel to our own. Just like your partners. I thought it was genus. Uh, isn't Kim the same species? The lieutenant looks at you, pleasantly surprised. Oh, no, I didn't mean to imply that Saolites are inferior to us in many ways. You are superior. For example, your yeah. earwax doesn't have a foul odor like ours does. 
A tremendous evolutionary advantage, I'm sure. But perhaps we've had enough speculative biology for today? <sighs> Is this bad encrypted? No. It's the encrypted. Okay, the encrypted? Oh, yes. Small silvery skull shines between your fingers. What is it? The eight-eyed teratorn, the largest flying avian ever discovered with a wingspan of 11.5 meters. It was thought to have gone extinct 3,500 years ago. Some even doubted the fossils were real. A mutation, they said. Until... I'm gonna be honest, I'm not really interested anymore. I'm talking about race and stuff. Fuck your imaginary little creatures. Mutation. All of evolution is a mutation. Until? Until it was sighted by renowned Gottwaldian explorer and naturalist Uwe Plattenkalk in 21. Mm -hmm. This renown seems a bit dubious. Your own catalogue comes up completely empty. But, of course, you are not all-knowing. Tell me. It happened on a botanical expedition into the vast and unexplored Wambau Canyon in southeast Ilmara. Dr. Plottenkalk got separated from his group during a sandstorm. Amra? The world's largest canyon system, sweetie. It's a barren waste east of the Erg Desert. An ancient riverbed completely dried up. What happened? Alone in the blasted desert heat, the doctor wandered eastward, where man hasn't stepped foot in over a thousand years since the fall of Pericarnassus. Uh -huh. He was lost without any navigation equipment and desperately low on water. After a day or two, he noticed a bird high in the noon sky. A great black bird, it seemed gargantuan. So, both your sightings were in, like, extreme heat. Have you thought about that? Every now and then, the bird would dive down to feed on an animal carcass somewhere on the horizon. But by the time Uva got there, the Teratorn had taken off already, and the carcass was picked clean. This happened many times. It followed him? More like he followed it. A bird that big has many liters of blood in it, and he was dying of thirst. For many days, Dr. Plottenkalk followed the Teratorn until they reached a great canyon wall, where the bird finally landed to rest. Thank you so much. Thanks for the follow. The professor climbed up there with a rock in his hand. He found the bird sleeping with its head tucked under its wing, a great black pile of feathers on the perch. So he approached, slowly squeezing the rock in his fist. Watch out. Then the Teratorn suddenly looked at him. He could see it had eight eyes, four on either side of its skull, like a spider. And the man couldn't move. He was paralyzed frozen into place with the rock in his hand. Whatever he did, he could not get closer to the bird. And spiders have three eyes on each side, then like two up the top in the middle. Why? The bird was controlling his mind. Oh. It kept him from approaching. He could step back. Every time he stepped forward, paralysis. Uva spent three days trying until the bird flew away. Three days. So, how did he survive? The eight-eyed Teratorn was indifferent to him, as long as he didn't get closer than two steps. It even let him feed on some carcasses up there, and the two unfertilized eggs it left behind. Hmm. No way. Yes way, sweetie. Cryptozoologists have been tracing it ever since. But Wamrao is vast, mysterious, 
and holds many secrets. Okay. Modern radar telemetry shows great promise. We will confirm this one by the end of the decade, latest. All right. This one I like. Not only does it have eight eyes and is a living fossil and the largest bird ever to live, it also does mind control. Kim. He's sincere. He likes the audacity of it. It's true. Uh, if just a lot to lie about. Um. So that was the last anyone saw. Sadly, yes. But there are numerous reports of eight-eyed bird skulls from Il Mara. And then there's the striking resemblance to the Periconassian Imperial Eagle. An ancient heraldic symbol that is hard to pass off as coincidence. The Imperial Eagle, too, had eight eyes. Really? Very, very hard. This one's very famous. Everyone knows it. Okay. People will be looking at that tie on you and thinking, that man is into cryptids. Oh. So, what else do you want to know? I just can't get enough of these cryptids. I'm glad you like them. But I'm not really one to tell you about all of them. You should ask my husband if you get the chance. He's the real expert. Oh, it's cool. <gasps> it's sick. I don't like cryptids though, everyone. Um, you. Very generous of you to help us out, officer. I'm sure glad to be back from that little excursion. I mean, officers. Oh. If I ever get to murder someone, I'm gonna pick you, even over Meathead. God. Everyone's here for karaoke. <laughs> hey guys. Again? I can't believe this shit. He might be wearing a disguise. <sighs> There's something strange about this guy. You know what it is. It's like the two of you know each other. Just ask him. Okay, ma'am. Do you know me? Oh, I definitely know you from somewhere. Yeah? Another life. Don't say that. From another life? Yes, from another life. A different life. Maybe the life of a police officer belonging to the ranks of the... To what station do you think you would belong in this alternate and totally fictional reality? I'm the 41st, right? Okay, okay. That's plausible. That's entirely plausible. Now we're really getting somewhere. Okay. Somewhere good. Cool shades. Are you in disguise? Yes, it's a hobby of mine. As if waiting for some kind of reaction or response. Something to click. It's not happening though. Who is this guy? Let's talk more about that hypothetical station 41. Okay. No, he says, oh, the hypothetical 41. Yeah, let's fantasize about that. I'm not busy, you're not busy, let's just play around. Okay. What would our relationship be in this alternate universe? Let's be crazy. Let's say you and I are partners. How's that for a thought experiment? Do you mean... Like... Kim's way cooler. I'm sure he's fucking flattered, but Kim is not part of his thought experiment. In this one, we are partners. The lieutenant is silent. What do you mean partners? No, because in this thought experiment, we are police officers okay. in a police station. We don't do crimes. We're not crime bros. That's not what I meant. Come on, stop it. Okay, do you have a crime to solve? Oh, no, no, no. 
You see, I enjoy watching other better cops solve crimes. And let me tell you, it's been quite a privilege seeing you work. You're welcome. This isn't helping. I don't want to think... I shouldn't do karaoke in front of these two. They're gonna go back and snitch to my boss. Who else is in the imaginary police station? You're not going to believe this, but... Police officers. Really? Yes, sir. Solving crimes, locking up bad guys, and... And get this, and not getting that drink on at 2 o'clock. Really? Just some regular boring motherfuckers in suits and uniforms. Nothing spectacularly extravagant like you, the far out son of Lung. Who? Oh, it's you, you eccentric genius. I mean, with your unorthodox approach to police work, it has to be you. Can you relax with the jealousy? Okay. You want to tell me more about him? Or how? Not even a little bit. No? It's an urban myth. About an officer who is so far undercover, he can't remember who he is. As I said, just an urban myth. Oh. You are not the son of Lang. I think I am, Kim. He's trying to protect you from further rough handling, dished out by the sunglassed man. Okay. No, I just can't imagine it anymore. <sighs> Neither can I, partner. Neither can I. Mm. It's a mere second, but it feels like you saw something. A gram of compassion in that sadness. Okay, the man with the sunglasses and his hypothetical Station 41. Weird, right? Um, kind of weird. There's something missing here. Something you can't put our finger on. You know what? Just ask him. I know it sounds crazy, and you'll probably get laughed at, but still... Okay, I'll just ask it. Yes, just cross it off the list. Okay. It's probably not true, though. Don't think he'll bully me. Hey there, partner. Again? I can't believe this shit. Are we from the same police station? I'm going to say no, just to see what you'll say to that. What'd you say? I'm going to say okay. Okay. Mm hmm Jean, he said okay. Give it a rest. Okay. I was clearly wrong. He is a firefighter, male nurse, animal control agent. Something of that kind. Not a cop. Go on with your cop work. Don't let me stop you again. Okay, well, if you're not a cop, I am. I have some questions. About what? You don't look like a cop. You know what you look like. I don't know. You tell me. I don't know. A sad stack of shit next to someone far more proficient. True. Will you answer my questions? No. Okay, well, if you're not a cop, don't you have to? No, he doesn't. Oh, fuck. Really? <laughs> if I wasn't clinically depressed, I'd burst out laughing. But I'm gonna go with no right now. Hey. We shouldn't kick each other when we're both down. If you don't want to answer questions, maybe you want to hear me say things. Actually, I don't want to hear you say things. Well, bad luck. Come on, Jean. Okay, say things. I want to hear you say things. Yep. Hear that? He wants you to say things. Say one. I'm gonna say. Suddenly, out of nowhere, case related things start popping up in your head. I'm doing this investigation, and it turns out he was shot and hanged. You think he was hanged as a cover up? To hide the shooting? Um. No, who are you? <laughs> I don't know. Why are you? Uh. Oh my god, there's more. Uh, you want something more? What is it? Let's talk about the hanged man. Okay, why not? Let's do the old thing over again. We are not wasting time. <laughs> there is no time. It's not true when we're talking, time passes. I'm doing this investigation. A man is hanged. So, do you know who hanged him? Not yet. Yeah, I can see that. Why am I telling you this? I don't know. 
Why are you? Oh, dude. Oh my god, there's more. <sighs> you want something more? What is it? Enjoy the karaoke, motherfucker. I'm singing. I'm gonna go outside, check this balcony as part of my police work. And I'm coming back and I'm dragging this whole joint down with me. We're gonna spiral. All of us. I don't have any in logic. <laughs> hmm. I think I want perception. Okay. Right. Hello? I can't reach her. Pain threshold? Do you get health? No, that's not good. <laughs> I'm gonna seek out and perversely revel in pain. That's not me, I'm, I'm capable and tough. I'm put together. I might put another one in the health one though. But I keep missing that. Um, this way's the balcony, right? Oh. Just an ordinary wall. Fuck. Nothing to see here. Lockpick now? <gasps> Get down here. You. John Marie, you found me. It feels like a Friday. He seems to be in a good mood tonight. Really? I think it's Wednesday. Cleaning lady let us in. Beautiful. Smiling as he looks at you, something sparkles in his eyes. So tell me, are you here to make things right again? That's what I'm aiming for. Beautiful. A nearby street lamp cast shadows on his chin, drawing out the slender cheekbones. I have some good news for you. My Sunday friend is visiting me tonight. I told him about you and he'd like to say hello. Step in. Uh -oh. He's already waiting. Why would I want to meet your friend? Trust me. You do. Kim, is your gun loaded? Is it Friday? Yeah, it does feel like the end of the week. Yeah. Such gentle weather. Even the rain feels nice. I want to talk to you first, okay? That's nice, but I don't have anything to tell you. It's my friend you're looking for, not me. He takes another drag of his unfiltered cigarette and looks around. It's getting dark and the neighboring windows have lit up one by one. Downstairs, a cat crosses the yard, disappearing into the bush. Besides, I've got to run. Hmm? Are you a cat? He's going to leave you alone again. <laughs> That's sad. Something tells you you're never going to talk to an individual this cool or mysterious ever again. I think he's a shapeshifter. He kind of acts like a cat. Where are you going? To the city. It's a beautiful night. Wow. Oh. 
Can you promise we'll talk again? Something flutters in the corner of the lieutenant's mouth as you're saying those words. Is it a smile or a grimace? We'll talk. Just not tonight. Take care, alright? What? Gim? There's something different about him. Different, of course. Uh, so mysterious. Something so mysterious about the way he talks. Why are you laughing? It's very mysterious. Very. But... He's barely holding it together. It's all he can do to keep from bursting out in laughter. Why? Come on, detective. Hold Let's on. Go. We've got a potential witness to interview. His Sunday friend, remember? Kim? I'm not gay. Unless you are. Old photo of the same apartment. Expensive men's perfume. Ooh. I am a party dragon. But Kim likes when I look like a cop. Oh. <laughs> okay. I just want to see. Okay. That's not gonna... Policeman? The ashtray. Dishes. Flyers for underground parties. Dates for open lectures. Exquisite canopy bed. Buckets of paints. I feel like I shouldn't put that on. Hello, Sunday. Officers of the Revachol Citizens Militia. Business casual moves his cufflinks. His hands are clean and well manicured. This is a man who knows the importance of appearances. Oh, not many people have basements in, what is it, California? My name is Charles Vildrouin, and I am an official with the coalition government. I work for the Institute of Price Stability on assignment from Sur La Quai. Am I in trouble? Yep. I heard you talking to my friend outside. Very good. Super. I am here to assist you in any way possible. Ask me about the hanging. I don't work with the coalition. No, first ask an innocuous personal question to get the interview off on the right foot. Really? Huh? We'll get to that. Right after you tell me the story behind this black smart hat. I got it from the head of the Samaran delegation on my trip to Lomantang. It's made from a special charcoal colored bamboo. It's an emblem of the formal normalization of our diplomatic relations. Mm. He's alluding to the decade long war of independence while deftly brushing aside the complex causes behind the conflict. That's really all I can tell you about it. Formed a little rooftop with his fingers. Cold air sweeps in from the balcony. The lieutenant takes out his notebook and nods to you to proceed. Okay. Did you actually witness the lynching? I'm sorry to say I did, officer. Okay, start from the beginning if you don't mind. Officer, it's very difficult to describe what I saw that night. It was so surreal to me, like in a play. He holds out his hands and blossoms his fingers. Like a drama teacher setting the scene. Mm -hmm. 
What do you mean, like in a play? It was just so strange. I could barely comprehend what was happening. Mm -hmm. I was on the balcony when it happened, getting some fresh air. I remember that first they came in, carrying what looked like a body. And then I saw all the surrounding windows go dead, one by one. That's when I understood. I should not be seeing this. Sounds like the victim was unconscious, or at least incapacitated. Interesting. How many of them? I couldn't tell you exactly. Less than ten. Maybe eight? The lieutenant sends you a sharp look at the mention of that number. <laughs> Are any of them huge? That's a giant you're describing. Yeah. No, they were all quite human. As far as I could tell. What happened next? I went back inside. Were you able to see anything from inside? Officer, the yard was pitch black. There was nothing to see, but I could still hear their voices. They were threatening to kill that poor man. Okay, were they men, women? All men, I presume. But again, I couldn't see very clearly. Hmm. But we are fairly certain the lady driver was present. Are you sure at least one of them wasn't a woman? It's possible, officer. But I cannot say for certain. It was very dark, you must remember. What ethnicity? I believe they were mostly white, though I believe I saw two Aeropagites among them. And I am quite certain that one spoke with a messy accent. What happened next? Well, that's the strangest part, officer. Nothing happened. It was oddly quiet for a public lynching. What do you mean? Eventually, their shouts died down, and that was all. There were no gunshots, no celebratory shouts, no anything. It does seem strange. I'm afraid I don't have anything else to add. About what time was all this happening, approximately? All I can say is that it was late. So let me get this straight. You didn't actually witness the hanging, did you? No, I didn't see the corpse until the following day. Hey, those are all my questions. Of course. Anything I can do to assist the RCA. What are you doing in Montanez? The coalition is only looking out for the price stability. Inflation is a killer. Like a heart disease blocking the normal circulation of the economy. It must be controlled. Okay. The economy impacts the entire international community, which is why it requires international oversight. But what are you doing here in this apartment? Ah, uh, well, I'm renovating it. It is an interesting project. The building used to be a 12-story skyscraper before the cannons took the top four stories off. This, of course, happened when the coalition forces landed here. You could say I'm undoing some of the material damage the international community caused when we arrived here. You're some kind of bureaucrat? Yes. As I said before, I am a commissioner from sur la -Cle, working for the Institute of Price Stability. This is one of the main projects of the Moral Inter. Wait, there isn't actually an Institute of Price Stability, is there? Or maybe there is. God, it's impossible to understand whether someone from the Moral Inter is joking or not. Really? Um, what's the international community? La communauté internationale is what Rivacholians colloquially call the coalition. In other words, the nations that stopped the disaster of the revolution. So I call the coalition. Your employer, technically speaking. Oh. The governing authority of Rivachol. The RCM is but one part of this provisional administration. Is the price stability? It is the most important thing. Ah, close everything up. It's the central goal of any sound monetary policy. Maintaining the price stability is essential to maintaining high levels of economic activity, which is essential for maintaining high levels of employment, mm -hmm. which is essential for maintaining the social stability. Mm -hmm. Basically, it makes sure the price of bread doesn't change. Thanks, Kim. Precisément. Too much inflation, bread becomes too expensive. 
too much deflation, it becomes too cheap for bakers to print. Mm -hmm. That's why the Institute of Price Stability works to keep inflation just below 2%. Of what? But not too far below, no. Too below is also bad. Below, but close to 2%. But what, 2% of what? The coalition believes in the importance of informing the public about the benefits of the price stability. Transparency is one of our principles. Would you like an informational pamphlet? Yeah. A sound monetary policy is essential for addressing uncertainty. Stability is the raison d'être of the moral inter. It's the reason why I identify as a moralist. But oh, I don't have my leaflets on me today. Ugh. That's too bad. You can always call our information line. Making information available is part of the moral intern's commitment to transparency. Why are you out of leaflets? Hmm? Okay, I want to know more. It's the International Organization for Moralists. Hence, Moralist International. The Institute of Price Stability is just one of its many mind babies, as is the coalition. Kim, you were a moralist, right? <laughs> that doesn't seem too bad, Kim. There are more nefarious powers to work for than the moral intern. Yeah. Are you a moralist? But of course. Am I a moralist? Well, do you value freedom? Do you believe in a normal, stable world governed by democratic values? But not actually democracy. Lieutenant, are you a moralist? Mm. Me? I, uh, um... You've managed to catch the lieutenant of guard, but only for a moment. I'm a lieutenant of the RCM. Dedicated to maintaining law and order in Ravashot. Not an answer? A very moralist answer. Oh. The lieutenant is practiced in the art of putting on a show for one's superiors. Martinez doesn't seem very normal or stable. Martinez? No. Martinez is something else. And the rest of Ravashol? Ravashol is generally difficult. It's led by an interim government, which means it hasn't yet achieved full democracy. Yep. But they are working towards it. You're all doing very well here, relatively speaking. Is moralism picking none of the above? Because I do do that every time. Is this option D usually the most reasonable answer? No, it's more like avoiding um, choosing a side answer. I mean, the others are kind of extreme. Sounds like you're a moralist indeed, my friend. Welcome. Okay. Moralism is all about compromise and achieving the achievable. It's pragmatic, realistic, and level-headed. An ideology for doers. Are you a doer, my friend? It looks uh, to me like you are. Do not recruit me. You don't even have a fucking leaflet. Now, enough of this delightful political interlude. Okay. Was there anything else you wanted to ask? Ah, uh, sur la clé. What's there to say? Sur la clé is a modern, urbanized country that measures very high on the human development and freedom index. Mm. Mostly, though, it's known as the executive heart of EPIF. Okay. Moreover, it is a great sponsor of less emerged countries. Revachal is only one of its many darlings whose progress it supports and cherishes. Okay. Darling, that can't be an official designation. What makes Revachal your darling? Because a great percentage of Revachal's culture hails from sur la clé. Its language, its people, mm. its cuisine even. Or at least in the downtown La Delta area. Okay. Jamrock and other parts of the international zone have been mercifully spared of Sir Clay's love for meatballs and mashed potatoes. Oh, mashed potatoes. Okay, let's talk about something else. Whatever you wish, officer. Tell me about your friend. Ah, my friend. 
My friend is a good young man. His family immigrated here from Kedera, and life has not been easy for him. But he understands the importance of education. He has taken his future into his own hands, and that's all that matters. Oh. So you're not fucking. Are you? I mean, you're called his Sunday friend. What's Kedra? Kedra is a candidate member of APIS. But, between you and me, their potential membership is a more contentious issue. Why? That it's never going to happen. They enter negotiations in 21, and it's been pending ever since. You actually didn't tell me anything about Kedra. It's wild. It's also known for its mandarin trees and dust storms from Supram Wind. I love mandarins, dude. Kedra's an emerging market, but it still has a long way to go. Maybe that's why my friend's menage decided to emigrate. I'm asking about the place, not its fucking value. How'd you become friends? How did any of us become friends? Bad things happening on the insulin Peninsula? Oil platforms ablaze in the night? Civil wars lasting for years? Finally, the international community is forced to step in. Uh, I've never made a friend like that. Au contraire. It's how millions of people end up where they are. Meeting the people they meet. It's how I came here, and my friend. Okay, Professor. You still haven't told me who he is. Sorry. Who? Your friend. But I told you, officer. He's a bright young man here to pursue his education. Education is the foundation of our future, especially the arts. It is a cornerstone of our civilization. All right, what's his name? Officer, you have to understand. I can't give you his personal information. I'm sure you have your own methods and databases, right? Please don't put me in this situation. All you can tell me is that he's here to study. He's deeply enmeshed in the study of the fine arts, yes. Which arts? He's a truly free spirit. He likes all the arts. Perhaps graphic design, printmaking, who knows? The world is open wide for a talented youth like him. What are you doing in his apartment? I'm just enjoying the view. What the fuck? It's dark outside. Listen. The baby is crying in the neighboring apartment. Someone's baby's crying. No, listen. The Insulindian Day. What about it? This place used to be a luxury accommodation before the revolution. Apartments, of course, were much bigger then. A few walls have been added here and there, leaving some of the tenants without a private bathroom or a kitchen. Mm -hmm. But the million real view stays. You can't take that away. Knocks on the balcony door, his face mirrored in the darkened glass. I was asking about your friend. My friend comes and goes. I'm sure you've seen him around. He's a busy bee. A busy bee? What an odd choice of words. I have something else in mind. I'm all ears, officer. Is that really? A moment, officer. Mm? Do you have everything you need from me? I'm afraid we won't have the chance to speak again once we leave. Why? It's against diplomatic best practices for an official in my position to be discussing murders with local militiamen. And I'm pressed for time. After you leave, I should be leaving as well. Okay, I'm done. Of course. I'm glad I could help. The hell? What a loser. Kim, that guy sucks. Isn't it supposed to be black? Insensitive <laughs> bachelor body vibes. Yeah. Okay. Let's go. Hmm. 
Welcome back, Shaggy. Oh god. When did you leave? I think you've missed a lot. I mean... A lot of today has just been world building. I've asked to do karaoke. Four hours, okay. Um... You haven't missed that much. Talk to a lot of people. Oh. Did you find that body with us? Working class woman. My comrade. You found her missing husband. He is dead. Oh, the dice! Are you also missing in stuff with... <laughs> and, oh no. Insufferably bureaucratic. Pretty sure he was paying for prostitution. Kim. Are we Sunday friends? I hope she's open. It's 10 o'clock. Ma'am? I'm here for my dice. Oh, you are. Hey. Oh, it's you again. Are you looking for a die? I came to pick him up. Very good. That will be seven real for one custom die. Cursed. Here's the cursed die you ordered. D Did her voice do something? The phrases read, God is indifferent, take all, lose all, 50-50, nothing happens, and pale. What is this? It's a die. Try rolling it. Okay. You throw the ball on the floor, and it ends with one of the phrases facing upwards, God is indifferent. No, I haven't talked to her yet. She wasn't outside the bookstore, but I'm going to. Good. Now roll again, detective. It lands on exactly the same result. God is indifferent. It declares again. It's a sphere pretending to be a six-sided die. Each row will end with one of the phrases facing up. The die originates in Ilmara, where it was used for clerumancy. Except I've weighted the die. When you try rolling it, you realize that each time it gets you exactly the same result. God is indifferent. This is our curse. Thanks. Good luck, officer. Can I have another one? I'm sorry. <gasps> I'm a bit overloaded just now, so I can only produce one die per you customer. You bitch. You didn't tell me. Aside from getting naked, you're not sure what else to do. The building holds no more answers for you. I didn't get naked. I don't know what that's talking about. Kim? Look at the map tab and journal to see which white checks have opened. Really? From rolling? Okay. Fuck, I needed that.
No, you should judge judge the guy, the bureaucrat. He sucked ass. In a bad way. I think it's karaoke time. Judgment activate. Okay, if this takes my moral, it might kill me. God. Can I help you? I need to sing karaoke now. No, you don't. It's not happening. And I need to. He tries not to look at you. It's dangerous to acknowledge the karaoke man. This is my way of apologizing. Please let me say I'm sorry. By causing more trouble, I think we're... Trouble? Why do you even have the PA system if no one's going to use it? It's for the... It's for no one. It's a prop. I'm not letting anyone use it after the great karaoke catastrophe of 44. What happened? A lot of people got killed what? because some arsehole wanted to sing karaoke. What? I promise that won't happen. I'm a cop. I know it's used. Okay, yes. It's for some clients. <laughs> I... I'm a client. I've paid my bills, and I have the right to use the karaoke machine. Ha. Well, we don't have any tapes. They all got stolen. No worries. I have one. The man in the vest and the violet shirt stares at the tape you've just given him. Thanks, God. He begins to frown. I'll get on the stage. Oh, fine, fine. Climb on that stage and do your thing. Just get out of my hair. Okay. I'll okay. plug it in for you. Damn this karaoke machine. Everyone? I'm having it uninstalled, he mumbles to himself. Oh yeah, time to do the damage. Okay. Listen up, everyone. Kim. Oh, I belong here, I know. The stage is all set up for your performance. Feels silent. You can hear the pellets creak under your feet. You feel a little dizzy, a little unsteady suddenly. Oh, I'm okay. So, uh, are you ready for your thing now? Let me know when I should turn on the karaoke carousel. Look around the room. No, that might give me a debuff. The bar is full and buzzing with chatter. Okay. No one is paying you any attention, but still you feel your knees turn to noodles. Okay. Okay, now a couple is looking at you. Even worse. That's okay. They are going to hate you. Testing. Hi, Thad. Immediately, a loud feedback noise oh, startles the room. <laughs> you feel like an amateur. How are you supposed to hold the mic? Should you just sing to it? Where should you stand? If you hold it like down low, that'd be cool. Not up high, but it's confident. Hands. Where do you put your hands? One low and then the other. Oh, fuck. Ah. Uh, look, Cam. I'm singing. I can see that. The air is thick with anticipation. Someone dims the lights as the music starts. A lump's in your throat suddenly. Tiny church there 
the smallest church in Sansa. Thou it once was larger. How the real may rest there. Down through the mist there. Towards the seven sisters. Towards the pale cliffs there. I would often stay there in the tiny yard there. I have been so glad here looking forward to the past here. But now you are all alone. None of this matters. Thank you, Limbic System. Do you hear that? It's the most pathetic applause in the world, Harry. Made of pity. No one liked you. No, Kim would have. <laughs> I'm up here singing my fucking heart out. And it's not good enough? You hear, or think you hear, uncomfortable shifting around. A bit of laughter, maybe. No one's saying anything. Um, I'm gonna unplug the mic now. Okay? No, I'm sorry that I'm not fucking perfect. Okay, but at least I'm vulnerable. You motherfuckers. I gave it my best. Okay, and what can any of you say? Sitting there in fucking silence. Someone walks out of the room by the front door. Yeah. Some woman. Is it because of you? Fine. Good. I sang about how I feel. You're all scum. That's it. I'm unplugging it. Okay, good. Good. That's it. You're unpowered. Good. Let's go, officer. <laughs> These people wouldn't know a good performance if it beat them in the ass. Did you like it, Kim? Detective Dubois, it was downright tragic. Now, let's go. Thank you. I mean it, he thinks. To him, being a cop in the RCM was truly expressed in that performance. Drop that mic. I'm gonna keep that. I'm gonna try and hear the proper thing though. But that's the canon one. Um, here, right? If you can't sing, don't even bother trying. But it's karaoke. Okay. The stage is all set up for your performance. Feels silent. You can hear the pellets creak under your feet. That's what I'm saying. They don't even have the bravery, the guts to get up here. You feel a little dizzy, a little unsteady suddenly. I'm fine. So, uh, are you ready for your thing now? 42. Let me know when I should turn on the karaoke carousel. The air oh, okay, is thick go. with anticipation. Let's go. Someone dims the lights as the music starts. Okay, 
Here we go. I would often go there. To the tiny church there. The smallest church in San San. Though it once was larger. How the real may rest there. Down through the mist there. Toward the Seven Sisters. Toward those pale cliffs there. I would often stay there. In their tiny yard there. I have been so glad here. Looking forward to the past here. But now... You are all alone. None of this matters. No, none of this matters. At all. Thank you, Ancient Reptilian Brain. A lazy applause fills the room. You feel your hands shake as a realist of your body returns Thank you. to you. Thank you. I'd like to dedicate this song to my partner, Kim. The lieutenant doesn't say anything, but gives you a quick smile before turning away. In a business respectful part, business partner kind of co uh, colleague way. He's incapable of blushing, <gasps> but if he weren't, he'd blush. And a little bit of a gay way. Good, good. Are we ready? I want to unplug the microphone now. Last words? Let's go. Fuck, I wish I could make that cannon. Oh, what a cool guy that guy was. That's not me, though. Damn it. Rewind. Oh, it's the one above this, right? Kim, I know you were gonna blush, okay? It's okay. Um. Maybe another in endurance to get my health pull up. Yeah. What do you think of my song? Oh, hello, sweetie. So nice to see you again. All right, we're gonna pretend it didn't happen. Sure, got. Wow. Just wow. I, I hope you really enjoyed yourself up there. Had a cathartic experience. Because for the rest of us, yeah, that really sucked. I'm gonna make you suck this. It's okay. safe to say this is about your karaoke performance. Fuck you, God. Good for you. I'm not letting anyone up there again, ever. 
fine. Now, what did you want? Whatever. What was that? Who's the she? And why do you feel so bad suddenly? Guys, I found a new bird, but I'm gonna pawn it. Okay, enjoy your night. Oh, also, I'm staying somewhere else. Rent free. All right. Enjoy your sad life, God. Hi, Chief. Good morning. Um, let's do one more thing. One more. What's well, bedtime in the game? Alright, let me use the bathroom really quick. I'll see if there's anything we have to do before bed. Okay, 11 seconds. Are we fast? Chat stream ruined, sorry. How was the stream? I don't know. Shame it back, sorry about that. Let's see. Oh, can I open this? Okay, 11 seconds, I'll be fast. Maybe I should try that line on my Sunday friend. Probably shouldn't. steel door with a prominent dimple lock. It's painted blue. The door does not budge. Posture, thank you. Okay. Mm. We've been doing a day... a day. A day. <laughs> a... What broke me finally? I don't know. Oh, right. Um. Okay. Return to morale. I did, dude. He told me. Hold on. Enjoy your day, Chief. Are you back on Sunday? Okay, morale. 
nothing like the gratitude of a good woman. Now then, what can I do for you? He tries to play it cool, remain professorial, but inside, this man is itching for some news on those traps. I checked them. Good. Okay. And? Any conclusions today on the main case? Um... No. I mean, I'm refusing to work for Evra. Hopefully I don't have to. But I talked with Joyce. And she gave us information on the tattoos. And now we know that the marks are on in the strike. So I can talk to them. But I think she told me not to. Um, let me check my notes after this. One of them was empty. Completely empty? Yes. No locusts? No phasmid either? No. That's not ideal, but... Yeah. It just means the Insulindian phasmid is even more clever than we thought. You did a hijack redeem? I didn't see it then. Thank you. How much water do you drink per hydrate redeem in milliliters? I have no idea. 50? How much is that? I'm trying to picture my measuring cup. But I use cups, not milliliters. A gulp. Yeah, sometimes do. Of course, more clever. You're dealing with a subject near and dear to their hearts. It might behove you to tread lightly. Oh. Yes. The Phantasmodea picked off the locust and escaped. This is good news. Though we'll have to reconsider the design of the traps. Make them more secure. 20 mils? Maybe. Another trip to the reeds. I'm not talking to you, Gary. Um. Are you sure you've exhausted all the alternative explanations? Of course we have. Okay. Fuck, relax. Wait, Morel. He may have a point. We have an obligation to rule out other hypotheses. Yeah, Morel. You're right, dear. It's a fair point. But what other explanation could there be? 20 milliliters is four teaspoons. I'd say 50 mils then. I don't know what a teaspoon of water is. Pardon me. This is a big deal for us. You've helped us twice now. And brought some great news too. My gratitude and the gratitude of the Societe Cryptozoologique de Ravachol is yours. Yeah. Yeah, that's better, Morel. Heartfelt gratitude. But does it feel like closure? What really happened? Thank you, it's an honor. We should probably return to our main investigation here. This has been refreshing, but... You're right, I have done no progress today. Helping cryptozoologists isn't really a priority for our organization, is it? The lieutenant looks out the window, impatiently. Ooh. Consider the way the empty trap was disturbed, as though shaken. Most likely the hands of a young person, hands small enough to fit inside the trap, too. You should ask the red-headed boy, Kuno. Stolen locusts? A little hooligan. But what would a child want with bags? 
Oh. Oh, my dear Morel. You've been an old man for too long. Kids love to torment insects almost as much as they love to torment old folks. Oh. I'll talk to them. Delinquents. My favorite. Oh, you've been such a dear to us. Please, let us know whatever you turn up. I have a feeling we're getting so close. Well, I see you've got all the help you need. I'll see you tonight at my place. Let's play suzerainty, but no more field trips for me. After this is your last chance to talk to Gary. Really, Gary? We're getting somewhere here. I I'd love to play suzerainty, but... Lena, I'm sorry, but you're not getting anywhere. It was some kids. I know the little mutants around here. Leave anything out in the open and they'll steal it. Even if it's bugs. Mutants? Morel, it's been fun. Really. But I need a bath and I have deliveries to handle. When this tea is done, I gotta run. They're like undereducated kids, dude. No, no. No need to apologize, Geary. You'd be more than helpful. We'll have to take a rain check on that game of Sue's rain tea today, though. We're gonna follow this through. Gary is such an easy word to say Australian. It's Gary. It's Geary. Okay. Listen, Gary. Always a pleasure to see an officer of the law. I mean... Officers. Oh my god, if I ever see you again around these parts. Ask Kuno. I don't think he's awake right now, right? It's um like eleven. At fifteen mil per redeem, it will only cost ninety six thousand channel points to have a Jace. Whoa! That'll kill me. Wait, but lots of people here have 96,000, I think. Kuno! Kuno's like Kuno's dad? Kuno doesn't give a fuck about anything! I'm sorry to hear that, Kuno. Do you know anything about missing locusts? No, Kuno doesn't give a fuck about bugs. Really? So he knows locusts are bugs. Oh my god, I told you that shit is lame! Shut up, see. Now they're gonna take you to lame prison! She sounds like she's about to cry, out of disappointment at Kuno's newfound lameness. What's this about? Deny everything, Kuno! You need to lawyer up! You're too KOA from my death. Kuno's not gonna say anything without his lawyer present. There's definitely something going on here. Maybe he's got them stashed somewhere nearby, in some hidden place. There's a suspicious shack in the eastern corner of the yard. Okay. Kuno doesn't fucking care. This is locked though. Oh, can I get in now? Oh. An inconspicuous pile of the roofing material, Etonite. Because there's a secret door hidden behind the panels of Etonite. That's why they're too orderly. There it is. You see a shabby little door. Sorry, Kuno. What is this, Dan? A tool shed? Let's investigate. Oh. Oh my god. Some. Um, okay. Rolling with locusts. All around you, the hisses and chirps of locusts fill the musky air. The earthen floor of the shack has been shaped into mounds of mud dotted with little holes for windows. Well, detective, it appears you've solved the case of the locusts. 
for the missing locust case, which is a subcase of the imaginary insect <laughs> case. So at least that's going well. Ah, uh, precisely. Yes. I feel we are nearing a real breakthrough. You think the phasmid could be nearby? If anything, the presence of the locust points to the opposite. True. The phasmid did not take the bait from the traps. It was Kuno. True. The phasmid doesn't exist. But what do I know? Let's talk to Kuno. I'll let you handle the Kuno side of things. You are doing just fine. I don't know if that's true. Silver plate with traces of bone yellow powder. Be still, my beating heart. It's amphetamine. Sweet amphetamine. Is Kuno the phasmid? Good night, JP. The lieutenant isn't studying the powder in the mirror. He's studying you. Oh, I'm not even looking at it. I don't even know what it is. There's a good vague way to ask where he stands on drug use. Professionally, I mean. Someone has taken narcotics here. Perhaps the police should interfere. Perhaps not. <gasps> this is below our pay grade, detective. However... See that ladder there? It's probably another way into the industrial harbor, no? The secret path the local kids use. Well, you know what? I got to knock out Meathead, so I'm glad. I'm glad. Nice. Stealing from him. Right. Thanks, JP. Thank you so much. Good night. Restoration pillars. It's always going to collapse. trainer for racism actually i did listen to his whole racist speech then i 360'd him okay hen and the locust thing go back to my room then we'll probably end I don't know how to get up here either. Maybe it's the door in the kitchen. No scope. Oh, talk to Kuno, right. Do you go to bed, Kuno? Kuno's like Kuno's dad. Kuno doesn't give a fuck about anything. I know you took the locusts. Yeah. Kuro took the books. So what? So it wasn't the phasmid. A wave of disappointment washes over you. You said you don't give a fuck about bugs, then you go and build a whole bug town? It's not bug town. It's the city of locusts. Locusts aren't just bug shit. They come out of the sky like a fucking shadow. Shit descends. That's lame, Kuno. You stop. It's like their fucking night. Local city. Night city. City of rage. The girl forces herself to watch again. The corners of her eyes twitching from discomfort. I don't want to drive them against one another. Like... Dad. What are you, some kind of artist? Maybe I am. 
Did he just say I? <gasps> Kuno usually calls Kuno Kuno. You should listen to your friend, Kuno. That's lame as hell. Oh, Kuno! It's so lame, even the pig knows it's lame. Please stop! Yo, fuck you, see? Kuno can be what Kuno wants to be. Kuno's his own man. Kuno's free. Aww. Kuno made himself into Kuno. Kuno can make himself into anything. Kuno can make himself into a pig if he wants. Kuno can make himself into a f Kuno doesn't give a shit. True. Don't make yourself into a pig, Kuno. You'll have to take me away. <laughs> In it, you hear snow melting, dripping from the eaves. Someone closing a window. So that's what this is about. Without a word, she disappears entirely behind the fence. For once, the boy is lost for words. He turns completely red now, with splotches of white beginning to appear across his face. I need you to stop taking the locusts, Kuno. I don't give a shit. I don't need the locusts anyway. Shit is all lame now. She was right. The girl's face appears again, above the fence, just long enough to make eye contact with Kuno. Look, I have to ask, what does the city of locusts mean? It don't mean anything. It's shit. Kuno just likes to focus. Kuno likes to concentrate on shit. Build shit when he's zipping hard. Fuck. Pig, you really shouldn't have fucked with Kuno City. Now it's all fucking lame. It's true. So the hooks on you, Vod? Yeah. I narrated the whole thing. It's kind of fun though. We also did coffee talk. I read the whole thing. I like it. But yeah, the narration is much better than me reading everything. It's gonna happen to the locusts. Kudo's gonna let the fucking locusts die. Okay. Well, I better be off. The fuck are they trying to catch anyway? With the traps? The insulin Indian phasmid. Huh. Always sort of died. It gets hoarse by the end, but... Oh. He recognizes the name. You know the insulin Indian phasmid? Bitches think Kuno doesn't know shit. The fuck out of here. Kuno's tired of this shit. There's silence between the two children. They're not saying anything to each other nor looking in each other's direction. What have we done? I'll die before I squeal, pig! What are those strange words you use? I come from the woods, Kutsabitsu! You don't want to go there with me! You don't want to see what I've seen! Don't be traumatizing here! Get the fuck out of here! I'm not. I'm just talking. <laughs> It's kind of traumatic talking with me. Okay, tell these guys. <laughs> I'm supposed to solve a murder. Hello. Hello, officer. I think I almost have it. A new trap design, that is. I know you're skeptical. But I have a good feeling about this. Okay, um, Kuno's gonna stop stealing the insects. So it was just a child. Yeah. Thank you for telling us, sweetie. This is good news, right? It means we can try again. She acts chipper, but something's changed in her tone. Can I be honest they with you too? I started very open-minded and you've convinced me that they don't exist. Yeah, you're right. We just need to restock the empty trap. Then we'll need to inspect the traps one more time. And then maybe we can. Give it up, guys. <coughs> he has a 38 degree fever. His resilience has given way. Oh shit. Darling, I told you to take it easy. You're getting sick. 
Maybe it's time to go home. When I stream so often, I talk all the time. I'm a snowflake. You're right, you're right. We can come back next season when it's warmer. It's kind of costing me time on my main investigation, huh, Kim? Of course, sweetie. You've helped us so much already. Everyone would understand if you... All right, you should pack it in. Go home. He's right, dear Morel. Come now, we've waited so long. What's one more season? Self-deceit, sire. What? You're right, dear. We'll get our shot yet. I'm sure of it. Sire. The slouch in his shoulders tells you otherwise. He doesn't know how many more field expeditions he has left in him. This place is much better for field work in the summer, believe me. Is that a pang of sadness, Lieutenant? Thank you, dear. And you, Detective Fox? You've been great company to an old lady and her stubborn husband. Fox? You're right, Lina. The RCM is worth their salt. More so than they say on the radio. What? The fuck? <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm saving this old man's life. Destroy your dreams. I live to serve. Goodbye. Thank God. Like a power drill. Right. Look, I wanted to know the end of that, but um, I'm a good cop. Okay, I'm going home. I'm going to bed. Does that mean I want to have our little debrief, though? Kim. Yes. I'm going to sleep. First stream took, um, we only did half a day, so we're going to start day four tomorrow, but it's day five of the streams, right? Where is my bed? We didn't make a whole lot of progress on the main murder investigation, but we got so much lore and world building. That's for tomorrow. That's we're gonna start the rave in the church. Um, have to confront Titus, right? That's really important. Probably should have done that. I can't establish authority last time I actually died. Call Alice tomorrow. Not bad. I was wondering if you were here for that, McSantos. It's yep. getting late and it's snowing. Time to call it a day. Good night, Kim. Good night, officer. We'll meet in front of the shack in the morning. Yep. I'm a dynamic expander condenser cycle. Yeah. Hold Kim's hand, not yet. 
Okay. God, I don't want to have another nightmare and then end on that. God. It looks horrible. What? The bed is comforting, if a bit run down. Still, you've earned a rest. This is a nice bed. No nightmares in this thing. <sighs> Across the room, the heating system hums its soft lullaby. The mattress feels soft and sheets warm. It only takes you moments for the world to fall away. Thoughts, baby. A million little lights in the dark. You're one fine instrument, brother. All those faces and all those names. All that laughter and screaming and scheming around. Every corner and every street. Recorded in you forever on Verite. Am I dreaming? No. You're spinning tapes at the discotheque. The great unceasing disco of the mind. The flash. The bang. The endless learning experience. On and on it goes. For untold hours. At the disco where you first asked her to dance. Rising. Rising. Above the dark curvature. The great wingspan of sleep. Studded with stars. Behold. There are millions of them down there. The first time, the last time, the smoke in her mouth, the plotted flowers, the faces turning, changing. What is it? It's the world, Harry boy, and you're made of it. Every day you're out there. You make more of yourself from it. I'm afraid you can't be unmade now. You can never forget this shit. I don't want to. Beautiful. It's stuck on loop, whirling, spitting out words and images. You're the son of the world again. Harrister. A ceaseless agent. Picking up litter and old newspapers. Collecting your little bubblegum wrappers and idiotic picture postcards. Meaningless, meaningless keepsakes. Reading your awful letters and recalling things, aren't you? The endless names of the world. An address book you are. The map of a city. I am an agent of the world. You'll go insane if you keep going like this. One more day, and you'll be in the loony bin. I just know you will. And for what, brother man? For the working class. <laughs> For the money, baby. For the greater good. Solving your little crossword puzzle. Doing your tasks. Crossing names off lists. Trying to become some sort of world detector. It won't make it okay. It won't put smoke back in her mouth. Forget politics, I'm sleeping. Are you sure? You could be closing the door 
brilliant and special future for yourself. Hmm. I'm sure. I don't think it's the right time. Did you hear that? He's renouncing politics. He's strictly business now. Just another thoughtless vessel. Plowing the grey seas of every day. Beep, beep, beep. The alarm is ringing, Harry. The disco circus goes on and on. You barely slept three hours last night. It's because you're fucking quizzing me on my politics. Oh, well, that's not enough sleep. Okay. I'm doing well. Harris. One, 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 one. Thank you so much. Okay. We're done. What's end? Start at day four. Um, we're live again tomorrow, and then I have one day off. I have no idea if there's a time limit on the days. I don't think there is. I fuck it. I hope there's not. I'm working slowly, but I'm also enjoying the world and, you know, solving stupid little tasks. That avatar is the reason I have my full beard on. <laughs> okay, good night everyone. Thank you so much for hanging out. It's so late here. Oh man, but it's the weekend. Thanks for the stream, everyone. Uh, no, I shouldn't know. Even if I fail, that's part of it. Thank you, everyone, for the stream. Thank you for your time. Uh, let's raid someone. It's been ages since we raided Elise. You have someone, Gilby? Thanks everyone. I'll see you tomorrow maybe if you can make it. I'm gonna be here. Is this someone you like, Gilby? <laughs> okay. We'll raid over there. Right. I'm going to bed. It's late. Good night. Oh, I'd like to frag next time. Next time. Do you have another joke for us, Frag? Yesterday's gonna be hard to top. Okay, they're playing Cyberpunk, which is awesome. My life? No. Don't let the game get you down, okay? We're all gonna try our best to do good in the world and be good and enjoy our time. Good. Let's raid. Um, massive nods, dude. Oh fuck, all caps. Sorry about that. <laughs> so aggressive. Okay, get yourself a raid message. Dogs are for followers. Alright. Oh, I think I keep forgetting to give you the link to who we're raiding as well, in case you get left behind. There you go. 
Okay. Good night, everyone. Enjoy your day. I think a lot of people here just woke up. Happy Sunday. Wait, is it Sunday? Oh, man. Happy Sunday. Um, drink some water. I forgot only once. Here's the link. I didn't forget. Okay, come raid with us if you can. It's um, it's a Gilby raid. Alright. I'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye everyone. Take care of yourselves. I'm going to bed. Good night. Bye bye.